Did y'all get some nice sleep? Nope. Uh, no. Kind of. Off to a good. I I don't know. Yeah, I I slept really long the day before, but today, I, and I got a decent amount. But I no, I'm not. Yeah. yeah Give me a minute, and it'll be fine. Got about eight and a half right before we started, so it's just a perfect layup. Yeah. I was talking a to layup, Skipper about how sleep I'm layup. like definitively nocturnal at this point. Once again, I did fix my sleep schedule about two weeks ago, but then it got destroyed. All right. I feel like there are there are some benefits to being nocturnal that I might not be fully aware of, but it seems like just being totally out of sync with like the rest of the world. Yeah, just the world shuts the fuck up. More... You're more difficult to see when you're foraging at night. <laughs> that yes, that's true. true. But you have to deal with owls and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but you. I mean, I don't know what an owl's gonna really do to me. Um... I mean, you know. He could start pecking at you, just like, get out of yeah. here. I'm trying to hunt for rats. Or offering Don't literature about, like, about his religion. Big ass owls. I'd be like, God, get away from me. I'd be swatting at him, and then I'd hit him once, and he'd die because it's a bird. Hey. I think that if you pit an owl once, that wouldn't kill an he owl. He might even make but... it attack you. You never know. Yeah, now he might be like, all right, now it's personal, what is, and pulls like, out a giant. What's the largest owl? Like, how, how big um, can an owl get? I think they can get reasonably big. Oh, just... Like, isn't a barn owl um, pretty big? I think so. Owls are awesome, by the way. Well, I feel like that's never been mentioned big. on... Because I don't think we've ever talked about owls on EFAP, but owls like are owls cool. are pretty great. I really like owls. They're they got, a cool they bird. they quite a distinctive look. Uh, yes, they do. Are they, cool. are they the creature where you can stare into the, the side of their head and almost see their brain or something? Or the back of their eyes, I think? Is that, is that true? What? They do that? Yeah, through their ear, you can see the back of their eye. I'm not sure if that's owls or a, a different specific animal, but I remember I being like, oh. I know they turn their head around, like, that's their, like, big gimmick. They can, they can turn their head, <laughs> yeah. like, totally 180, yeah. They're they do, like, gimmick. the, we kind <laughs> of, as Earth creatures, we all have gimmicks. Like, it's like, what, what does that one do? Like, if an alien was being explained, it's like, <laughs> what, what, what's a mole do? And you're like, it can dig. It digs a lot. It digs. It's like, what's the deal with dolphins? Oh, they like, they jump in the air, they're like they jump out of the water, and they're real smart. What about humans? Oh, they're all gimmick? Yeah, we just, anything. They're just a pile of gimmicks. That's how we kind of won, and the alien's like, that doesn't seem fair. It's like, well, like, yeah. <laughs> we didn't make the rules. Happy New Year, indeed. Oh yeah, right. It's 2022. People, this people is the first stream of 2021 January. Part 2. January. 2022, where things are gonna be great. That's what everyone kept saying. So they must be right, right? We're gonna get some good news once per week or so something. They, they have crystal balls that they just, like. Oh, here we go. Now oh, I've got my crystal ball. And I most people tell. have access to spiders, so they probably have been communing, getting information here and there. Depends how much they gave away. The wolf spider. Oh yeah, those guys. They know. That wait, was... wait, Fringy. What the hell does the kiwi bird do? Like, what's, uh, what's kiwi, his gimmick? Kiwi's little <laughs> yeah, wait, what's the gimmick of the kiwi bird? It's like a tiny little flightless bird that just is like a big, kind of like furball, except the bird equivalent, and it has like a long beak. That's a kiwi bird. It's like, <laughs> it's like a mini cute emu. That's, that's like the way that I would describe it. And of course, the emu's gimmick is it can't fly. That's like the main gimmick. Cassowary's gimmick is that it can kick through metal sheets with its toes. <laughs> that's, it's a, the the cassowary's gimmick is it's a dinosaur, basically. I like the idea that like we should test that on like human flesh, see if it works. And the test subject guy is just like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then they just push yes. him into the cavity, the uh, important the little science. holding cell. Um. Hey chat, did you, did, how many of you are even aware that there is a Boba Fett reaction out already? Because I wonder. Oh my goodness! We put it out at a very bizarre time because EFAT was happening soon after, and I was like, "Oh, we're gonna have clashing videos." And yes, Betty White did did pass away, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah the season finale sad. of twenty twenty one. Apparently, I want to see the book of Betty White. Hell yeah, that would be way better. Well, I mean, me. I want to. Yeah, I want to see the the I combat would be way still... better. I mean, I hope that they, because wasn't, weren't they planning like a big special for our 100th birthday? Like, they got a yes, bunch of people to work on? 
Got loads of oh, they made like, like two days ago. They've got loads of guests and stuff. I saw a list like Clint Eastwood is in there, and you know that in those interviews, one of the questions to prompt them is probably like, now that she's you know one hundred years old, what does it mean to look back? But you know they're gonna have to cut all of that uh, out. Because mm. like, making it to hundred is really, 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 really special. But they everyone assumed she wait. would, but she just didn't. And it's like, ah. Uh. Sad, but from what I saw from reading, she died in her sleep, so it's like one of the best ways to go, I think. That's the only way that death could get her, is when she was sleeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine death is probably pretty chill with her. He's like, hey, you're pretty awesome. It's, it's so weird. Well, that, yeah, like, I mean, my quite the impressive. Possibly my favorite role for her is when she becomes like a psycho teacher in community. Oh, that was great, yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna like, attack you with this, and I want you to use respect to defend yourself. <laughs> and then, like, immediately just fucking yanks his foot up into the air and yeah. chokes out Jeff. I respect you, that's why you fail. <laughs> she's great. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's just awesome. Nice, wholesome, great, funny woman. On, um, it was either, I think it was Friday Night Tights, they were showing, like, the even for Betty White, there were people on Twitter who were like, since she was of really? that age, since she was of that era, pretty sure she was very racist. And it's like, what? man, just what is what is wrong with your mind when <laughs> Those you're like people when are racist someone... against humans? That man, that is, I don't know. You need to like get off Twitter. You need to delete that app. You gotta like go there are off other of things that in app. Life. You gotta find them. <laughs> they can, they ain't gonna come to you. Um. Oh my god, is the queen next? Oh well. Queen? Uh, yeah, she's uh, she's been, uh, as was said on that stream too, she's been old for like a hundred years. They said uh, which was the first president she met, and I was like pretty sure it's George Washington, but you know, can't be sure. <laughs> she's, uh, but you know, she'll be around for another 10 billion years, I'm sure. Um, so, welcome to EFAP number 167. Who knows what exactly we're going to get up to today, or rather, I guess I do know exactly what we're getting up to, but we can never be sure that we'll get through everything that's uh, on the table, and so we will be starting this episode with a poll. Can you believe it? Um, For dancing? Uh, not quite. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd actually be interested in polling you guys to see what the results are, but we're going to do chat as well. But um, if you knew you had to watch... Either High Top, Brown Table, or Movie Bob's Opinion on Spider-Man No Way Home. Which would you choose to enjoy? Which of these delectable, tasty treats is right for you? Yeah. Yum. We have to enjoy one of them. Mm, yeah, I'm um, going to allow it, you to pretend for a moment that you don't have to suffer through the other two. So, hmm. three of you, which, which would you pick? Me? Oh, mm. um... Uh, oh, I think they want us to cover. I think this is which one we want, or which one do we think they want us to do? Well, do you think that if we answer the question, we could uh, sully the votes potentially, and so you'd rather stay, uh, let the the crowd we'll decide? Or? Yeah, we'll stay quiet until the poll is uh, over. Okay. I mean, it's pretty clear who people want us to watch. Uh, what is, what is, I haven't looked at chat, what are they saying? That's like, Movie Bob is like, by far, the most. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Here's the thing, that was gonna be my guess. I think they want us to cover Movie Bob. That would be my guess, whereas, like, in terms of the one that I find more interesting is, like, honestly, High Tops, just because that's, like, his whole shtick, is Spider-Man. There's, like, a whole conversation that can be had about just this interpretation of this whole series. But it's like the difference movie, between like, just, having the actual discussions versus, versus yeah yeah versus that approach. Whereas with Movie Bob, I think it is just like ha, ah, Movie Bob, <laughs> you know, Movie Bob, whose whose career has outshined um Lindsay other people, I guess, in terms of longevity. It would be fucking incredible if we had footage of him scrolling through his Twitter, seeing his post, and being like, "I won, <laughs> I survived." <laughs> Another victory for movie Robert. <laughs> movie Roberto. 
He just like <laughs> carves another like cut onto his body or something. <laughs> No, I'm sure he eats a hamburger. For every <laughs> person. He eats. He eats a hamburger. <laughs> the celebratory hamburger. Um, it was funny. I was talking to Rags about like how blown away I am by the the genre of mukbang and how like anyone can consume so much fucking food that how anyone can just watch it like that's just the thing. They oh yeah, do. yeah. The mukbang. Most of the food gets thing. wasted though. So much food gets wasted. Oh yeah, it's I insane. Because no that's There's something I didn't even know. I thought the idea was that they had to consume everything. <laughs> they have to eat it all. But well, so I assume I think since it, they I, bought so much. Yeah, well, I, I think I, it I, depends on who you're watching, right? Because some people like do the mukbang thing, but you know, like, and you'll see like the woman, and they're incredibly like they're clearly pretty healthy. And it's right. like, oh, this is like your job, right? So you do this, and then like you stop, and then you actually, you know, like take more care of yourself. But then there are some people who are just force like, themselves gonna... to vomit it all. Well, maybe, <laughs> and then you've got like some people who just clearly just want to eat like all the food. <laughs> like, yeah. how like can I monetize that... my how awful, can I monetize... terrible lifestyle? Yeah, you because know, we were talking about how like when you get to a size where your body just goes, yeah, we'll store some fat in your um in your eyes, I guess, because <laughs> like, they don't know where else to put it. It's like... Oh god! Isn't people so fat that they just eat and eat and eat? Their body's like, I, I guess we're just storing fat in your uh, forehead now. I guess because like, mm. we just don't have any place for well, it. Well, I guess I guess it's surely it gets concerning when it's like, man, like ten steps. Oh, that was that took a lot. Oof, like that yeah. should get really concerning, you know? It's like, oh my god, yeah. like Food man, is just that good that you can eat yourself to the point of not being able to move anymore. Of the Have you guys tried to sit down and watch like a whole mukbang from like start to finish? I've only ever I don't think I'd want to. So it's... fucking gross. Yeah, that's like the you thing. could probably find any video by like Nikocada Avocado, and it's just like an actual like pig just rolling around. It's so nasty. What a disgusting human being. <laughs> <laughs> it's cr well because like I think the first thing I said to you, right, was just like they are actually just killing themselves. But I know that's a lot of the because like a lot of creators have made videos about that, like. Nick Ricardo, Avocado killing himself and stuff. But he he's bizarre as a creator, like a... I don't know if it's a character or not, but like, the damage he's done to himself is, is like, you know, that's not a joke. Is it like, the, the, you, it's not in the that's playing... A, you're not playing a character, you're literally gaining like, a whole, several people's worth of weight. It's just water weight he'll cut. Right, true, true. Um... I think YMS said enough. like, it's clearly a fetish thing, that's his theory. I was like, maybe. I have no fucking clue. I've never understood it. I got like the I understood the um the eating competition people who were like, can I get through ten hamburgers within two minutes? You're like, oh my god, can you? But um people are just like listen to me squelch through all of my food slowly. Like uh... Squelch? Yeah, those are squelchy people. <sighs> mm -hmm. Those people fit the shape of their container. They um and and uh, there's there's an element of is the is the algorithm to blame is is it the people is it the audiences that are to blame? I yeah. mean, I what's, feel like what's interesting is that I can say a word and YouTube will like punish me and demonetize me and kick me off their platform, but YouTube will allow these people to basically just kill themselves in front of a cheering, clapping well, audience. Well, so, and, I know, feel like the, the immediate thing to point out though is that that's not like that's just YouTube like doing what is societally deemed okay like I, I don't even know that that's like a you know like the problem starts somewhere else you know it's not like it doesn't start with youtube you know, it starts with uh youtube is i was just talking about youtube allowed yeah. it to to exist through having let other things exist that we actually want to like because we wouldn't want youtube to restrict on exactly what you can do i suppose beyond because imagine trying to draw the line for that like you can mm -hmm. eat on camera but not too much that you gain too much weight you'd be like uh, well, it's well, it's the idea that YouTube is like we're gonna we're gonna watch out for you and we're gonna take care of you and we want you to be we want our creators to be healthy mentally and all that sort of thing. We're gonna you know that's that they'll do all that stuff and then these people will just be killing themselves and just destroying their uh, ugh, and they're like uh, hmm, whatever. Well, if you were in charge, would you would you make it so that his videos don't enter the algorithm to discourage the success? And thus the no, I think I would just be more consistent throughout. In what way? 
Like I wouldn't ban people and restrict videos on such. Uh, like on, what happens when the ads start skin? pulling out though? Like what if what if an advertiser sees something that gets clipped where it's like, ah, oh, look, he said something really offensive. We're pulling ads. Fuck you. And then you look at your employees. Then what do you do? I don't know. I'd have to see the. Um, That's, I, have to this is what I mean. I, I don't like YouTube's a lot of YouTube's decisions either. But like, it feels like people often forget that YouTube is a business. <laughs> like that they need to keep the lights on. And that the service that they provide is like super I'm, useful. I'm certainly not convinced that a lot of the videos that are demonetized are actually part of that ad issue at all. Uh, oh, I mean, I guess it's hard to say, right? Is like because we're not there, we don't get to see the conversations, but that's what they say. Yeah, and I just I don't believe it for a fucking second. Well, sure, but I mean, YouTube YouTube is not like as strict on these things as a lot of other platforms are. Like, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube that isn't allowed on, like, Twitch or on Twitter or on a lot of other places. In some ways, well, we're lucky. YouTube seems to be more vague than Twitch. Yeah, I think so. Which, I guess, is beneficial and not beneficial. It's like, if there's no line... <laughs> uh, how is it... I, I, someone said it's not a good argument because YouTube loses money. It's like, surely that's a better argument, right? You don't want to keep losing even more money. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get that. Well, yeah, I'm assuming you were just trying to give a hypothetical for where, how do you balance um, the mm. platform's longevity and the employee's uh, wages versus ethical versus content the needs. control. Exactly, and I guess, you know, at this point it seems like applying the standards consistently, <laughs> like, on any platform. It's like the rules are vague on purpose. Um, so anyway, you ever wonder if YouTube should like email these people? Like maybe if if it's nothing nothing against the rules, but they email them and say, "Hey, this is you know, Brittany from YouTube uh, Creator Support or whatever. Uh, you know, we just be watching your videos, and uh, you okay? You all right there? You you ate one hundred dollars of <laughs> Chick Fil A the other day, and you cried, and, and I was just, and, and, you know, um, uh, you all right there? Yeah, is this a horrific cry for help? I mean, uh, what's going on, buddy? What's going on, buddy? Old pal? We make a video about it. Apparently, when anybody ever criticizes a Nick Ricardo, he, he makes a video eating stuff while responding. And complaining, mate. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with it. It seems like everybody I, I, doesn't know. I'm more angry at the people who watch it. It is a weird uh, forced industry almost, isn't it? Because, man, people really do love watching Chungus people just eat food. Uh, you're out there. There's it's... probably a few in our audience right now. Who are, who are there like, haha, yeah, no, that's shit. And then they just slowly <laughs> start closing the, well, maybe not even closing the tabs. <laughs> up. So, oh, you know. Um. So anyway... Today we're gonna we're gonna have to look at that uh, one of these these videos at least, and it does seem there's an overwhelming successful one of three. In fact, it kind of dictated the uh, the order that we would watch them if we get through enough today. But uh, Movie Robert has won with forty eight percent of the vote. Uh, High Top has mm. thirty three. Round Table has twenty. Round Table being the oh, least boy. popular of the three. I don't exactly know what the reasoning for that would be. We all love Brown Table here. It's great. Um, well, the numbers slightly changed when you complete it as well. But I think, I think Brown Table. I I would rather cover Brown Table than High Top. I think. I really, I'm not. I'm never sure about that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I think the reason why Movie Bob got the highest is because he's Movie Bob specifically. Like, not anything to do with his take necessarily. No, Spider Man. He's, he's a fan. I like actually I think it's just that. Yeah. It's been a while since we covered him, so I think people are ready. It's only a small one for him. I think it's like six or seven minutes, so... You okay, know. that's easy. Well, you say that, but the problem is that he's the only creator we've ever had to actually put on it's slow pretty... down, because we can't oh, true, fucking comprehend he him. He does the speed ramp thing for some character. reason. How oh. long is this video? Uh, his one is... Uh, seven minutes. It's a fairly small video for an average person. Oh, yes. Um, I've given out the, uh, the watch together, if, if everyone wants to jump in. we got three right now. Mm. 
who be, who be for? Someone's missed it. <laughs> there I'm we go. It, yeah. uh, alrighty. Uh, th there's just Here no proper preamble for this. Spider-Man came out, Movie Bob has opinions on it. Let's see what they are. Nothing can prepare you. No. Man. Movie Bob Productions presents. <laughs> okay, so this is the... He read out the audio. Show the, the audio. I'm sorry. The audio quality is like unacceptable for a channel <laughs> Listen, that's been around only, this long. He's only been doing this for 36 years. It's that's like, not enough time to learn. For... It makes me think if he's got the same microphone he had when he started. Like he just uh, he's like, yeah, it's cost efficient. Never had to upgrade. And you're like, okay. Um, that, that I don't understand this. That there's <laughs> been no desire to like change it or improve the audio quality. I don't either, but, uh, here we go. Okay, so this is the spoiler-free review of the movie, so it's gonna be spoiler. short to the point, but I just want to say up front again, without explicitly spoiling anything- Is he putting on a New Yorker a accent voice? right now? Yeah. Is that a voice? Well, that so, I'm pretty sure he does have that accent, but it's never been this thick. Like, it feels like he's, uh, okay. he's accentuating it, I don't know why. But, um, spoiler. Spoiler? But yeah, don't worry, chat, it's be spoiler-free. From his video, it won't be spoiler free from us. And I think that if you're worried about us spoiling Spider Man, I mean, it's been a while now. Um, right? <laughs> hmm, Plus, we sorry, talked I about was, it for a whole EPAP. Yeah. I'm, so, like, you know how, because now I'm just thinking about this, because, like, the big thing with Movie Bob is that he just likes using a lot of big words and long sentences, uh -huh. just <laughs> way, too, way too much. I'm even looking at this little thing and I'm like, I feel like there are words that you could cut from this. Like, uh, previously released, it's like, you know, like, well, because he's gonna say, release, um, in trailers or TV spots for the film. Previous the well, yeah, exactly. The you know what I mean? Like, but even released, you could, you know, this review is spoiler three and does not include any significant plot or story details, uh, that have not been revealed in trailers or TV spots. Yeah, you know, you're practically half the size and did the exact same thing. Yeah. Elements of style. Read it. <laughs> elements of style. Yeah. We read styles of elements. Yeah, elements can have style. Like styles of elements. Like yeah. a font is like a... a uh... Well, I mean, in a certain sense, carbon has a style, you know? And like hydrogen and lithium and uh, I guess compounds do as well. What's the... Yeah, you know. Like... Like, you know, imagine you had, like, a runway and it had a whole bunch of atoms just walking down the runway. And it's like, oh, look at that that uh, dress being sported by fluoride. It's it's gorgeous. <laughs> can you I say can imagine, imagine this, but I don't think I can. I don't think I can imagine that. It's because you're weak-minded, right? I can imagine it easily. Carbon, exactly. I'm going to walk with a bunch walking of atoms just all dressed up. Mm -hmm. That's right. What's so hard to understand about that? <laughs> uh, I, I don't one know. Can have just... a, one can have a funny hat. Just a blank spot. I, oh, absolutely. We got funny hats. <laughs> Dude, stylish hats. Ones that are going to change fashion forever. Mm hmm. Well, that thing that's not actually part of the full movie that so many had about, I think it's damn near the funniest thing I've seen all goddamn year. I couldn't be happier about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, he's, he's, voice. I feel like he's definitely playing up the bad, voice. Is this it the bad audio or is he actually clipping? It. Like um, it feels like he's very close to clipping. I thought, yeah, I, I can hear it too. I thought the video was he's jumping. I wasn't sure. What kind of mic New York. Is it? I feel like, like it's it's have it have better. Quality. I don't even think it's that. I think it's like a headset microphone. <laughs> you know, like there's a microphone you used to have on the headsets when you were playing games like PS3. Like that's what it feels like to me. It's so bad. Um. Also, I have no idea what he's talking about. There's something about, like, there's something in the movie really, he finds really funny. What is he talking about? The full movie that so many people are so Maybe he's mad talking about. about this is going to be spoiler-free, despite the fact that everybody knows that uh, Toby and Andrew... Well, but he said to yeah, people are mad about something in this movie. What is he talking about? All right, I Maybe we'll find out in the review, but I, cause I, I have no it. idea. Well, if I he... can't hear that peaking, too. Already he is peaking in his mm -hmm. microphone. Yeah. Of that one just, thing that's not actually like, part of the full movie. Movie bomb. So many... When you're editing your, your video and like in Vegas it goes red, does that not like make you do anything, or do you just like not even notice? I don't. I don't understand the process here. How well, is this okay? I guess he's just never even learned what it is that is the problem. 
So it's just, it's just well, always been like a part of the video. There's never been a thing where every single time that he works on a project, he identifies a new thing. Because, I mean, you know, like, I feel every time you do, like, a new project, there's something to learn about how to get better for next time. Maybe, yeah, I, I guess I don't know. Maybe it is just, like, going through the motions for him. Because how long has he been doing this for? Like, like 10 years? We should cut him open and count the rings. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he started, like, he's one of the OG YouTubers, or at least close to, right. right? And his format hasn't evolved since, like, 2009. Probably earlier than that, but yeah. I want to say up front again, without explicitly spoiling anything involved, that one thing that's not actually part of the full movie that so many people are so mad about, I think it's damn near the funniest thing I've seen all goddamn year. I couldn't be happier about it. And What's everybody being about? so mad. I don't know what they're talking about. Yo, I don't know. Fuck? Yeah. No context. I, don't know. What is he I have about? no idea. Um, yeah. I'm someone said it's about Aunt May being gay, and it's like that happened after this video came out, so. But also, that's not in the film. Well, he said also, it's not in the not film. Also, that's not funny. Okay, but is it funny? Like, is are, are people mad about that? Well, like I said, it's the timeline doesn't match up, so I don't think it's that. Okay. Talking about yeah. Venom? What that Venom was in it and then wasn't, and people were mad about that because they wanted him in it for more. That is in the movie, though. <laughs> like, I don't know. I I'm I I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, you hmm. have to like fill in the blanks of what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, and his video hasn't like, even started. What the started. fuck is he going we're, on about? We're already. Lost. Imagine this is the first video you watch on YouTube. <laughs> just like <laughs> I'm so confused. Is this I'm well, hey, a joke on YouTube that I'm not aware of? He said no spoilers. Like tomatoes. Right. Mad just makes it that much better. Ha. <laughs> oh, the clip oh art's oh, clipping ah, yeah, really bad. Yeah, I don't get it. What there. are you doing? Ugh. Well, your audio <laughs> quality is so shit. What it needs to be really good if all you do is talk. Exactly. Right, it's right, like your please. whole job. <laughs> ah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, now this is this this not <laughs> indicative of oh, a particular okay, era. That's a kick ass <laughs> intro. D I have, I have. D D D look at the look at the size of this, like the screen where all the letters are on the screen. Are we going to get like a title for this episode underneath? Oh, Chipman? yeah, probably. Also, um, which shouldn't be capitalized. <laughs> I love but this. It's you, it's it's yeah. like welcome to the fucking nineties almost. It's like what the fuck? Yeah, it's like a little. We have entered in many ways a new year, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we are going into the future, twenty twenty two. But also, it's like we're going into the past. Yeah, time machine. Go back, yeah, to, back to the form. year two thousand and nine. Well, I remember um. When I did that, the Outlast review, and I was looking at everyone's reviews of it, it's like, we had a lot of this, where it's just like, this was the thing to do at one point. But, um, the aesthetic of, like, video essays and just videos in general, everyone on YouTube has gotten so much better. Like, this is just not acceptable anymore, but he's stuck in, like, <laughs> so far back. It's like, there you go, mm -hmm. Robert. Nice. Now, man, oh, 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 this is this oh, is really yeah. annoying me, like, now, because I'm looking at this, just, you've got, like, your logo, which is whatever, but then to have the text come up with, like, the the, the shadow on the back, but white, like, he gets the black text, and then the little reflections in the text as well, and just, like, that's impact, isn't it? That's, like, the impact text. Oh, my God. Spider-Man. It looks so shit. It, it does. It looks <laughs> awful. Like, it I, looks I, cheap. I, Seriously, though, just, like, peak, like, when you're doing stuff with text, you don't need these things, okay? Like, the text is fine. You can you can get away with just having the text. It looks you like a movie them. maker preset. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's why it's better to just stick with the text and not do that much with it when you can. Because, like, this just reeks of, oh, it's not good enough that it's a text. I need to, like, put more shit on it to make it look cool. Like... You can do a drop shadow, and that'll that'll be good enough. Like if you if you really need to do anything with it, I, I guess this is just is the white powder glow. I, I think so. It's just like yeah, you, know, you, glow on it. you don't need to do like a typography class, but like if you just like watch maybe like one video on typography, it'll it'll do wonders. A lot of people are saying it's off center as well, so we need to get off this. Uh... 
this oh image my to help people's my, mental sanity. Oh, well, well, the big thing that's frustrating is there's Up more the space bottom, at the or... bottom beneath No yeah. Way Home than there is at the top of the big screen. And there's no like, divider, right? There's no line to separate the title of the show from the title of the, the episode. Well, there's not a big enough gap. Like, this is a lot of just... This is the... It's... I just... I, I think that on some level you intuitively understand that something is wrong with this image. Um... <laughs> well, something. There's a lot of things I don't like about this image. I think the music is the most amusing thing to me. It's so old. Like, it's so uh, generic. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's a generic, like, like a, like generic an early 90s riff. PC yeah. shooter. Like, this is from the, like, this is the stuff they cut out of the Duke Nukem soundtrack. Like, the first one. Mm -hmm. They're like, nah, this is just too generic, and it's not gonna be good on our, our computer game. Just get rid of it. And Bob's like, I'll scoop that shit up. Yeah, no, you're right. Like you look at Doom soundtrack, and they were they, they were like, "We got to be creative. We can't just be shit." Yeah, <laughs> then there was like, someone else. You know, like, I'll do the shit one. Doom, it's like you know, we have the option to go do 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 do, do but we're not going to do that. We're going to do some cool little drum rhythms. It's like what? Why? No, just do the riff. Like that's movie. It's just sitting there in the corner. Like, what's wrong with the guitar riff? It's great. <laughs> Listen to that. Well, he's, I think he's Rip. been using it since 2008, so it's just... Why, A? Hey, it ain't broke, don't design. fix it, right? Oh, and someone... Oh, yeah. my God, someone's pointed it out. The the on the big screen is misaligned. Oh, yeah. oh you're right. The T, oh. yeah, it should be... Yeah, that's an that one's an that's an Dude. odd one because of the the E lines up a lot on the bottom. Eh. The E lines up. Well, so that's the thing that you learn with like kerning and stuff like that is that sometimes you are actually an even gap between letters. Sometimes that's not what you want. Sometimes you want yeah. to close it up it looks... a little bit or make it a little bit bigger just because of the gaps that exist between like you know like a T and an I or like just some letters are much bigger than other letters and so you need to like tweak them and mess around and then you can have something that's not like fully centered and even but just looks better but he hasn't done anything here like he hasn't he ju he just put the he just maybe center aligned it maybe even didn't do that just like moved his mouse over the screen to line it up it's like that's good enough <laughs> it's just really bugging me there's definitely a it's good enough even the color composition vibe from movie bob videos from this. And what's this in the background on the on it's the right popcorn. here? What? Just spilt popcorn. Spilt popcorn. Oh, a stock image. Oh yes. <laughs> Imagine if he got like a really high quality rendered Ooh. painting like of that must just have to had... have something a little bit unique. He must have had some spending money to get assets, right? Well, because he, he used course. to uh, yeah, work for the escapist, right? Yeah, he used to work for the escape. Like he's he's had more than a decade and, of like, this. Well, I guess that's the interesting thing, right? Because you know zero punctuation was and still is with the escape it's like well he's got like a format that's really cool um lots of images lots of visual gags like a level a level of creativity to just like making of it and you know Jim his Stirling, videos he used to look do... better themselves oh, sorry even like... as simplistic as they are <laughs> um yeah and then uh i i guess i don't i don't understand like the 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 lack of a desire to even like change or do anything different. Uh, the colors are bugging me because it goes white, black, black, white, black. Yeah, yeah. But um, we also have have this little bit of news. Apparently, I don't know how verifiable this is, but I'm amused by the tweet. Yo. Um, hang on, I'll get it on screen. Just <laughs> says, that's hilarious. As everyone knows, the next DCEU movie that's on the way. New ones, anyway, is uh, the Flash, right? I, mean, I am right about that, right? I'm really fucking forgetting. Something. Yeah, it's the Flash. That's what it's called. Now you got, according to binge watch this hashtag, the Flash will reportedly erase all of Zack Snyder's movies from the DCU, meaning both Affleck and Cavill are gone. Which is not the good part, that ending bit there. But um, I suppose you can say the good part is just um, they might be reset in their continuity, which is very much for the best at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. The MCU needs to do that as well, to be fair. Uh, but yeah. I, I just like God. That's gonna piss people off quite a bit. In fact, let's look at these quote tweets. You got sad face, crying. Faces. Oh no! Our our horrific evil Superman <laughs> is gonna is, is won't be canon. The baby killing Superman won't be the part of the official DCEU. Oh no! 
We'll see what happens. I mean, I'll I'll want to see the Flash now just to, uh, well, for Michael Keaton, but also just to see if they actually go through with that. They decanonize it. It'd be amusing. But, um, you know, I don't know how many people on the internet will feel the same way as us. But you guys, you've seen all of our DCU EFAP movies. You, you, we're not fond. All right. It's we're, shit. We're not fond. The fondest we get is when we laugh at it. So. Yeah, Zack Snyder's DC movies are just dog shit. Oh, the humanity. They're so bad. Anyway, let us continue with this blast from the past. Oh, that's another yeah, funny that's thing. If you switch out No Way Home for like, you know, this is the first spider Bad. It's like everything would have lined up so far. That yeah. would be a good way to, like, that'd be a fun game to play. You just, ran someone randomly picks a movie, Bob, video, and you have to guess what year it was made. <laughs> <laughs> no. But they they all look the same. Like, how would you ever know? I guess you could guess from the the film he's reviewing. Maybe maybe you don't play that part. Mm. Oh, so it's man. no secret that I regard what I guess we're supposed to regard. Oh, what the hell's going is he on? doing the voice for the whole thing? I was gonna say like we've seen enough movie Bob to know that this is unusual for him. Why is he cranking that accent so much? Yeah, I don't get it. Come on, Bobbit. You don't want to get cringy vibes. Don't do it. So it's no secret that I regard what I guess we're supposed to now consider the Spider-Man solo home title pun trilogy as one of the most uneven franchises in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I no, if, if anything, most... it is the most even. I was going to say, like, what are we comparing this to? If you look at Iron Man. Compared to, like, Iron Man is super uneven. Captain America is, like, wow, well, Winter Soldier. Yeah, we consider it uh, very uneven. <laughs> Thor is incredibly uneven. Like, if you're gonna say that as anything, it would be Thor. Yeah, because look at Ragnarok compared to Thor One. You're like, yeah. what is? I guess who, definitely people, different I people made these. Ant Man is more even in that it's nothing. It's just very. I guess so. You could call that even. Yeah. Once we get the third. But yeah. One. No. It's, this is not the most uneven one. No. I still don't think Homecoming was very good. I like Tom Holland. You're I don't think the movie is that great. Far From Home You're is wrong. decent, but still kind of all over the place. And now, No Way Home. Well, you're kind of wrong there, too. But <laughs> it depends on, depend on, on what he means. I don't know. Yeah. What does decent mean in his world? <laughs> I mean, if, if he means like four to six, then it's like. Then not, that would be more. Mm, yeah. Well, like middle ish. He, he liked TLJ, so. Mm. But Homecoming, yeah, it's always bizarre to me. TLJ is great. Homecoming is pretty not very good, though. The Run away, no contest, the Bob. best of the series, and still the best live-action Spider-Man solo-ish movie anyone has attempted since Sam Raimi is pretty damn wow. good. It, hmm. I it was wow, pretty damn good. Right. pretty damn good. Wow. Okay. It's too long, Bizarre. but somehow ends up feeling rushed over stuff with both plot characters and unearned sense of self-importance, but also frequently... I Unearned sense of self-importance. Could that unearned sense of self-importance is is the unearned because of the fact that it's just the multiverse that brings in all of these people and events, or is he and, is he talking and about? And does he mean that the Raimi and um, other the other Spider-Man series are they self-important? Have they earned their self-importance, or like is he trying to say that in contrast to the other series? <laughs> Because like it's important to the MCU <laughs> storyline, especially Spider Man's. I don't see. That. I don't think we're gonna get an explanation for that. I think it's just gonna be sad. Yeah, we'll have to not. move on. We wait less to form for its own good, and while getting into any more than the most general, no spoilers commitment. When it comes to that Marvel mandatory commitment to self aware meta narrative, it can't quite square the circle of simultaneously be a tribute to the previous cinematic history. You need to. You have to. You have to. I was just about that. to say. I was following it. I I was I. But holy fuck! So, it's, you, it's too long. The sentences are too long. Well, I'm sorry, they're just too long. That's and his they just thing. run on. He, he There's just no run on sentences. To sentences. That's yeah. A, uh, how is that a thing? I don't know, but like, it's a thing. Like he, that's all he does. He loves doing it. I don't know why. It's like he only writes with commas, no no full stops. Like, I, it's really annoying. <laughs> I don't like having a. It Please is. write shorter sentences. He's 
speaks so fucking fast and just never stops. More than the most general terms yeah. would break the no spoilers commitment. When it comes to that Marvel mandatory commitment to self-aware meta narrative, it can't quite square the circle of simultaneously being a tribute to the previous cinematic history of Spider-Man movies, quasi-integration of the previous cinematic history of Spider-Man movies, and Holy coy humble fuck. brag <laughs> affirmation of how this current cinematic Spider-Man is the best one ever and why. Sale. Right, so, I can I can oh, like get parts of that. So and, his point, by the time I think about it, it's 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 gone. Sounded like his point was saying that on one hand they're trying to be respectful and integrate old Spider-Man, but at the same time celebrate themselves as the Spider-Man. I don't know why those Man, two things can't coexist. Apparently, it these... feels like I I'm still stuck on the fact that it took him that many words to explain something that's not that hard. Well, again, because I think that's it. If we listen to him again, like, is that is that what he's saying? <laughs> we have to rewind break break like 30 seconds. seconds. Well, this is this is how we the, the movie balls videos might be small, but the covering of him can take a long time, unfortunately. <laughs> you have to <laughs> decipher the you have to like you have to listen to it multiple times just to catch it all. Yeah. When it comes to that Marvel mandatory commitment to self-aware meta-narrative, it can't quite square the circle of simultaneously being a tribute to the previous cinematic history of Spider-Man movies, quasi-integration of the previous cinematic history of Spider-Man movies, and coy yeah, humble brag the affirmation of how- cinematic history of Spider-Man movies. It's like, the cinematic history of Spider-Man, or Spider-Man previous Spider-Man movies. Cinematic and movies in the same sentence feels like just you wasting words. If it's cinematic, of course we're talking about fucking movies, that's well, what cinema is. Are you forgetting <laughs> that it makes his video longer? <clears throat> Which is a I, I guess it's just... Well, I, I guess that's the funny thing, right? It, it almost reveals, like, the sentences are so long and there's so many superfluous words that what is seven minutes, which is already short, is more like three, like, in terms of content that's here. Yeah. This could be a it's page. Quasi and just did some of editing. the previous cinematic history of Spider-Man movies, and coy humble brag affirmation of how this current cinematic Spider-Man is the best one ever and why, and all the- So that's not really- I don't think that's in the film. I don't know that that's the present best. in the film at all, yeah. yeah. You could argue, this film is if not, anything, yeah. that Toby is considered the best, because he's the most, like, well-rounded and completed. But, um, exactly. I don't think the film's choosing any one of them. Yeah, it's not taking sides, which is one of the things I think is really great like about it. it. Yeah, we yeah. like all of you. Even you, t like, it's not your fault, Andrew McGuire. <laughs> Andrew McGuire. Uh, Andrew McGuire. <laughs> Andrew McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> that bastard. The reasons for this awkwardness are about the same as they've been the whole time. We are watching what happens when the best superhero movie producing studio ever to do the job and get... Uh, of well... Um... <laughs> The best, I mean, I mean how in many, the sense that the they make a lot of projects. Well, yeah, because if, if well, we're yeah. categorizing it, like, yeah, the, I guess they've, who well, else could even compare? Sony, maybe? In a certain know. sense, Sony, well, I mean, like, Into the Spider-Verse, that's Sony. Well, this yeah, film but is Sony. Sony have coming. done lots of individual movies, like, nobody's done what the MCU's done yet, so it's not even fair to compare, really. Um, I, well, yeah, actually, uh, Fox, I guess... Have come the closest. Well, Fox, they did a lot of X Men films and Fantastic Four and like. And then all at that, that point, stuff. it's like, do you think that the MCU as a franchise is superior to the X Men franchise, or at least? The... I, w I wonder if you rewatch all the X Men films, it was like, hmm, you know what? Like, X Men, not that inconsistent. I'm as sure much as well. the MCU has higher highs, but also lower lows. Awesome. Well, at this point, Loki, fucking Endgame, I guess, you know, well, Days of Future Past, that's the controversial one, isn't it? Like for yeah, people, a lot of people love because everyone loves that movie, and it's not like it's got a lot of problems. So has all of Uncle money to throw around. Has to share movie making duties with the crumbling remnants of Sony Pictures, remlance. clinging to their remnants. Yeah, I think he said remnants. Remnants, <laughs> remnants to new batch. <laughs> Last value of IP for dear life, and continuing to demonstrate. You say that, but they won. Like it, whether or not they were struggling, they have won. They have control over Spider Man. Spider Man's what, making but shit tons of money. This, this is this feel. I feel like if we look past superhero movies, that like that this is not a correct statement. That like Sony has nothing in terms of like its catalog or like anything that it it's uh, I don't know. I, I guess the problem is I'm blanking right now. Well, I still think he's wrong if he was just talking about movies. He's saying this like they're desperately clinging to Spider-Man when it's like, they've got him. He's theirs. Well, they, they, yeah, I guess in the sense it's like, well, it's not yours. It's like, well, what does that mean? Disney bought M Marvel. Does that mean that Marvel's not theirs because it used to be independent and belongs to someone else? 
they make in Spooderman movies. How far back do we want to go? Money. Yeah. There's well, I mean, like... look at how much money. This movie has made more money than the rest of the Phase 4 films combined. Yeah. Like... Pretty hilarious. I doubt that Sony's sweating, you know, like right now. Oh, dude, I feel like they must have so much confidence. They've got so much leverage well, now. Well, look at how many movies they're making. They've got like like three or four like other live action yeah. like Spider-Man characters. They're making like Into the Spider-Verse sequel. Like they're making TV shows, I think, as well. It's like, damn. Didn't, didn't Venom also do better in box office than like Shang Chi? Yeah, Battle it did. Wars. Venom made more know, money yeah. than all of them. It made five hundred million, which is better than all of and the other ones. Sony are already making their universe. The the. Yeah, they're making that universe. Uh, you know, it's so funny. They've siphoned off the MCU a little bit, and now they can leave. <laughs> <And> now, <laughs> yeah. Crumbling remnants of Sony Pictures clinging to their remnants. last valuable IP for dear <laughs> life and continuing to demonstrate how they became the crumbling remnants of Sony Pictures in the first place, like they a team right. carpentry show where one builder is a master engineer with decades of experience and the other one just keeps slapping gobs of peanut butter and duplos against the wall and you can almost oh, see which is which in this analogy. Well, see, that's the problem. If you're going to use an analogy, I need to know what it represents. I don't. Uh, I think he's saying that uh that like Sony is the is like the the bad engineer and like Disney Marvel is like the good engineer. I, if and anything, I think doing. that's the reverse at this There's point. Peanut butter. Um, well, I think that's the problem is there still seems to be this general consensus that like, oh, Marvel's competent. It's like, it I ain't. don't know at this point, like with what's happening. I guess competent in the sense that like, well, no, not even, because I was about to say like profitable. It's like, well, the movies are making money, but like they're not making as much money as they used to. going, ah, oh, hey, that's great, little buddy, you're doing great. But even if you don't know the Byzantine Hollywood stuff behind the scenes of these, I still feel like something is Byzantine? off still comes... What does he mean when he says Byzantine? Yeah, like, what is Byzantine about... What an audit see. analogy. <laughs> so Bi Byzantine means of a system or situation excessively complicated and typically involving a great deal of, administra of administrative detail. Oh, okay, so in the it's sense of, like, the Spider-Man movies are highly complicated from, like, a business standpoint because it's, like, shared responsibilities between two competing studios that is integrated into the IP belonging to one studio, I guess? I assume so. Uh, that, that's and in that sense, a... it is complicated. It's it's Because from what I understand, like, this is pretty unprecedented to have, like, two major studios well, totally, cooperating. But say complicated? Because saying it's Byzantine makes you sound smarter. Oh, even if the even if the people who even listen to it don't know what point. you mean, exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> sounding smart of... comes before like making a point that people can understand that's coherent. Yeah, and you're not using it as an opportunity to like explain the word, which is like Byzantine and complicated. You know, you didn't just say that. Where even if you don't know what Byzantine means, you're like, oh, it probably means like complicated or something, and you just carry on. I think you, you could know? assume a couple things. You'd be like, maybe he means it's um nepotistic Archaic? or maybe he means it's yeah it could be that it's super antiquated or old and struggles with red tape or the or that it's complicated you know you could go with a whole bunch of i think yeah an old inefficient system is probably if, if you were to ask me before i looked it up i probably would have said it's it is an old system of making things that is not ideal yeah um but i i just don't know i've because the amount of people who are going to be like us and who are going to stop and look it up and go to the second definition of it and be like, oh, that's what he means, is probably a very, very, very low number. Because the t by the time you do that, he's already said 12 other sentences, and oh, I feel like you're, you're just lost. There are people who consume these. They're in the comment section, and they claim to enjoy it. Um, I don't even know that they absorb anything that he says. This is actually kind yeah, of I, I do wonder. It is. It is difficult to too get fast. the points that he is saying. He's too like, fast? Wait, yeah, it is too it was fast. It's definitely and... too fast, yeah. I think he even it speeds himself breathe. up, I'm not sure. I think he does speed himself up. I don't... This seems sped up. EFAP has the hubris to judge God Bob. We do. God <laughs> Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Great little buddy, you're doing great. But even if you don't know the Byzantine Hollywood stuff behind the scenes of these, I still feel like something is off still comes through. And yet, yeah, if you'll forgive the run on tangent, this one works in spite of itself, just like the last one worked in spite of itself. Even more so this time. And when it eventually gets to where it's going, which does kind of take a while, so settle in, this is definitely a December paced blockbuster. You know, you think, like, I'm looking at just all this the background, the 
logos, the Patreon thing. I'm just, it really is like a time machine. Yeah, the it's the, like you just stepped back in time is, to is the Patreon like thing the late nineties. Well, I uh, was gonna say it looks low if anything, it's compressed. Oh, you mean the logo? The logo is low res for sure. Look at it. Look at that. <laughs> how are we? How? <laughs> like, there are so many high any... <laughs> quality like Patreon photos that you could just pull from Google. Made in twenty twenty one. What the it. fuck? And background music as well is really funny. Yeah. yeah. It. Also, it's not just that. So someone, I guess, someone snagged Movie Bob on Patreon before he got it. <laughs> um, so he had to add a one to his, I suppose. But uh, I like to think that I, not to toot my own horn, but I like to think that I'm pretty good at getting, let's say, faces drawn faces to match with audio. You know, I like to think I'm okay at that. I've done it once or twice. Um, when the faces, when he puts Frank, faces, what? I need the three of you without checking to guess what he's getting on Patreon. Uh, uh per month. Bucks month. So, uh, are you going with three hundred? What are you doing? I am going to say twelve hundred. Twelve hundred and skipper. I guess I go. I'll say fifteen hundred. Three thousand three hundred and forty-five. Jesus oh, fucking oh, Christ! Oh, Why okay, well, I guess. in the fucking world is he getting that much money? What the fuck? I don't get people. I don't get people. Sociology is a scam. The only reason you would ask is because it was really low or really high. So I, uh, I really flipped the coin <laughs> <laughs> off, off by a factor of ten. I never would have guessed it was three thousand three fifty. That that's not. Uh, what the hell are they paying for? Do you think this is a collection of people who've like got dead accounts and just haven't corrected it? <laughs> That feels like an odd thing to have a dead account for, something that costs you a lot of money, like, cumulatively. Well, if it's one, one or two dollar patron, and it just ends up in your, mm -hmm. and you just, maybe you, right. you have a couple people you're a patron of, and you forgot you're a patron of. Right, right. Off. I don't know how else to explain this. What the hell? If you put, like, I'm, I'm not getting much on Patreon now, because I haven't been as active on my channel, but in terms of, like, putting, investing back into the channel... I have many months worth of Patreon have been invested back into the channel these last couple months for me. With him, he's making 3k a month and his videos look like shit. And he he only uses like artwork, artwork and clips and stuff like that for his channel. So I'm like, if you just spent half of a month's Patreon revenue on just art and thumbnail designs for your channel, you would look, it would look so good. And he just clearly hasn't done it. Or he got scammed. I don't know that there's any interest in evolving the format. That, that's kind of like Not the him. feeling I get it. It's just, that's gotta be just, it. There just can't be. Well, it almost seems like... Because he would have done it. Yeah. I, I, if there, I think if there was, he would have done it. It feels like a factor of a lot of things, like just, oh, the format works. It's like, works. Um, yeah, like, and I can just, and then just keep doing it. And maybe not even, like, treating it as, like, that valuable as work, you know? Like, it's not that important. It's not that meaningful. It's like, well, these are movie reviews, right? I'm just yeah. talking about movies. I gotta get these out. I gotta get each, you know, one a week. Though then, it, But you can make this in not a week. Like, <laughs> I don't know. But it's, it's interesting, though, because, like... In you have to question, like, how much is incompetence and then how much is laziness? Because, like, oh, he's, yeah. at least he's attempting, with these, he's attempting with these little still frames, though, and, like, stuff, but it just looks so ugly. <laughs> like, sorry, man, it's just hideous. I don't know what to say. It's yeah, there, to look at. there's a there's attempt, <laughs> but it's just so odd. Buster designed for, hey, it's cold outside, yet got somewhere else to be theater going. It's genuinely hard not to be moved and feel like you've really watched this assembly of characters arrive somewhere, which is no small feat given that half of them are regulars from a series that hasn't exactly bothered to flesh anyone out much to this point to begin with, and uh, half of them are guests. Is he talking about the MCU there? Yeah, I think so. Oh, maybe he's talking about, like, Ned and MJ and Happy? I guess. Which, I mean, you Does, know. Is he really happy with, like, Harry and, and Amazing Spider-Man 2? I guess so. I don't know. <clears throat> because it's done so quickly that it's like hard to grasp the points too much. Stars from other yeah. movies. 
counting on Universal received nostalgia by osmosis to do most of the initial heavy lifting in what is essentially a lesser lie. See that, see like the cut in between the sentences? Like that wasn't natural. He cut out oh, yeah, the space he's... in between the sentences and you can tell because there's like the, the abrupt start of a sentence. It's not like a sound was naturally coming out of a mouth. He, he, he cut it. He chops all the gaps from the audio and then just shoves them all up. I don't think he looks at the timing at all. Yeah, he like he's looking at the he's looking at the physical waves on the the program whatever he uses and he cuts using that even though it's not accurate really especially at the beginning and end of sentences when it tapers off on both sides and it's not really accurate to the little line going up and down for the volume and so like bits just get cut off at the ends he's talking about the tasm films which he hated there's only one character from well i guess you you could argue Lizard and Taz, uh, Electro, but I don't, I, I don't get the vibe he's talking about them. Um, when he said that. Talking about Raimi films, right? I thought he was talking about the MCU ones when he said the the limited characterization. Oh, yeah, he's saying that those ones have limited by comparison to you know the other films. Presumably, yeah. Or uh, Raimi by osmosis to do most of the initial heavy lifting in what is essentially a lesser live action cover of into the spider-verse speaking of which the i mean the films are completely different so i don't know yeah why they you... are completely different is no, it just because it has multiverse in it oh, okay. yeah. and that's it's the same it just has multiverse in it so it's basically in same it's thing. basically in game <laughs> yeah plot is in fact significantly more complicated than what's being relayed by the trailers but for the sake of avoiding spoilers oh, most of no the starting shit. setup goes as advertised with his secret identity now known and accused of murder so that the whole people knowing spider-man see like he couldn't let murder breathe no he had to he had cut to right cut in. off murder it was it was desperate that he took the time and the effort misplaced effort is a big you you guys know you guys know the the phantom toll booth you guys aware of that sounds familiar but no um, the Phantom Toll Booth is, um, by Norton Jester. It's an old, I think it was like 50s or 60s, something like that. But there's, there's a character in it, and I forget what his name was, but it's basically like a kid who goes into a Phantom Toll Booth, and he goes to this land where there's all these characters who teach him lessons about life and things of that nature. And one of the characters that he meets is, I forget its name, but... The idea is that this character gets you to waste your time with useless tasks and not devote your efforts to things that are meaningful. And I feel like that is like the character who's who struck Movie Bob. <laughs> Movie Bob, he'll go through all the effort and the trouble because like because in the book, the the this task giver guy, he says, all right, I want you to go ahead and carve out a cave in this wall and I want you to use this needle. Right. Because it's just this useless menial task that will take you forever to do, but is oddly engaging. And I feel like him, when he goes back into his audio and he's clipping out all these little bitty pieces and taking out all the space between the sentences, when he should be like just practicing his manner of speech, getting better assets to look at, things like that. That's what comes to mind, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, you're right. He's chopping, at, he's chopping in ways that um, would take similar efforts, but are just... Fucking worse. Yeah, yeah. Spider-Man's identity can still be a problem in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where secret identities are otherwise not really a big deal for anyone else. Peter Parker realizes that his life as Spider-Man is making things miserable for his loved ones, and without giving it away, I do appreciate the extremely of-the-moment acknowledgement of what the end of the world actually means for teenagers in 2021 versus the classic version of the... See, like, the faces. When, when I see a face on the screen and its expression, it doesn't match tonally or like topically to what is being said it's just a face like a, a random face you might as well mix them up and just put a face out there in his videos and it's indistinguishable from an attempt at order if that's what he's doing there's the it's it doesn't match why bother is it just so that an image changes i think they're supposed to or, evoke uh well they tell you what he feels is supposed to be evoked by whatever he's saying. Like, uh, that face we just saw. Like, this is his I am happy face, I guess. Acknowledgement <laughs> of what And then that's his, like, I am consumed. I'm confused. Slash, yeah. 
what the world actually means for teenagers in 2021 versus the classic version of these stories where getting attacked by villains would be the first problem instead of what the real inciting incident turns out to be for the kids here and attempts to get his wizard friend Doctor Strange to cast a spell that will make the world forget that the unmasking ever happened but when Peter tries to tamper with the details to preserve memories of certain friends and family something goes wrong and the broken magic instead pulls enemies of alternate incarnations of he ran out of breath and then he just kept going even though it created this horrible uh, gap in the sentence even Surely in your head, it should just a, be, if I run out of breath, this sentence is too long, and I should cut <laughs> it down. No. Or maybe I am horrifically overweight, and <laughs> I, need, I am so out of shape that I'm just running out of steam while I'm talking. Talking, I'm so fat now that just talking wears out. Hey, you have to take breaths. Out. Like, I understand, it's just, he, it's definitely the sentences. He fucking writes retarded sentences that go on forever. Of course he runs out of breath eventually. Yes, he's a he's chungus. A big, I'm pretty he's sure it's more tied to his writing. <laughs> he's a big chungus fatty boy. And we love him. Broken Magic instead pulls enemies of alternate incarnations of Spider-Man from elsewhere in the Marvel Multiverse, specifically Green Goblin, Doctor Octopus, and Sandman from the early 2000s Sam Raimi movies, and Electro and the Lizard from the aborted 2010 Amazing Spider-Man duology, initially tasked with track. Duology was... sounds like it was tacked on at the end. Uh, maybe. Here, let, like, let me, yeah, let, let me uh, bring it back just a little bit. Listen, listen for that, and see if that is somehow like stitched onto the end of that sentence. Sam Raimi movies and Electro and the Lizard from the aborted 2010 Amazing Spider-Man duology initially tasked with <laughs> See? He totally yeah. added that in. Like, he couldn't even finish that sentence. He had to he had to stitch duology to the end of whatever he was doing because he couldn't manage to do it. And instead of just saying the sentence over again, he's like, nah, I'll just I'll just use surgery and I'll just surgery. attach duology to the end of that sentence. It'll be fine. No one will no one will notice. Is your Patreon dollars at work? Yeah. The dimensionally displaced bad guys, Peter himself, then gets cold feet when he learns most of them, removed not only from different older movies, but different time periods, so hope you like jokes about technological progress, are eventually going to be killed by their universe's Spider-Man, he becomes reluctant to send them back, putting him into a direct conflict with the Sorcerer Supreme and setting up a surprising second half of the film that's one part- And a lot of this video is summarizing the- this off the film. The yeah. Whole movie. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't know what else- By the I way, I would say. have- watched his spoiler video, but he doesn't have one, he just has a spoiler-free one. He's like, okay. Oh. Sincere, superhumanly efficient payoff machine, delivering all the weight, character development, heart, growth, impact, tactile, human-scale, raw action, and for- Tactile, human-scale, raw action. Tactile. Yeah, we've come across tactile with, with video makers before. It's, uh, if you remember, actually, it's a bit of a throwback. It was used, um, when Jack Saint was doing, uh, the video on me. And we were like, what the fuck does tactile mean in reference to a video? And then he was on Twitter being like, you guys are fucking idiots if you don't know what tactile means. And I'm just sitting here like, but no, we know the... what it means, that's why we're confused. Exactly, that's the problem, it's the use of, it's like, just because you use like a word that's abstractly not really usually sits in that sentence and it evokes a particular thing, it's like, that's not very clear, everyone can have a different idea of what the fuck that means. Yeah, um, if you told me that a video was tactile, that I watch, like I, I don't, I don't even know what you mean by that. Well, if I said this, what we're seeing right now is loud. Um, you can have an idea of what I mean, but at the same time, yeah. I'd be like, well, do you want to maybe go further on that? And it's like, yeah, you know, maybe because if I describe something as tactile, I just feel like, okay, do you mind explaining that? Because that's kind of useless. I feel it. You're like, okay. Lack of a better word, Spider Man ness that not only this franchise. It's a Byzantine tomb, yes. Chai's has somewhat lacked for two prior films and maybe a few other films as well. Well, that would be telling. But also one part. Wait, what? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Only this um, franchise has somewhat lacked for two prior films and maybe a few other films as well. Well, that would be telling. But also one. Is he. I don't know what point he's trying to make. Is he being critical of. Other films lacking an aspect of what this one has? Well, because he was saying... He's talking about I'm going to roll him back even further. Heart, growth, impact, tactile, human scale, raw action, and for lack of a better word, Spider-Man-ness that not only this franchise has somewhat lacked for two prior films, and maybe a few other films as well. Well, that would be telling. But other also films, one other Spider-Man films, or just other films? Yeah, he's Civil about War Taz and Infinity War? Is he talking about the Taz movies, or are you talking about the Raimi movies? I don't know. 
it's open for interpretation, which it shouldn't be, because I need... I, well, because he said that would be telling. But the thing is, we know he thinks the Taz movies are bad. I'm pretty sure he has videos on it. Same for Raimi being good. He has videos on that, so I don't know what... Are you talking yeah, about Civil War? I don't know. Chasm and the, the new one. I'm very confused. Um, I Yeah, I don't know what he's referring to, which means I can't really just pull anything out of what he's trying to say. Part way kind too meta, occasionally off-putting franchise management exercise. Did he say occasionally? I think so. Sad. So one part way too meta, occasionally off-putting franchise Man. management exercise in which yeah. things happen because they must, characters make abrupt personality shifts to accommodate those musts as Marvel, Disney, and Sony very loudly get their ducks in a row for whatever comes next while also maybe working out an elaborate- I, I have no examples to work with here. It's just, it's all this ethereal referencing other things and I, I don't, I don't know what to pull from this I because- that's his way of sp staying spoiler free. <laughs> I guess, but you can reference other movies, you know, and stay spoiler free. Yeah. Elaborate philosophical oh, no. metaphor, making a case for Zoomer presentism that's maybe also an extremely cynical framing for Disney owning everything what? ever as a more. Zoomer presentism? Zoomer what? what the fuck is that? Uh, let me look at presentism. I assume it means a focus on the present. <laughs> presentism. Uncritical adherence to present-day attitudes, especially the tendency to interpret past events in terms of modern values and concepts. So you're saying that that's what Zoomers are, but they interpret the past through a modern lens, and that's like a Zoomer thing, and that has something to do with Disney owning everything? Isntism. I, I just, I ain't heard that one. Like, this just feels a bit like reaching... You know, almost to like make some broad point about society. Just Zoomer when you talk about a fucking Spider Man movie. Well, yeah, let's see it in context. Making now. a case for Zoomer presentism that's maybe also an extremely cynical framing for Disney owning everything ever as a moral principle in itself, but that's another show. The Why? Well, how? Who has a moral principle? Maybe he's that? talking about the fact that there are a lot of people who are just like gleeful at the notion of Disney. Like, yeah, there are a the lot film? of people who are really happy. I uh, yeah, that's fine. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea what he means. That Disney is struggling to keep a, a, a claw on Spider-Man because Sony can just pull him away whenever they want. Especially with the contract up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so that doesn't really match your thing there. Spider-Man is, if that's owned by Sony while Disney has the Marvel Universe, it, funnily enough, you wouldn't think it. That actually balances out because of how popular Spider-Man is right now. And always has been. Well, That's yeah. why there was that quote when they said nobody cared about the other Marvel characters. It's like, well, they were kind of wrong. The fact of it is, the constant with the Marvel films is that they live and die on the characters that are often bigger than the individual films they appear in, and to the degree that this I don't agree. I nah, think a lot no, of people... That, that's yeah, the that's opposite, actually. True. Yeah. It's the opposite, they, if anything. Ant-Man yeah. lives off of the fact that he's part of the MCU. Yeah, Captain yeah. Marvel is probably the primo example of this. You slap anything yeah, like, between Infinity War and Endgame, and that thing's making a billion dollars. We might be past that era now. Um, yeah, maybe. Because, like, you know, if they I say, like, a new so. Avengers is coming out, I, I do worry for the MCU. Like, depending on who the fuck's headlining that, like, I wonder how many people it's going to draw. Because mm. you lost your Iron Man and your Cap. And your Spider-Man. I'm guessing he won't be in the next Avengers. I assume he probably, won't be. Probably not, yeah. Hope not. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not, too. This time, Tom Holland has both the best material, in a solo film anyway, he's been given to work with in the role, and isn't being asked to shoulder the burden entirely on his own, with Zendaya, Jacob Badalon, and Marissa Tomei all getting fairly beefy parts this time along. See, he did that cut in the, a mm -hmm. sentence, and he, he clearly <sighs> went back. For whatever reason, that sentence was unacceptable. It did not meet the high movie bob quality standards, and it needed to be changed alongside guest stars are actually a significantly bigger part of this than the heavily advertised Doctor Strange business is, though it is fun watching Team Marvel pair up that side of their toolbox with teenage characters and throw together basically their much more sarcastic version of a Harry Potter movie, at least until they have to pull Strange off the board from- So he did it again? Yeah, he does it a little- Like-, like how, just, how is this not a spoiler, geez. by the way, that Doctor Strange isn't in, in it that much? Well, yeah, because that- that's- we're halfway through the film at that point, right, where he gets yanked out. Yeah. Okay, I guess yeah. he's willing to spoil some stuff. Um, 
I guess that's a mild spoiler to say that he's not in it that much. Well, we well what if you we come guessed. into the movie thinking Doctor Strange is going to be in it huge? You know, he's on the poster, right? Look at him. Look how big he is. Yeah, we, we guessed big. he would get booted out, but I don't think you'd have to say that is a spoiler of some sort, right? I guess it has to kind. be. It wasn't in the trailers that he would be booted out. Yeah, I think for, if you were only going from the trailers, you could imagine he was in the whole film. Well, remember, even in the trailer, you've got him like, oh, they're all coming through. Oh, no, and it's framed yeah, as she's like. In the last part. Mm. Yeah, it's framed as him being there in the fight because it's nighttime when in reality it's daytime in that scene. Most of Act Two and Three, yeah. so there can like be an Act Two and Three, as I think is sometimes the case with the Marvel movies. It probably sounds Man, like this is all the other hand. Time. With my hand. I love it. <laughs> oh, well, I was going with the whole he once again cutting his sentences in half, and you can clearly tell that sentences are just stitched and cut up and put well, back I'll together. Say, right? it's, like, it's easier, right? Like if you if you flub the latter portion of a sentence and you're like well i just need to read the end again and you have no concern for how it flows fuck it mm. i still think it'd be easier to just say it again nah not if you don't <laughs> care nah. i guess it, yeah i guess if you don't yeah i i don't know it's just bizarre until bizarre they have use of one's effort and attention to detail mm-hmm strange off the board for most of act two and three so there can like be an act two and three as i think is sometimes the case with the marvel movies it probably sounds like this is more of a negative review than it actually is though you know partly since a lot more of the interesting things they fall under spoiler territory but also because at this point we're either at or about to hit 30 of these goddamn things and if you count the tv show it's amazing all you I, have to I'm do sure. is play trailer footage you know or just lo some little clips and put an overlay over it that's nice and easy Every once in a while, maybe throw in a different face. No problem at all. It takes a couple seconds to do that. And seven minute script. You can probably crank one of those out and when he's recording that in like eight easy. minutes because of yeah. how little he gives a shit about the quality of it. You can make a video like this in easily under an hour. Yeah. Whole thing, start to finish. We're talking like you oh, you need to make a video, you have an hour. And you can crank this out, and it's done. And then you just have to hit upload it to YouTube, and boom, it's done. 3K a month. Nice and easy. These shows, basically Jeez. none of them we are ever below a B plus. so the stuff that's good here is just kind of, oh yeah, wow, the new Wait, Marvel did he just say none of the Marvel... Wait, hold on. We need to hear that again. About to hit 30 of these goddamn things, and if you count the TV shows, basically none of them are ever below a B plus. so the Man, stuff that's good here is just kind really? of... Really? <laughs> wow, none of them are below a B Didn't plus. Didn't he say that he mm. thinks like that... so he thinks Spider Man Far From Home is a B plus, even though he said it was is B plus he must be mis... in his world? He must well, was he be talking about the TV shows? Right? He said in, even including or or not. Oh right, he, right. He said even including the TV shows, right? Or Wait, so everything well, either way to the MCU is not below a B plus. Like, damn. Well, that's it's I like, think that's like the 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 consensus a lot of the time, right? Where people like even when they're like not that good, they they're rarely bad. Whereas I think it is the hot take that it's like actually a good portion of these movies aren't that good. Yeah. Um, I think there is a general consensus that Marvel is pretty consistent, which yeah. But that should be a normie take from just some guy, not some normal movie, person on the street. Movie, you, yeah, you not expect. someone who's a movie reviewer, yeah. Oh yeah, wow, the new Marvel movie is a totally rock-solid front-to-back action blockbuster. The humor lands, the fight scenes are terrific. Basically, the only studio that still knows how to do plot structure in a big movie anymore. There's great what? 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 what are you talking about? What are you- First of all, Actually, what are you talking they about? They don't know how to do that. Secondly, what? <laughs> like, the, the, Other films, other- the, Fucking Mission Impossible movies. Did, did, uh, did, I, I feel like almost everyone's doing better than them. At this point, yeah. Dude, like, DC's, like, doing better than them. Like, their plot structures bit. are horrible. Often, they've been made fun of semi-regularly for third acts that are just insane. Like, there's just... Like, mm -hmm. Black Widow, for example. It's like, what the fuck was that? I think the problem is that... I think that the general consensus that that has been developed is the main thing with marvel movies is they're like schlock they're like predictable they're flat in terms of cinematography like they're very much an assembly line film but they're okay whereas i think the actual take is no all that first part's true but also it's like man we, we have a lot of bad movies here oh yeah looking effects work you
mind blowing twists in Act 2 and 3, etc., etc. The score is good. So, in the end, especially in a non spoiler review, it's what doesn't work that are the surprises that are at least worth talking about. Otherwise, yeah, like I said, pretty damn good, definitely worth seeing. And I would say, yes, ultimately. I don't, when he says that a movie's good, I don't know what that means. I didn't even get the impression that he thought it was good from a lot of stuff he said, but I guess he does. Yeah, I guess. Worth what it took to get here, even if it seems like our send-off is, okay, maybe this time this character will progress meaningfully beyond this specific point. Guess we'll find oh. out. But until then, yeah, call it a seven, but a strong... Ah, you fucker. <laughs> that was you do the loud. thing that everyone does. You don't balance your goddamn bells properly. Seven, definitely check it out. I had a good time with it. <laughs> even when he's talking, it's like his mic is peaking. <laughs> It's scratchy. <laughs> right, can you please appreciate the comic timing of that? It seems like a parody video where he just comes in with a stupid music again. Well then, yeah, call it a seven, but a strong seven. Oh. Definitely check it out. I had a good time with it. <laughs> All right. Um, just got here. God. Is, he nearly 40? Is he nearly 40 years old? Bob Chippen, 82. Is he nearly 40? <laughs> I, I guess so. I love the idea that he was born in, like, the 60s, and he's just, like, struggling to make this shit work anymore. <laughs> Is it nearly 40 stone? I don't know what stone is, Rags. you got to convert that to real weight. It, well, I know it, it's 14 pounds. I don't know what that is in Kiwi. So, again, 14 yeah. pounds. Wait, 14 Can pounds? Just... Not that much. Hold on, kilogram to stone. Fuck me. Um, all right. In fact, I think you'd be dead if you weighed 14 pounds. <laughs> okay, so 44. No, nice. You, you were like, you, because you said Bob Chipman 82. What is he almost 40? And I was like, 40 stone. Which makes sense. So yes. So uh, apparently a stone is 6.35029 kilograms. And if it was worth it, all things considered. Oh, so about, there wasn't a lot to say with that one. No, it was, a, was a lot nothing. of it was just confusion. He said an odd thing here and there, some wrong things about his ability to assess quality, which is pretty bad considering his line of work. Um, a lot of it was just plot synopsis and ambiguous explanations of things without explaining things. And yeah, it wasn't like he was really trying to say anything. It was very, fairly empty yeah, for a, a that, uh... video. Bob does like parodies, right, of other people sometimes, but like he's his a parody of a person. He's well, done... that's what I was about to say. He's taken his, shots. His I don't know if he's ever done like a full parody. Because his format is so easy to parody. You just yeah. need to have like some shit rock music as the intro and some poor, like really bad typography, and then just with like you get your old Xbox 360 microphone and then record and just speed ramp it up and, and just write sentences that are just complete word salad, don't say anything, Seven and then 7 out of 10 loud ding, burn, da, 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 like, then you've made a movie buff video. And yeah, I guess the tutorial boss is dead for this EFAP, because that was more, that was more so just that about was, the production, yeah, you didn't was, really say anything that was... Yeah. So, Buy a microphone, but, they're not expensive. You make 3K, uh, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what the food budget is over there, but... Surely you could put a put some pennies aside to get a a microphone, maybe. In your video where you talk for a living. I just can't believe with that level of Patreon that he's not able to fund, you know, better everything for his channel. He should have at least a couple of employees, right? With that, <laughs> with that, Adam. Um, could anyone really work for him? Money. I don't think so. Well, look at this video. Like if. I guess if you are the kind of person and you only want a certain level of, like, you can keep this style and have it look good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so even if he was like, it's all going to be me. It's just a one man production. I'm, I'm. Maybe he's just not good at. Well, clearly, he's not good at video editing. So I want to keep it simple, and I just want it to be nice and look nice. But it doesn't look nice. Even this is blurry. Is that I is that the way in the real video? The text at the end? Let me let me go to the end and see. Da, 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 da. Let me go to You might render it all out in seven twenty, I don't know. Honestly, because I'm I'm looking at this in ten eighty P sixty, that's what he renders his as, and it's blurry. It's text and it's blurry. 
Like this is here. I'll just screenshot it, and it's just like it's legitimately like blurry text. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it should yeah, look better right here because I've shrunk. It's been shrunk down for Discord. Right, but it, it, how do you have text blurry? It's text. It's like the, vector the, based. The, the rock and music is pulling the bit right. <laughs> the vib- it's, it's vibrating. It's almost just yeah. asked who's more inept, Movie Bob or Nostalgia Critic. And it's like Nostalgia Critic upgraded his technology. Nostalgia, Nostalgia Critic, Critic is absolutely more competent than Movie easily. Bob based on this. Like, he does like I green don't screens and there's, costumes. There's a real yeah, Bob has yeah. a green door. A, yeah. a similar. And like <laughs> his movie, uh, not Movie Bob, uh, uh, nostalgia critics, his skits are they practice with them, they clearly rehearse them. The execution of the skits are not the problem, it's that they're not funny and they're cringe. That's actually it's not probably that a good point. If they had rehearsed. a better writer, those skits might be completely to- tolerable because the yeah. RLM skits that are like the best ones, oftentimes they're just as like you know, like stupid, but um, they'll be they'll have comedic timing, they'll have uh, subtext like nostalgia critic ones are just. Well, we've seen They're just not written well, yeah. But the people that he has employed, they're all, they've all said things and delivered lines in ways that can totally be funny. It's just what they say isn't funny. I think we've, we, have we said that Asagra has told a joke we've liked at some point? Has that happened? I'm sure he has. I'm certain he has. I legitimately am, am confident that he has said a, a legitimately funny joke. Probably, yeah, probably. I can't remember what it is or where it was. No. But I am confident that he has has told funny jokes that have made us laugh. There like there are he has the capacity. Here's the thing. I think that Nostalgia Critic definitely has the capacity to be very clever, but he can't channel that cleverness into a way that's funny. We'll see him next Halloween. I mean, he's he's always there. We could visit him whenever we want. True. Maybe we, maybe he'll release something controversial, like um, he'll give the next Avengers a one out of ten. Like oh my. Um, Remember Carl Rag saying, "Okay, that was a good nostalgia critic joke." Yeah, he can make good jokes. Like even when we were, I actually rewatched it the other day. Our League of Extraordinary Gentlemen EFAP. Mm-hmm. He, if you just looked at a lot of those script wise just by the words alone, some of the things he says are funny. He just says them in a very unfunny way with no timing or, I guess, awareness of how to deliver them. But some of the lines in concept are funny. And I will it's say, just that they go through a joke. There's some joke killing process. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, a, like a Tyson factory, you know? It, it's just, it, it has to, the joke has to die in the process of it getting into a final video with him. And to take something like Van Helsing or The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and make it so lame. Like, damn, they give you so much to work with. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're different beasts. They are different beasts. Though, like, whose script you want to listen to more? And it's like, Bob is aware of more longer words than uh, uh, Nostalgia Critic is, but... Man. Or maybe, Nostal- or maybe Nostalgia Critic legitimately knows not to use them. Maybe, yeah. Because sure Nostalgia Critic's video... I like covering him because there's all you always want to pay attention because he can say something interesting, even if it's bad. Like, he, he speaks in a way that you can clearly understand. You never have to try and decipher the things that he's saying, for the most part. You're not sitting there with this confused look on your face. What's the point of Just Got Here, by the way? Huh? On the screen. Just got here. No idea. Just got here. Oh, just got here. Uh, oh, oh, is th- maybe this music is his, and it's called "Just Got Here," and it was. I know. Our, made it, he made it. Yeah, he made this music. That would be hilarious if he did, because it's just the kind of music I expect him to make. But I don't know. It's just a super generic light rock riff in the back. That doesn't match him or his videos whatsoever. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, the next boss will be one that production-wise should probably be worlds away from Movie Bob, but the script will have much more intention, I would imagine. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, as has been voted by you in chat, the next will be High Top Films. 
And films. as you know, the history of him is that Homecoming was not a Spider-Man film. Far From Home made him sick. So, what will this one do? Let us find out. Right. Yeah. So two years ago, Spider-Man Far From Home broke. Ready? Yeah. It's glad we had that. Broke. Sick. Heartbroken. Well, now I'm about to go see No Way Home, but I have to make a. Yeah, I almost implied we wouldn't be critical of his editing, but I always am. <laughs> like we are super. He pretentious. found a light. Found a light to get under. He brought the nice camera outside. Someone held it for him. Bathed in light. It's on symbolic. A dark city street. Stop first. What's in his backpack? Josh, are you excited for No Way Home? Kinda. John, are you excited for No Way Home? Yeah. Yeah. You got a restaurant to film? Here we go. Well, going to see a Spider-Man movie is a huge occasion, so they were probably doing lots of things that day to set it up. It's like this is a main event coming. I guess. Hey, how you doing? As much as I'd like to think my passion, my style, my personality is what led what me to have doing? the plot. What are you doing? This isn't a style. This is just shit on a screen. This is like, so look, stuff. Maybe, I'll stare at this brick wall and then I'll touch it and then Please the doing a camera will be pink. Pretending to oh? climb up the wall, He's right? doing the Spiderman crawl up the oh. wall with sick camera tricks. Yeah. Oh. Like, okay. uh, and, and he can't, he can't settle down. He has to, everything's changing all the time. Hey, how you doing? As much as I'd like to think my passion, my style, my personality is what led me to have the platform that I'm so lucky to be standing on. I'd be lying if I didn't admit that my career on here, my success, my infamy, whatever the fuck you want to call it, You're a hack. is forever intertwined in the tangled web John Watts and Kevin Feige have woven for the wall crawler. True. Uh, his main first viral video was talking about how much Spider-Man isn't Spider-Man. So, um, I think he's had some luck with Batman as well. But, um, th that means he has to talk about No Way Home and every other one to come out. Even though, I think Far yeah. From Home, he said something along the lines of, like, he's... He said he wouldn't. Yeah. But then he did, because of course he did. Of course he did. After Far From Home, after the constant, consistent lack of hefty emotional weight, the avoidance... All right, you, well, wrong. let us begin. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> uh, it's the same point everyone always fucking made. Because like, obviously we've, we've covered his stuff before about like no emotional weight, no consequence, no real, actual, legitimate uh, things happening. When one of the things we praise Homecoming for is the fact that we can finally not have to deal with catastrophic stakes. We can deal with smaller yeah, scale space stakes. space and time and... The universe and all that. Um, very, very, like, like, definitively just, no, there's just no emotional stakes. Like, all right, if you say so. I don't know, I, I've always appreciated that Homecoming is like the first fucking movie in the MCU that calmed down. Um, because they always, they only seem to ramp up. Sense of empathy and sincerity, the focus on being- Oh, wow, no sense of empathy or sincerity. How come, like, when somebody makes a movie, like, why does he presume that John Watts has no level of sincerity, like, in terms I of don't the know. he's making? Why have we just decided to throw him under the bus? Sounds personal. I think it is personal when it comes to High Top. He's, uh, he took this personal. <laughs> making these movies was very personally an attack to him. A light-hearted teen comedy with the maturity and depth of an episode of Drake and Josh. Uh I don't know how, yeah, if you cut out the scenes where they're not doing jokes, I just, then you can make this point, yeah. The maturity and depth of Drake and Josh were an episode of it, and it's like, alright, so I'm guessing you're saying you can't draw anything meaningful out of these, the first two, presumably. Cause Which feels like, but again, it's easy to say that when you don't show the clips from, like, the big story moments, the like in Homecoming, just where... Losing his shit because of... Yeah, or at the crashes. end of this film when he's like doesn't even know if Happy's happy, and then they have the scene on the plane where he's talking about how sad he is. Like I don't, it, it, yeah. If you show these clips, then you can make this point. Well, yeah, I know that. Um, I guess a lot of Spider-Man fans hate the fact that this is a thing, but him mourning Tony like. As his mentor, it's like that's meaningful, but I guess if you hate her, it, it's just because you don't like the meta because it's in the MCU. But that's not. I don't know. It's it's a film in the MCU. It's gonna be related to other films in the series. 
But I guess we gotta shit on him as much as we can before we set up how No Way Home, because this video is called Spider-Man No Way Home Kind of Fixed MCU Spider-Man. So we've gotta set it so that all the things that he praises No Way Home for, they were not present in Homecoming and Far From Home, even though they definitely yeah. were. Mm -hmm. I was heartbroken, unable to be excited for anything Marvel. Fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus, it's, it's like, grow the fuck up. Heartbroken because Spider Man no. didn't have enough serious stakes and consequences as far as he was concerned. Jeez. It's, it's, it's weird to me because, like, they, they were. Marvel was going I to, think it's, with they're this... more understandable. Like, they're just more, like, the stakes that he goes through. I could, I get that. I, I can relate to that in a way. Friendships and, you know, school and things of that nature. Real I just can't friends. relate to, oh, the planets could explode. Oh, no, aliens are going to conquer the blah, blah, blah. And the it is a weird so complaint to make in the MCU that this story was too, like, low stakes almost. Well, you almost want to like, have that uh, conversation it, with High Top, right? Where you're like, so the world exploding, we admit that's high stakes. Uh, low stakes are... And he's probably gonna be like, well, obviously, categorically, it's just when there's not much to lose. And you'd be like, and so it's bad to do low stakes, right? Just categorically. And you know that he'd be like, no, it's... I, he can't say that, right? Like, no. it, you can't... You can't have what the are... perspective... Well, I feel like it's the fundamental thing. You can't really have the perspective of liking a lot of things that are really great if you take the stand that low stakes is bad. Because it means you're basically disregarding, like, all serious drama... Like on television or in films, stories that well, are just about like people in the real world doing. I'll give things, you an example. Yeah. yeah. Citizen Kane. Very. What are low the stakes, stakes in Citizen yeah. Kane? It's all the guys about trying to find out what a word life. means. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if he doesn't find out, then. Twelve right. Angry Men. The stakes are one man's life. One. The stakes of um. I mean, the stakes of Breaking Bad, it's like, well, Breaking Bad, it's like a big, it's like, definitely affects a lot of people, but it's ultimately the story of, like, one guy and, like, his family and the people who are connected to him. That's it. Yeah, because you course, can't have low stakes as a, as a thing for bad if you like a lot of things that are just good content. Like, the, there's no world where that makes sense. It seems at this point we've been taken for granted that his life is at risk in everything that he's doing with all this stuff. Like, right, we don't like, even care about not, that anymore. Yeah. That's not really stakes. Mm hmm Marriage stories, low stakes, yeah, definitely. Incredibly low stakes, it's just sorting out the divorce. So many, well, just so many of this, the films that you would consider to be, like, the best films ever, so many of them are just, like, low stakes. Yeah, it's a relationship, or it's someone... A relationship, one person's life, maybe, mm. like, something that affects, like, one town or one city. You know, yeah, hence, not like the whole world. Homecoming's big finale is Vulture might steal a lot of Iron Man stuff. I say a lot, it's probably oh, not a lot. You know what? Because High Top also likes Daredevil. Daredevil is incredibly low stakes compared to everything in the MCU. It's about like one neighborhood of New York. Well, and, and so this is the thing. I could picture someone being like, he's not saying it's low stakes and that's bad. He's saying that there's just nothing at risk. And I'd just be like, that's just like, sounds like a roundabout way of saying the same oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah, what is that the risk? Is what risk in his are. personal life, like in Homecoming, the stakes were specifically to do with like yeah. him and the people that he knew. Shawshank that was, Redemption. That was what Vulture said. Green oh, Shawshank Mile. Redemption. Yep. Yeah. We don't like, have to. I mean, like many literally, when, like, when films, Reservoir like, when, Dogs, to Citizen Kane, like it being the yeah. the thing that is used as the metaphorical highest of its kind, when that has extremely low stakes, then but maybe. Maybe we've jumped the gun. Maybe that's not what he means. Well, we've, there's basically we've, we've... no stakes in Citizen Kane. It's so low. There's basically no stakes. I think that he would find ways to try and avoid that being the conversation because he, he often talks to, about consequence, he's... right? And so he'd be like, "Well, we know nothing was at stake because of the fact that despite there are being failures and sacrifices, there's nothing permanent that happens. But there is in No Way Home. There just wasn't in Far From Home and Homecoming." Except in Homecoming, he the decision he makes permanently cuts off the relationship that he wanted to develop with Liz. That's done. It's yeah, gone. And, and I think someone could be like, that's just one girl. And it's like, no, you can't, you can't do that. And also, as far as he was aware at the time, he had lost the connection to Stark. That was done. And then he still committed to the course of action to try and save the Which day. Which is very meaningful. Not for any reward. Well, that's, the, that's what's, it's an arc. Like, because he well, had one. Yeah, and then comes the ultimate test of like, you've, you are now... You can now accept the thing you've wanted since the beginning. It's the classic fucking advice for writing. Character exactly. wants, character needs. 
He didn't. He wanted to be an Avenger. What he needed to be was his own fucking hero. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, you could be like, "Well, this wasn't in his own movies, but he lost an important mentor to him." That's a that's that's like a point that from now on you are not in the situation that you were before. You were Spider Man, and you had Stark there as a mentor. Now he's not here anymore. That's a total. It it's fundamentally different for him. Yeah, and, and does that not count as a change, like an important change? And that's what the like the whole movie was about. And he's being torn down from the moment he enters the MCU, like across his entire arc, he's just been torn Every down. Every time he's getting, he is. I mean, when we talk about like MCU characters who've had to like really suffer to try and like figure out who they are and and like how to be a hero, god damn, it's well, just constant tests. Well, yeah, constant, um, constant tests. Even the the FNT crew agreed that he is the Spider Man on film that has suffered the most now. Uh, it categorically after no way. Yeah, uh, easily. Yeah. He gave. So up. at least he, at least there's that. Like, <laughs> well, it only took like three movies. <laughs> we got there. This rendition of a character that I have loved since I first could love. Well, you now, love okay. you love particular okay. versions of him. I now so like. We all of us here, we really like movies and games and, and stories and things like that. It still feels really not dramatic. To, to, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like you know, I loved before. Like it would be like if I said, you know, Crash Bandicoot. I loved him as soon as I could love. It's like all right, <laughs> calm down. Like, <laughs> it re it really is one of those like yeah, dude. Calm if, down. Well, if I, you I just gave me your, your video was... to proof of Daredevil, you opened it with saying, "I have loved Daredevil since I had the capacity to love." I'm like, freaking, you might want to cut that. It's a little. Well, I guess, it's it a lie. Feels like, it feels like <laughs> it's it feels not true. To me like an adult, ex almost like post hoc like change because when you're a kid you just like things that you think are cool like i don't know i don't know if that's any more meaningful than oh man that's awesome wow that's great that's super look at simba he's gonna go back and take back pride rock yay like i don't, I don't know that it's ever like as dramatic oh, you're saying like whatever as his kid, appreciation for spider-man has not been the same now as it's always been it's back at no. one point it was cool guy in suit is jumping around beating people up Exactly, and and now yeah. it's become more meaningful because you're an adult and you look back on that time fondly, and also just because as an adult you have a more developed understanding of why you like things. I, I don't know. I, I guess it's it's yeah. <laughs> Wrapping the dude Pride Rock thing from Why Dude Pride Rock. That clip's amazing. <laughs> if anyone hasn't seen it, I'm almost tempted to play it, but just. Oh. YMS is looking at people react to like the trailer, I think, for the new Lion King, and this is this guy. Yeah, it was like <laughs> promotional material. He sees Pride Rock in the trailer, and he's like, "Dude, Pride Rock!" Dude, Pro uh, like, dude, Pride uh, Rock! Uh, <laughs> and we all die inside. Like, oh man. Dude, uh, uh, I love Pride Rock. It's my favorite rock. Yeah, man. It's pretty good rock. To put it simply, Peter Parker in the MCU outside of Civil War has never felt like Peter Parker to me. I okay. Talk to him. That's meaning, yeah, but that, this, like, I just, there's just no value in your opinions. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in exploring them, I just never been, I've never been convinced by these arguments. I know that, you know that, we all know it. I should just shut the f up. And did I think for a second that Spider-Man No Way Home would change that, would fix that? Was I hopeful? A little. Was I assured? Nah. Was I wrong? Kinda. But first, I'd like to thank the special sponsor. Oh, okay. Ooh, this wait, who's video. the sponsor gonna be? Uh, who is oh, oh, uh, oh, Audible. Oh, 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 I mean, I, he does a lot of Raycon. There's a lot of Raycon for him. Or is it gonna be oh. some VPN service? It was some like, oh, it's oh, like an environmental thing, I think. Is oh, I, I'm I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm uh, Dollar Shave Club. I'll go with um the Raycon. He's done Raycon a million times, so I might be right. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna go with a, a VPN. Um, Express okay. VPN. Let's go with that. All right. Where are you, Skipper? <laughs> is it cheating if I already know what it is? Oh, well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ren. I don't know if you've, you know, Ren. outside. Oh, oh, oh. Or... I've never heard of Ren, I don't think. I've so. never heard okay. of Ren. Right, I know that they are birds. Let's, we're, like uh, guys, we're Ren. adding Ren into the known ads. Let's see what this Kylo is. Kylo Ren. Oh. I read the climate report that recently came out, but the phrase code red for humanity threw me into an existential crisis. The th 
Okay. And so stop. Well, so well, so the big implication here is why did you do it if like you really cared, why would you do it in an ad? <laughs> well why you see, you Fringy, just... they offered money. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I care so much that when I was paid to show my concern, I did. <laughs> I, I cared funny. so much that I had to be paid to, to talk about it. You, got, you don't understand, guys, guys I really care about this thing particular thing. Out. I really do. It said code red for the planet, and I panicked with existential dread. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I, just, and I, was, I was like, man, is there any way... It's literally... Have you ever driven past a fire and thought, how does this benefit me? Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> like, Have you ever driven a on fire? Planet planet on on fire. fire. Imagine I was like, this is an ad for local Wisconsin irrigation services. Now, I have been made aware <laughs> that the <laughs> irrigation services in Wisconsin are lacking, and I I wish to ameliorate that situation. I've been I've been contacted by the Crop Dusters Union of Nebraska, and they boy, do they have some complaints. I looked on their website, <laughs> yeah. it said code red, and I was like, holy shit. This ad has know, been sponsored by Save you know, the Whales. I, now, the other day, I found out that whale populations are decreasing, and that <laughs> terrified me. That was really scary. Oh, so, whales blue. are an important got, part of my life. Oh, whale. Yeah, I love whales ever since I could love. <laughs> ever since I could love, I loved <laughs> and now whales. now in trouble. <laughs> whales? No, he'd say, like, whales taught him how to love. Whale? <laughs> he was No, no, he's gonna go further. He was Show raised by whales. Keep going. I want to do a Goodell thing. <laughs> All right. Um. You know the. Uh. You know what is. Um. What. How you know, are Nebraskan crop? No, no, no. I got it now. How oh, come Nebraskan like crop dusters are like actors in movies? Uh. How? How? Because come? they both rely on their props. Oh my god. Oh, we fucking did it. Oh my goodness fun, gracious. Fun. Oh, you know, this oh, this video was wow. sponsored by the Earth Planetary uh, Anti-Bombardment System. You know, I read a report the other day that asteroids are coming to kill us all. That really scared me because I like being alive. So, I waited until there was an ad that I could take to make money to talk about the Anti-Planetary Bombardment System. Well, you, you pay them to put rockets into space, a personal, like, anti-meteorite uh, uh, thing that hovers over your head, and any time a little meteoroid makes it through the atmosphere, it just poops, shoots it, shoots it away. Poof, you're okay. It's okay. You're safe now. You can I, sign I up using my code, um, anti-bombardment uh, defense system slash high top, uh, to save 10% off of your uh, annual subscription to the anti- the personal anti-meteorite bombardment system. Thank you for sponsoring this video. They make great stuff. And I actually use this service. I never leave home without my VPN for asteroids. Yeah, exactly. You want to you wanna get access to asteroids from, from England? You want to watch those asteroids? No problem. Just switch over to the... I do this all the time to watch... Um, uh, 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 the asteroids on, on uh, the, the, what's a topical asteroid uh, that people are talking about right now. So it's the Squid Game asteroid. Yes, that's it. Mm. Wait, where do I go if I want to help fight these asteroids? <laughs> I, Space. Yeah, you gotta... Oh, real, you want to do that? Oh, well. You know, just if you order, the first 432 people to order will also get as, uh, access to a little jetpack thingy that shoots you up into space so that you can shoot the asteroid i think it's a membership it would be like a membership to an asteroid defense fund right yeah, and your yeah. money every month goes to that asteroid defense fund yes uh like it's a big fund and um and then you know and also i guess maybe like part of the ad is to say like look here's a famous person who's also part of the asteroid club you can you know you want to be like them don't you because you suck you're pathetic absolutely worthless unlike these this celebrity you know who they are that means they're better than you so yeah, make sure to yeah. sign up to this club been, yeah she's so been a subscriber can... for six months now greta tell us your story 
and she tells about how she has been hit by asteroids and all that sort of thing and it's it's really great yeah. and Bef- before before this service life. existed before this service existed i cowered in fear every single day worried that an asteroid was mi- a mini mini miniature asteroid would go through the atmosphere and shoot through my head and kill me i was so now, worried I, about that before I, but now i found the server yeah asteroid defense has is, is got my back no. i actually use it I, you know, this is a service I really, actually, genuinely, truly like. And what that implies about anything else I've ever said, uh, you know, as a sponsorship, that's, uh, shut up. Go away. You know, in 1954, a woman was hit by an asteroid that, like, came through the house and hit her? Well, that's what, that's Ooh. what I mean, man. It's, it's a real, like, yeah. thing that could possibly happen. Yeah, it, here, here I, I went and got some pictures of it. Because she didn't, she wasn't a subscriber, but this was before then. So like, it came through the house, Man, right? Just... Like hit the house, went through, and it caught her on the side and legitimately hit her. She was hit by an asteroid. Ooh. Man, what a uh... only if she clicked the link in the description. <laughs> if only, yeah. If only she entered in the referral. Oh, yeah. Code. yeah. If only she put in the referral code. That is pretty crazy, though. Imagine just like you just at home one day, just the hole through your roof is a rock from space. Just flies through the roof. That, the guy on the left looks like William Shatner. The guy on the left does look a bit like. Have you got everything you need, Mubes? Like in terms yes, of the material. Man. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? I was practically writing up what it's going to be in the script, but uh. Oh my goodness, excellent. Was, I, I expect a co-writing credit for that. From all of you. Uh yeah, I mean I guess all of us contributed in some way. I'll just say yeah. EFAB. Okay. It covers everyone. Right. Okay. Including okay. chat. All right. So anyway. The threat of climate change has been around longer than I have, but it's something we don't see happening in... We haven't been around for that long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in terms of the cosmos. Like, well, I mean, here since the Ice been, Age. This is not... Dude, th- hasn't this been going on since, like, longer than every human who's ever been alive? Has been, <laughs> hasn't this, like, been, it's been around the for longer revolution? Like thousands of years. <laughs> oh, we've been on the brink of destruction for decades now. Oh, well, no, I just mean that, like, isn't it just, like, the Industrial Revolution? Isn't that, like, when we started emitting? So, like, everybody who's alive now has been going on for longer than being alive. That's what I mean. It's a really weird way to categorize it. Yeah. Often too easy to ignore. But Ren has an answer for that. Ren oh is God. a website where you can calculate your carbon footprint, then offset. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, that's, that, yes. that just sounds great. That sounds like a really great use of my time. I'm pretty sure that I there was a Kurzgesagt video where they talked about that like the carbon footprint was actually a thing that like BP came up with as yeah. like a concept because it puts the onus on you when you have very little power as an individual to do anything that if you like stopped emitting for the rest of your life that it would just be like it would be like nothing like that that's not that's not what it takes. But let's see what the service is. Anyway, mm, what, is, yeah. what is the service? Set it by funding projects that plant trees, protect rainforest, and start doing something about the climate crisis. It's easy, necessary. I, sorry, I actually am like getting a little annoyed now because like this is an ad. Yes. Like yeah. they're not paid to do this. <laughs> and I feel like this company is just trying to monetize your well, so, sense of good I don't, panic. Maybe maybe the company is like really good and it's doing really cool stuff. I guess it's more just the yeah, idea maybe it's that, like, preventing. You're talking about like, saving the world, but you got paid for this. Like you didn't. It's so awkward you know? when you think about it. Um, the, ad, the, 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 ad, the ad is putting the onus on all of us as individuals and how important and ethical this is and how it's the right thing to do. And that, to be fair, he's he's you know he's he's, he's like I, I'm I'm doing the right thing. You should be too. It's like you're getting paid. Like, it, how awkward does that feel? It does, does feel, feel a little really weird, old. you know. Like if I if I in a video said, "All right, guys, um, so I the sponsor for today's video is Logitech, right? I've been using Logitech products for a long time, and they're great and they're awesome. They have all kinds of different quality ranges and price ranges, and da da da. And I've been using them for ages, and I really like it. And they sponsor this video, and I use you know, like there's this element of I'm doing this for moral reasons. I'm doing this because it's a product that I like and I want to recommend to you, and also I'm getting paid for it." So there's like a well, like, like understanding between me and the audience where we're like, yeah, I, I get money, you get good stuff and never throw you that sort of thing. This breaches that and goes into its own sort of like it, it gets I into think it's a matter of I don't know how I feel about the idea of being paid to promote charity. Feels 
odd. Yeah, there's is something, this something there. Chair well, I'm, in the I'm sense that, like, what would be like if I took an ad to to sponsor, like, I don't know, like a like Salvation Army or something? It feels odd. Like, the, I'm doing an ad of like, hey, this you're you're being paid, and then you're like talking about it from like a moral perspective of like, ah, oh, now I can help the planet. Like, as if there weren't any options available beforehand, you know. Because yeah, someone said yeah. it's for a good it cause, really and it's awkward. like, yeah, but they only did it because they were paid. That's what makes it so <laughs> awkward. Because <getting> <laughs> this is the thing, it's like, how many people out there don't accept any sponsorships, but will promote what they believe are important or good products? To be important. Well, yeah, like, like if somebody, you know, like if, if somebody promotes something that they think is a good cause and they've never been paid to do it, it's like, doesn't that not feel like there's an element there of like, man, you've like gone out of your way to basically try and advance a cause that you believe in. That's really cool. And yeah, uh, you know, because we recommend stuff randomly, like uh, if services work well or don't. But um, you never have to catch us saying we actually use this one. Or this one's actually moral. <laughs> like, so don't worry about it. Right. Uh, don't tell me that. In, don't tell me in this video that they paid you money for that. You're doing it because you had an existential crisis. Yeah, because that's. Oh, I, I guess to be. I guess to be clear, that's right? a lie. Um, I suppose to be clear on this, because of course, like there are people who work for charities who get paid, and like charities got to pay money to like keep their services operational and things like that. I feel like there's got to be a distinction between that and one, like. I I think I think this specifically like the way that it's being presented to me is the yeah. thing that's rubbing me the wrong way. Not not like the principle of we've, somebody making money from a charitable cause. We've seen a lot of high top videos. I don't think I've ever heard him talk about climate before. Right, no, this is the first time. It. And so it you might be like, comes out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, I call me cynical, but I feel like he's only <laughs> telling me about this because someone paid him to, not because he cares nah, about it's it. A, it's disingenuous. Well, maybe every video has this in it, right? Yeah, you change the new leaf from now on. Just gonna <laughs> I hope to hear updates on the planted trees, high top, in every video going mm -hmm. forward. Okay? That'd be nice. Yeah. I mean, about damn time for us to take some damn responsibility and accountability. See how compelling he's trying to be? But it's yeah. Like, oh, it's so fucking. I'm just thinking of them giving you a sack of money with a dollar sign on it. <laughs> I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm having a finger wagged at me. Like, oh, take wait. some responsibility. Ability or something like that. What What is he saying here? I think he's saying it's about damn time we take responsibility. Crisis. It's you easy, yourself, necessary, mate. and about damn time for us to take some damn responsibility and accountability for the planet we call home. Just by answering a few questions about your lifestyle, you can find out your carbon footprint and figure out how you can reduce it. No human being so, can fully reduce their carbon. So I, I, it's really like awkward I'm, because like, it's a, exactly like I'm doing. Is it's like. It's it's not like individuals have very little capacity to like it's it's really awkward like ah here you can do a quiz on like how you suck and it's like basically you know, people, yeah people become accustomed to the lifestyle that they're presented with like it's really awkward because yeah like if you live in a western country your carbon footprint is very high compared to like the carbon footprint of somebody from like uh, Nigeria or something but like I don't. It feels really awkward to just like, and then say, ah, yeah, see, you suck, you know? Like, you need to take some, take some responsibility. responsibility. Take accountability. <laughs> just, I'm looking at this. Especially when I'm being told this. Would, genuinely, would he have taken responsibility and accountability had he not been I, paid? That's exactly where I was about to say. It's like, I'm being told this him. by somebody who's been paid to do an ad. Like this. I, <laughs> You're being paid I, to tell me I suck. Do better, like, everyone. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know if High Top at the end of the sad is going to tell us what his carbon footprint is from Ren.com because, of course, he went there and he found out his and he has an account there and he is taking responsibility, well, right? It's, it's, so it's I'm, not... I'm curious if we will learn High Top's carbon footprint and he will tell us and he's telling us what he's going to do to reduce his right, own. I believe he engaged with it once. He showed it for the ad and he's not going to give a fuck about it for the rest of his life unless they pay him again. But, 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 but he's telling us to take responsibility. What do you mean? But what? What? That, that can't, no, that can't be right. What? No. Do better, Rags. No, Mahler, no. Do better. No, how dare you Do malign better. the honor of High Top 
he, we have to take responsibility, just like he told us to. It's about, he said damn twice, Mahler. Do, do twice. Better. Do better. Footprint is zero, but you can offset what you have left after reducing. Once you sign up to make a monthly contribution to offset mm -hmm. your carbon footprint, you receive monthly updates from the tree planting, rainforest protection, and great more fucking junk mail. This is just what I fucking need. <laughs> like, box. Your tree is doing well. You're like, thank you. Would you like Thanks. to subscribe to the higher tiers that you're like, no, no, what I gotta give it. Oh, what if Ren, what if they do that thing where they send you a picture of a tree and they want you to sponsor the tree? This is Jimmy. Jimmy's a Douglas fir who lives on the south side of our tree farm in, you know, outside of Saskatchewan, right? And for just $10 a year, you can sponsor Timmy. And we'll send you pictures of Timmy or with Jimmy, whatever the fuck his name was. It's a tree. Um, we'll, we'll send you status updates on Jimmy and his life and his friends and how well he's doing. And they just send you pictures of this tree like it's, a, like it's a, an orphan that you've sponsored in Nairobi or something. I, I just prefer the idea that it eventually, like, you just go, this is my tree, right? And they're like, yeah, and you're like, I want to burn it. Burn it for me. Burn my tree. Burn the fucking tree. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no, we, we don't want to do that. And you're like, do it. I own the tree. Jimmy, do it. You said, you said it was my tree. <laughs> I paid for this tree. I want, burn it. I want, I want Jimmy to burn. I want Jimmy to provide heat for the local creatures in the area. <laughs> don't you know that when, when Jimmy burns and his ashes are sprinkled throughout the forest, it enriches the soil and another tree can grow in Jimmy's plate? It's all a cycle. Yeah. Eventually, like, this we all Jimmy have to beautiful. Like, so the, the gist of this service is essentially that you have a monthly subscription that funds like charitable causes to like combat climate change, right? That's like the service. I thought, I thought it was like a tracking app, like a tractor carbon footprint to sh like show cool. you how much you like produce I, or something. Let's, let's, uh, right. So, uh, so yeah, so apparently calculate and offset your carbon footprint with a monthly subscription to so yeah. figure out how much CO2 you emit offset it with a monthly subscription with a mix of climate projects and then every month you get updates on like what that's being funded for mm -hmm. right someone in chat said who wins if i sponsor jimmy and someone else sponsors kevin the lumberjack damn you know like, i sponsor kevin to take down as many trees as possible every day companies are competing for sponsorship well, you have a, a company that's just a guy who says i cut down trees i just cut <laughs> them down sponsor me i, I cut down, down trees. one yeah. tree per patron so let's get it going I cut guys down trees. all i you want to do is cut down trees but i need i need sponsors so that i could devote my life and time to you know cutting down no, trees trees i hate those carbon sinks i hate those oxygen providing pieces of shit i'm gonna cut They're them down 12, that's 99. what i do and I just like the idea that he does it very inefficiently with an axe. Like, he doesn't have big industrial equipment to no, cut yeah, it down. He just goes into the Amazon rainforest with an axe and is just chopping <laughs> it down every day. Just goes onto the next tree and chops it down. You'll receive like, weekly updates it. on how well he's done cutting it down and then what he used the logs for. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, sweet. <laughs> Do you think High Top would do a deforestation ad? Oh my god, yeah, that would be so funny. <laughs> Absolutely. Destroy the oh, dude, you almost want to try that with some YouTubers, right? You like fake that you're a service that's super unethical in your terms and services, but you <laughs> it, like you you like we use child slavery and their blood to grease the wheels of industry. <laughs> it's like, oh it's it is a great Did service. You know blood of orphans works as a lubricant far better than other industrial and methods. Like, Plus, it's all natural. You know, you pay them. And then you have them do the ad, and then you're like, right, so, you, oh, that, that sounds like something someone would do, just to test YouTuber integrity. Oh, um, well, look, Raid fucking Shadow Legends? I mean, as if that wasn't the, the, the dry run for, we're testing integrity of YouTubers. I mean, th th I'm, I'm talking, like, re like, even worse, you know, like, BetterHelp and Candid, Are but, like, even worse than those. Just, yeah, like, see how evil you could make it? Like, they put it in the fine print about all the people you've killed <laughs> in order to make this legal. Some shit, I don't know, it, just, it would be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, some like, you're trying, you're funding some terrorist organization, and you, uh, you just dress it up to them, and, oh, they're, they're freedom fighters, and they <laughs> just said want to done before. Um, they so just want to Sharia law for their family, and... You know, I mean, sure, a few gay people might die along the way, but, you know, can you put a price on freedom? Someone said it's been done for cyanide by accident by YouTubers. 
<laughs> Wait, what? Sponsoring what? Cyanide. <laughs> It's a uh, it's a great little service, I and I. Well, uh, they I, I've heard of something similar. They've done it with dihydrogen monoxide. They'll go around on the street with like a clipboard and everything, and they'll try to get people to raise awareness uh, to stop the, the to just to raise awareness about the dangers of dihydrogen monoxide. And they say, oh, it kills people every year, and it can it causes X amount of damage. And you know, flooding and things of that nature. All the all this money, that the infrastructure damage. We need to do something about dihydrogen monoxide. So we're gonna, you know, write up this big campaign. We're gonna call our senators and like, oh yeah, absolutely. We we really do have to do something against this. When of course, dihydrogen monoxide is just water. Water. Yeah. So you know, it's it's all about how you sell it and dress it up. This high top video is. <laughs> Great, actually, Remember this is Spider Man. Like, we'll talk about Spider Man. It is, it is really <laughs> giving me that big think. This one is definitely, this yeah, is, yeah. This is the most interesting ad that we've watched in a long time. Well, Noom was pretty interesting. No, yeah, I, st <laughs> I still get ads constantly when I boot up YouTube. It's like, oh, I lost this many pounds using Noom. It's like, go away, <laughs> leave yeah, me like, be. Like that was 150. We're at 167. Man, yeah. that's a little crazy other projects you support you get to see the trees you planted and what your money is being spent on it will take a lot to end the climate crisis but we don't want to be left with no home to find our way back to and you can start helping today by learning more at ren.co i've partnered with rent to... i thought that was cut off it was supposed to be calm <laughs> Ren. Yeah, it, so plant 10 extra trees for the first hundred people sign up using See, that oh, feels so awkward man. to me as well. It's like, so if you don't sign up, we're not planting those trees and saving yeah, the world. I think they could plant the trees, but they won't. And, the first, <laughs> and if there's the hundred and first person, you don't get ten extra trees planted, even though like this all is good for the world. It <laughs> like, feels so it, awkward. Yeah, it was really I'm, weird. I'm imagining some people out there in the woods with their cell phones, and they've got like saplings and shovels, and they're ready to plant them. And they get little ding, someone subscribed, and so they plant the trees, ding, and they do it, and only like four people sign up, and so they're just sitting there like, oh, well, let's well, go back like, home. This gardener type who's just like stressing out, sweating completely, ready to plant it, and they just have a gun at them, like, do not fucking plant yeah, like, it until the notification comes through, and they're like, okay, okay, I won't. Like, oh, please, subscribe, we have to plant these trees, please subscribe, please, please. We have to save the planet. This is an existential crisis. You have to do your damn responsibility. Because the the the, the Gadelp service I've come up with is from what you guys are saying is the um an irrigation defense. service that defends you from asteroids. Um, That's right. And I'm gonna say the first hundred subscribers get to I don't know remove ten extra asteroids or something. The first. You can always. Well, mate, what if you what if you had the system be that there are tiered subscriptions and the tiers <laughs> di will dictate how many asteroids will be prevented? So, like the minimum one will only prevent ten, and the next one up only prevents twenty. So the idea would be that you need to pay more money, otherwise you run out of asteroid defense, and like <laughs> you have to go for the rest of the month just hoping that one doesn't hit you. And so the first <laughs> people who sign up get extra asteroid protection. They get 10 extra asteroids deflected each month. Oh, the, the deluxe I, package. Exactly. Asteroid insurance? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm well, also like, gunning for, like, repeating the model that's, that's in all these fucking ads, but just for asteroid defense at this point, it's just funny. Um, so you have to do, like, the, the deluxe package for $49.99. And um, we will knock out one large asteroid with first hundred subscribers get to remove ten additional asteroids. I'll I'll fix that up before we get yeah, to the Yeah, we can figure that out. We, this this is the writing process that goes into these jokes, all right? It's uh <laughs> you gotta tweak them, you gotta tighten them up. Keep chipping away. You could keep running with Quib Gift. Oh yes, Quib Gift. Great one. <laughs> it's got a website. It does indeed. Using my referral Link in the <laughs> literally does that if you subscribe we plant a tree if you don't we burn one <laughs> for every person who clicks on the site and doesn't subscribe we burn a tree trees i swear to god we'll burn seven billion we'll trees. burn them down sign up we'll do it you think it's bad now we're gonna get rid of them all swear to god 
It's funny. Th Discreet. This company might well offer like a good service, but this ad is just like, <laughs> <laughs> I hate this ad. Thanks, guys. I'm going to be real with you, Goo. All right, back to Spider-Man, uh, everybody. Spider -Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. going to be real with us about Spider-Man. Be real with After all that. Yeah, well, because that was all fake shit. This is the real shit. It's Spooderman. Yeah, this yeah. is the stuff that this is the ex it's Spider Man that actually gives him an existential crisis, not the fate of the planet. <laughs> I think that's probably true. Let's be fair. The first uh, hour, the first sure. half of Spider Man No Way oh, Home good, threw me into the all... darkest parts yeah, of hell. There you go. The yeah. darkest it's parts of hell. Calm down. Uh, when you're hyperbolic uh, about everything, then the first it's... hour was just MCU schlock, and then the second hour that was when it all the set shit happened. It set my free. It watered my yeah. crop. It healed my cancer. <laughs> it it my redeemed me. It, it sent me to heaven so that I could see the, <laughs> the clouds. It murdered me. It stabbed the dagger of darkness into my soul. <laughs> okay. It twisted I God and she's it, black. It severed the artery of my love for Spider Man. And the, the blood went everywhere. Then, then, Toby Maguire himself came to me and patched it up. It was like, hey, how you doing? I'm Spider Man and I'm here. And everything's okay now. His script has already given us so much to work with compared to Movie Bob. I think. Yeah, that's Movie Bob is just a boring it's, it's asshole. Rich, isn't it? you, his so name ability was really high, Movie Bob. Maybe we need to watch the right video, but uh, I, high yeah, top ability is just top notch. Yeah, he's fucking nuts. Yes. He's like Sander Cohen, man. He's like his fucking nuts. <laughs> and he's artist. proud of that. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I am an artiste with no way out. It's typical MCU Spider-Man, the style, the memes, the jokes, stuff that is simply in no way for me. Except now, we get to see villains from Spider-Man franchises that I love. And <laughs> you love like... Tasman too? What the fuck? I just, well, he's obviously talking about just the Raimi ones, but I just like, well, no, actually, I think he does no, love no, the Tasman ones. Obvious. That isn't obvious. I think he actually does like the Tasman movies. Um, he certainly likes them more than the MCU ones. He, the, he ranked both Tasman films above No Way Home. Yeah. Fuck me. No way. Yeah. You're lying. Yeah, even... You're lying. <laughs> like, no You're way. Lying. That's not true. That's impossible. That's impossible. I compel you to tell me the truth. Yes. Be uh, gone, demon of lies. Yeah, he, uh... <sighs> It just, it just it became so clear in that one moment. It's like, I wasn't liking it. And then the Raby Village showed up. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, right, okay. No Way Home threw me into the darkest parts of hell with no way out. It's typical MCU Spider-Man, the style, the memes, the but jokes, here you are, stuff that so... is simply in no way. Dude, he would watch 10,000 hours if that was the only Spider-Man content coming out of the uh, like mainstream. He would just, yeah. he would just oh, yeah, um, I, I found the I found the tweet. There it is. Oh my god. Yeah, there's the ranking. Ah. He well, thinks that. To be fair, before we look at this, we are very unusual when it comes to ranking Spider Man. Okay, we're on a little island, so we should expect that it'll be strange. Dude, he thinks Spider Man Three is like the fourth best one. That's fucking nuts. Oh, it's Raimi, so. This guy's crazy. And I mean, I feel like the edgy controversial thing is that he's put Spider-Man 1 over into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. That's a that's a hot take, I think, at this point. For him, though, right? Like, I probably could have guessed this yeah. was his ranking. This dude's Force. fucking crazy. Yeah. I honestly would have thought he'd though, consider putting about... Spider-Man 3 above into the Spider-Verse. I could see him doing that. That would be... Yeah. yeah, but then everybody would be mad, so I think he realized that he had to just accept that not, you know... Like, that would just piss everybody off. Yeah. It's like People a were shocked, though, about Tasm 2 being above No Way Home. Yeah, because that's absurd. Like, <laughs> it is, can we just, it is, you put it above Homecoming as well. It's like, damn. Yeah. Tasm well, yeah, are shit. Yes. But. Like, how, why is it that people, why is it the people who talk about these things are the least qualified people to talk? I, there are few people who are less qualified to talk about the quality of Spider-Man movies than High Top. Well, um, it's just, you, you, you know, maybe, right, maybe you're just a high top hater. Yeah, We're silence. getting there. Silence. I like you said lol sue me as well. <laughs> well, now that I know, well, I might, now that I know you have money <laughs> because of Ren. Yeah. Now that you've got the, the cash money from Ren because you care about the planet, I, I can sue you. 
and get my 700 bucks or whatever they paid you, 300, who knows? for me. Except now, we crazy. get to see villains from Spider-Man franchises that I love. And seeing these actors reprise their roles is goosebump inducing. When Ock shows up, when you hear that Elfman theme slowly creep in, when the echo of the goblin laugh hits those eardrums, yeah, when the audience good. gasps, collectively getting a cold shiver sent down their spine, it's okay, like nothing yep. else. Until yeah. you, if you're unfortunately oh. like me, quickly realize that John Watts and screenwriters Eric Somers and Chris McKenna Careful. working with Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn and Melina's Otto Octavius within the MCU's established tone is like trying to eat a gourmet meal in the stall of a KFC bathroom. It still tastes Yeah, this is what I mean. How, why does he feel so comfortable shitting on the creative vision of those guys? Um, I don't get they're not really It's really awkward. It, it, it is so awkward to me that, like, to take the stance of, like, because I bet you that's probably the reason why he likes Tasm, right? Is because it's like, ah, see, that was, uh, what's, uh, Web. not Webb's, like, creative vision and that he had a vision, but, like, here he just can't see it. Like, there's no possibility that there could be any, like, as if it's not possible that all of those guys sat in a room and were really passionately trying to figure out what story they wanted to tell. Dude, I For think. For some reason, we just don't care about their. The, the possibility that they had a vision. If Watts I, came up to him personally and said, this was exactly. my vision, and it's exactly how yeah. I've, I've always wanted it, High Top would tell him, like, it's not, man. This isn't your vision. You've been And it would just feel so awkward. With... Absolutely. Because it's like, dude's made, like, three films. <laughs> like, he's made the films. You haven't. And how, and how can he say that the, like, because you, because Spider-Man 1, in particular, is really campy and goofy. Yeah, but he loves and, that. Yeah, but the, so the MCU tone, which is often portrayed as being too jokey, I guess that's a different. I think he would assume of... that it, it's it's uh, formulaic in a way that because I mean I feel like there's there's like no getting around the fact that like the Spider-Man Raimi films are like definitely got like a Raimi. There's a style to those films. Yeah. Like yeah, there's a, a style, style to absolutely. Them. And whereas, like, Marvel movies tend to have more of a... But I, I wonder if it's a situation where it's like, is it just the fact that the films have similar, like, cinematography that's throwing you off? Like, is that actually what it is? You saw that video that pointed out how they all use the same camera and, like, the color grading's really similar, and that's, like, totally thrown off the idea that there is... Because how, how do you explain Ragnarok? What if my style is having my shots you... match? Well, I mean, that's is style? that... Is there something necessarily wrong with trying to have some level of uh, consistency in terms of um, the way that the films look? Or do we want to, or, you know, conversely, do we want to emphasize that these are all made by, like, different people and they, they have different, like, shot composition? I, I guess it's just, I don't, I don't know how he can so easily just shit on something that was the creative vision of somebody. It has to be in some way, at, at least... Um, but also maintain the personality of like creative vision guys and like creators doing their thing and making stuff that's cool and not shitting on it. Yeah. That's like, that's me. That's my style. You know, feels really awkward. Not all styles you just don't like these. Vibrant and crazy and wild and well, obvious. I mean, I'll just do style. you one further. Like, like Vulture, there is, there is an idea there in terms of having Vulture's suit and like the way that it's been constructed and how he looks and like the way that he's scary is different from, because in the comics he's kind of like a bit goofy, right? Like Vulture's look yeah. kind of goofy. Um, Adapted then very unfaithful having, having it being, and therefore horrible. Having it be very industrial and like cobbled together and like the way that, and then, and then it's just like the Mysterio like sequence. You know, like the whole Mysterio Ooh, sequence CGI, is like though. really visually, yeah. But so is a lot of stuff in the Raimi films. CGI, like I don't know, how to... yeah. like a lot of the really cool shots in the Raimi films were like 100 percent CGI. Like the tracking shots when they're like falling down and fighting each other, those are really cool shots. But they're CGI. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> That's different. Yeah, for reasons uh, I think that somebody definitely be elaborated on i'm sure by the way well, yeah. i think i saw someone in the chat say that the raimi spider-man films aren't goofy i don't know if you've rewatched uh, those films like you lately but there is there is big goof and i like it i really like those films <laughs> they, there is a they goof element though goofy. they are definitely How am i like as he flies around <laughs> Dude, it's well, goofy remember when spider-man says it's you who's out gobby out of your mind out of your mind yeah like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> These are absolutely goofy. People who say they aren't don't remember.
Working with Willem Dafoe's Norman Osborn and Melino's Otto Octavius within the MCU's established tone is like trying to eat a gourmet meal in the stall of a KFC bathroom. It still tastes great. It still hits the spot. Don't get me wrong. You still get those goosebumps. KFC? But you're distracted by the smell you of bleach. Gays you get goosebumps so, when you No, eat no, no. You, you misunderstood, Rags. He's saying a gourmet food out of a KFC bathroom stall. Oh, okay. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. Which um, is interesting. Because, like, until he elaborates further, I could just... Uh, my response would just be, like, so you're saying the food's good. Like, if someone's like, yeah, but the location, I'd be like, okay, but the food's good. Like, I'd right, just be that, more specific. The food, the food is the film, not the location. Yeah, like, that, the location is irrelevant. Yeah, the location yeah, being the MCU, which I don't give a fuck. Whatever. Is the film good? Yeah, like, The Suicide Squad. I mean, that, that film's got That's great- That's a good film in a shitty universe. A horrifically yeah. bad location. <laughs> but who cares? Yeah. Like, we're talking about the film. <laughs> it covers up the human excrement of processed chicken. It's almost like taking these legends and shoving them into Happy legends? Hogan's apartment was never going to be the best way to serve and service these characters. I don't what? know that this film was arguing this is the best way to service the Green Goblin and Doc Ock. I think they were focusing on someone else. At the same I'm, time, yeah, I, I, I don't know that they handled it badly at all with both of them. In fact, Doc Ock. They did really well with Doc Ock, but I, I was about to say, like, oh, my yeah, brain was yeah. almost like, well, why are you saying that as if Green Goblin was? And he's like, no, Green Goblin was done really well, too. So I... I, I don't know. It comes off as a lose-lose, though. Because is he asking that it should have been more, like, fan service but then he would have complained about it. Well, I the guess... fact that he labeled Happy's Apartment as this critique, and I'm like, hi, Top, you're the guy who should be though. saying... Stuff like the idea of Green Goblin Doc Ock being in Happy's apartment, that doesn't sound like it would work, but it could be great, right? It depends on execution. Well, that's Some the thing, I don't know what he's going to say. I have no clue what his standards are for, like, any of this. He could say one thing and another thing, and I have, I have no I clue. The standard, will, the standard will always be what's safe for the no. Raimi films, but, like, everything else, you know, fuck him, right? That feels really weird well, to fair, me. because... Green Goblin and Doc Ock got whole movies. Of course they're going to be more fleshed out or more explored in those movies. They're a well, part of yeah, no, fucking five of the villains and three of the heroes. Something that I find really odd is that it feels like we've reached this strange point where like people don't want Spider-Man to be like part of the Marvel stuff. And 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 not specifically speaking to like MCU's quality right now, but like the, the idea of Spider-Man being part of the Marvel stuff is like annoying, even though... Spider-Man is a Marvel character and arguably like the Marvel character. Yeah. It's weird. If it feels like we've I I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody was happy that Spider-Man was going to be integrated into the MCU. There was nobody who's like, "Nah, you know what? I prefer him on his own I'll like having absolutely movie. no connection." Oh, well, I mean, people absolutely really like this movie, but I guess it's the idea of like Spider-Man being in the MCU. Like everybody was incredibly excited for like Civil War because of Spider-Man becoming a part of the MCU. People don't want him in now because the MCU is like not good anymore. Uh, well, I mean, I mean we're pretty much the same on that. I, ever, I don't want him like, touching right. fucking. Imagine I dealing wanna... with Captain Marvel and Falcon right now. Ugh. I never want to see this character I love ever again. That's like kind of the mood. That they <laughs> Let put him me die. Let him leave him alone. At this point, I want him to. Yeah. Just go away. Get out what while I'm okay. is taking characters crafted, conceived almost 20 years ago by a director at the height of his career, a director whose style, personality, heart, and soul is felt in every frame, every blink, every touch, and throwing Wait, them into the Marvel oh. machine, throwing like, them into even the in Spider-Man Three, Spider-Man Two. Uh, it's like you're just saying that, but imagine taking this these these Sony products, the the rights, the film that Sony bought the rights to because they just wanted to make some money, and throw it into this universe filled with all these passionate creators collaborating. To you can just say these things; it doesn't like mean anything, though. Yeah, to clarify, because yes. I feel like someone will be like, "Hey, you just did the." Someone's gonna thing. misinterpret that. Completely, the point Frank yeah. is making there is that you can frame it however you want. The 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 Tasm films were made for money alone, and they were cancelled because they weren't making enough. They just hung on to the IP. Meanwhile, someone like John Watts, a true creative, an auteur, brings in Andrew Garfield's with Spider Man other talented and creates the what Russo is the best brothers. Tasm film out of the three iterations of Andrew's performances. You like see clearly that the auteur is on Watts, not on Webb. Mm -hmm. This is all just. Whereas I think it's all just. Well, there's nothing of substance here. Can we just it's talk just about the movie? 
or something. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll get there eventually. <laughs> like, I hope so. No promises. No promises. The height of his career, a director whose style, personality, heart, and soul is felt in every frame, every blink, every touch, and throwing them into the Marvel machine, throwing them into the third MCU Spider-Man. It's tale. just because it's Marvel. That's yeah, all. It's just because it's in the MCU, because and he's just it's the MCU. It's, yeah. it's just because it's the MCU because it's in. Which the is MCU really funny because, because his complaints about the MCU are going to be different from ours because we don't like the MCU that much either, like at the moment. Yeah, but we but have like standard consistency. His, his is going to be strictly because it is like the most popular thing. Like it's hard not to reach the point of is this just contrarianism? Well, he, but you don't like the color grade so doesn't pop. The lighting isn't good enough. The shots and the angles yeah. and the composition they're not good. enough. what about the writing, he's not mate? convince us mm -hmm. of those things no uh because i i always find those conversations end up i can just make reverse arguments pretty easily and then they get mm -hmm. stunted because they're like wait what the fuck what do i do with this you know when they say like i corrected blah 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 to make it all pop better and then a bunch of people on twitter are like this is better this is better when the, one, one person goes i prefer it grounded gg it's over right exactly yeah, yeah it's finished it's over what do you do now? And it's like, I, well, but, but, I, yeah. but, but, but superheroes aren't supposed to be grounded. They're not even real. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean they're supposed to be? It's a creative vision. And then John Watts says, yeah, it was. <laughs> now what do you do? No, I, yeah, my creative vision is that superheroes are grounded, so fuck off. During a pandemic should never work. And for me, half- Wait, do you think making a film during a pandemic should never work? be major the- there's a lot of films that have, should I, never doesn't work. mean it should never work. <laughs> yeah, like work. that's what have challenges you, on set that you have to deal with. These words have weight, my dude. Do Spider-Man yeah. Tale film during a pandemic should never work, and for me, should half the time it should. <laughs> like there are just things you have to take care of. You have to do different things on set. The fuck. Yeah. A, like if Twelve Angry Men was done during a pandemic, I could believe that. Yeah. Yeah, that, should like, never yeah work. that shouldn't work. Well, what about a film that was made during the Spanish flu? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, you know, those films exist. It's like, nah, they don't work. Time, it did not work. For me, the first half of No Way Home was everything I feared. Raimi me. Yeah. It's so pretentious. <laughs> yeah. It's so pretentious. Mm. Fucking just don't the, you dare shit on the something of a science as myself line. It was great. Yeah. Callback, Stark Tech controlling Ox arms, a yeah, lizard because and nano machines, my dude. Have what you, you forgotten? Yeah. What's the, you, you're forgotten? just labeling things. What's the problem? Explain the problem. Yeah. Why the is it problem bad? Is that he doesn't like that Stark Tech controls the like Raimi character. He doesn't like that. I really hate that one because I saw it but when the trailer came out. It was like, Electra's got Stark Tech. Ugh. And it's like, what do you mean, ugh? The best source of electricity in this fucking world will be Stark technology. Why no, does it, it make bad. sense Stark, for fuck's Stark sake? Stark is infecting my Raimi stuff. No, it's infecting. Get the Stark logo <laughs> off my Electro. Lame. It's not even the Stark logo, it's just the little fucking arc reactor symbol. But he wouldn't care if it was Osborne tech. No, he'd That's love totally it if it were fine. Osborne. Yeah. Swap a name, swap one fucking name. Dude, literally, if you if it was Oscorp Tech, if Oscorp existed in the MCU and they used Oscorp Tech, he would have loved it, even if it was exactly the same. Electro, who act very differently from what we once saw. Yeah, like, um, and that was great. That was <laughs> so about that, the like. better. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lot less cringe, if that's what you mean. I don't know. <laughs> I'd be curious what his justification is on that. I'd like to hear what he believes. Elect like sounds like he thinks Electro was assassinated, at least in character writing. Just because he was he, clearly, they allowed Jamie Fox to bring in his own charisma this time instead of blocking exactly. it out completely. And that was just a good decision. Excellent decision. But you know, at least it's self-aware about it. This swing around. Peter Parker, rather than deal with his own problems, immediately thinks to run to an Avenger for help, but this time he's- He did try to deal with it. What do you mean? He did try to- he, he spent like a year trying to live with it until the consequences became significant for the people around him, and then he made the decision. And like, run away from his problems, in both of the films he runs towards his problems, because that's what heroes do. And he, um- Also, he doesn't- he, he tries to get a solution to the problem, and it wasn't for his sake. It was for other people's sake, yeah, more so exactly. than his. I guess I just find it annoying, like, instead of dealing with the problem, so on Homecoming, 
he screwed up, he lost the suit, and then he was gonna go on his little homecoming dance, but as soon as it was presented to him, like, oh, you, you are the only person right now who can stop this, gives that up and then goes to solve that problem. And then in, like, Far From Home, he is mm -hmm. basically dealing with a problem that he in part is responsible for allowing to happen. I don't understand the idea that he's running away from his problems. Because Uncle Ben didn't say the fucking thing. <laughs> Fuck you, Uncle, Uncle Ben. ben. Didn't, uh, Uncle Ben didn't take a week. 45 Sorry. to the fucking sternum, so fuck this movie. Might be, might be worth addressing it, because I'm pretty sure we talked about it off stream, but um, I think the timeline for No Way Home is, is longer than we think. It, like, the bulk of the film takes place in a very condensed period of time, but like, the opening first act, we start with the Mysterio thing, and then some time passes between then and the film because they're going into college but at the beginning of the film they're entering their senior year of school so we skipped a lot yeah like clearly there was a lot of life to i'm flash wrote a book he didn't write that in a week like well, that no. took some time to write and then get published and everything maybe he really writes shit. books like movie maybe bob rocks yeah yeah and he cranked it <laughs> out in a day uh, yeah rather than deal with his own problems immediately thinks to run to an avenger for help but this time he suffers immediately the after a year that it... but this time well, he suffers the consequences like then again i guess to be clear it might not be a year because of like but it's some months like it's not it's not immediately it's not it's a not short immediate amount of time yeah. and the important part is it's not for his sake yep been sorely missing. Peter Parker, rather than confront the MIT assistant vice chancellor, indirectly puts the entire fate of reality at risk. Peter Parker, rather than- I mean, it's, just, it's, it's not it's, like he was afraid to or something. He said it's as simple as failing to understand that that was a possibility, which I think is fair. Like, when you get a letter saying you've been denied, I don't think you think I should appeal to the vice chancellor. You just assume I've been denied. Hence him being like, oh, I guess I could try that if that's a thing you can do than have his mission based in empathy would rather get rid of these villains these victims as soon as possible so we can focus on what's really important. he doesn't know Getting anything it. about them well yeah, the, yeah that's not a problem not at that point it's only once he finds out the no. sending them back will kill them that uh he doesn't know that yeah yeah oh man that's just you're just wrong high top like that's just incorrect like saying yeah, that he just wants to get him back I, and get on with his life, it's like like anybody would in this scenario. Literally anybody. I don't see why you would have any other thoughts. They're fucking multiversal beings. You want them to go back to their worlds. And Doctor Villains, Strange these... is telling you you need to, and he's the Vic... source for supreme. Well, no, no, he's not. But he's no. big source for man. <laughs> as soon as possible, so we can focus on what's really important: getting his girlfriend and best friend into college. It's as if the story that, that is important to him. That is important to him. I yes, think he's, I think he's he's saying that actually. Um, is he saying that? Yeah, I don't think he's being sarcastic. On what's really important: getting his that. girlfriend and best friend into college. It's as if the storytellers realize the absurdity of Peter Parker accidentally ordering a drone strike on a classmate, the redundancy of him constantly trying to stand on his own, but then regressing back into a mini Avenger. Regressing. Oh, we're making this I was point again. Oh, oh, regressing. Oh, so oh, just, yeah, let, so let's bad. be completely you fucking clear. Say if you save the world with a team of people you are regressing as a character how fucking you can't stupid is be this a you can't be a friendly insane. neighborhood spider-man if there's no neighborhood Makes yes but no that's a life sense at all film that and, he hates, so it can't be used seriously and he didn't i hate the kindergarten level understanding of he gives up the iron spider suit at the end of homecoming but he has it in infinite, infinite just, just, and it's just like yeah on one hand he's offered a role and he says i'm gonna stick to the neighborhood and then on the other it's the end of the fucking world and several months later, too. I like how we just forget that there was a period of time between... I, I think Infinity War two. nailed it. He dubbed him an Avenger because he is one. You can't you can't choose to be one at that point. You are one. You are you are acting yeah. on the behalf of the world with a bunch of superheroes called the Avenger. You're and he an made Avenger. the decision to do that. He saw a spaceship and is like, oh, I probably should help with that. We did this and in um, goes and helps. Age of Ultron. If you go out there, you're an Avenger. Yeah. That's just how mm -hmm. it's Avenger is not like a, a team with a membership like plan, you know? Like that's not <laughs> if if you are there, you're an Avenger. That's just how it works. The Avengers are not like Quib Gift. No. And the reason why he got the Iron Spider suit was because he would have someone's pointed out in chat, died. he would have died. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love to use this clip as an example of him regressing, but it's like he would have fucking been suffocated. 
gave him the suit and then tried to parachute him back to Earth, but he shot to get back on the ship to help out. Because that's I love the idea doing. that High Top would have walked up to him at that point and been like, hey, you're regressing. Stop trying to stop at the end of the will. <laughs> Go back to my... your neighborhood. I, I do love the idea of like, hey, fighting aliens. All right, that's regression. Go back to <laughs> just like up. helping it. people find their lost bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Go get that cat out of a tree. Mm -hmm. We saw world, a whole so movie of him. I guess it's just really weird. We got a whole movie of him, like a very low stakes in this neighborhood, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man movie. And we just like ignore that that exists. He to make hates this point. it. Fucking hates it because Tony Stark is yeah. in it. Yeah. Uh, very briefly, too. The college. It's as if the storytellers realized the absurdity of Peter Parker accidentally ordering a drone strike on- and The thing is, like, I don't disagree with that. Um, yeah, that's stupid. But that's one element- like, do we- I don't- I don't mean that he's been doing it the whole video. So, like, it's, it's like, we talk about the stupid things that happen in a lot of Spider-Man movies. Because the implication here is that this stupid element is, like, destroying everything. Mm -hmm. Which is, like, the amount of stupid you know, things really, that happen- You are- it was really stupid how Doc Ock threw Peter, who he didn't know was a superhero, into a wall so hard that it would have killed him. That was really stupid. When he yeah, did him he as not want to start, yeah, this yeah. is not a game you want to start tallying points up for, because it will not work for you. Yeah, I can see Just because you've this internalized is... the stupidity of what those are the things odds that an doesn't evil make alien, go What were the odds that evil alien goo thing landed right next to the most powerful agent in this world? Um, and that happened just bike. at the right time to bring him into conflict with the man who who killed his dad, who fell, who was running, well, not his dad, his uncle, and <laughs> fell into a sand experiment that turned him <laughs> into a sand monster. Like, um, and then that didn't kill him, he lived. This <laughs> he is the thing, I can see this, time. this element is dumb, I just do not concede that it makes the whole film not Peter Parker's story or some shit. It's just like, hang on. The whole movie surrounding this. Because if we're what... Because if we're just going to be able to nullify the whole movie based on one thing, then there are no good Spider-Man movies. Yeah, they're none. That's not a standard that you there are going really to, you are going to be willing it's to. It's going to be very hard to be any good films at all at that point. Exactly. If usually, I mean, film if, has a couple of problems. Yeah, one bad thing can't just nullify the the whole movie. I mean, it's just scale. It is a scale. It's a little nice spectrum. <laughs> Someone's got the quote where he says, I had a father, his name was... I think it's supposed to be Ben, not I had a father, his name was Uncle Ben. His name was Uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a father, his name was Uncle Ben. His name was Grandpa. My classmate. The redundancy of him constantly trying to... And yeah, it's not redundant, and I'm so sorry so many people don't understand, uh, like, this particular thing, or at least some people don't, that, um... It wasn't for the rewards, and that's how he sees this moment, is, this is your trophy, look at it, take it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Infinity War is, no, we're actually in the middle of a fight, you're dying, take the suit to survive, it's your choice if you want to yeah. pursue the aliens who are trying to destroy Earth. Also, everybody loved the Iron Sp this feels like an awkward one, everybody loved that shit when they saw it in the trailer, and it's from the comics, but now we've come around to Iron Spider sucks, it's weird. It's a it's a weird argument. I don't really care to entertain that much. I'm just like, you don't like the suit? Okay, I like the suit. No, let's talk about yeah. someone else. And the suit's he, gone yeah. now, so he doesn't even use that much. He barely uses it's it. True, he yeah. He ditches at the beginning of Far game. From Home. He bit like can't bring it with gets, him. and then yeah. no way home it gets destroyed. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and I guess all really Infinity War him. people would argue, but yeah, well, a lot of but... Infinity War. Well, like a two thirds of Infinity War, I guess. Someone said no, not everyone loved it. It's like so free okay, was using so hyperbole. I didn't mean that <laughs> that was a hyperbole. Yeah. But I'm willing to bet that that was one of the big cheer moments in Infinity War if you watch all of the reactions. To stand on his own, the but then regressing back into a mini Avenger and decided to. This is mini Avenger, too. Mini what does that Aven mean? Yeah, I was just about to say, because he's young. Well, so because he takes the... orders from the leader that has been the leader, because he created the fucking team call themselves to call the character out on that kind of behavior. He's that been called out on this behavior, behavior for his whole trilogy. It's all about his irresponsible uh, decisions. How it works. Friggin' not everyone loved it, get over it. Okay. <laughs> You didn't say everyone. It wasn't supposed to be literal. I know. When no, says, whenever I, everyone I, I, loves no, Thingy, I, I'm, we don't need to have someone you. fucking I'm tell sorry, us there's right. still a guy out there. I'm who really doesn't. sorry. You're right. You're right. I was wrong. I'm really sorry. I screwed it up. 
when I said everybody, I meant not everybody, and I should have made that clearer. I'm really sorry. Okay, you're totally right, and I'm wrong. Did you know? Did you know that fun fact? When ever, when anyone ever says everybody, they never mean everybody. Everybody. This is some was, life advice for you. Everybody. Oh, and you pointed it out. Alive. You were saying that there was like everybody thinking it when it was just me. You're right. It was just me. I'm the only person in the world who liked that suit. I'm the I'm the only person. There's not a single person <laughs> me, on earth I, who also. Well, liked I like this. You're right? a liar now. Please leave. Now I don't know if you guys knew this, but Fringy uh, actually, I, I told I, I I told I know I told you Fringy that I wouldn't tell anyone, but I'm gonna. Uh, Fringy actually admitted to us that he's a hard solipsist. Uh, he thinks that he's actually the only mind in the entirety of the yeah, cosmos and all the rest yeah. of us. We are we're actually Relations. figments of his imagination that he's awesome. conjured yeah, up. Crazy than that. I'm like yeah. in that little pod that Boba Fett's in, and this is just all <laughs> it's all I'm bullshit. In pod. It's the world where everything revolves <laughs> around me, and it's all me, and everybody has the same perspective that I have, and That's I can't it. fathom that anybody would ever disagree with me. Right? Even his vat of goo. We're learning so much about me today. I'm learning so much about me. And I, I thank you for pointing out that not everybody, not literally everybody, like the Iron Spider suit, all right? I've learned a lot today. I really appreciate your feedback. Well, Fring, he's teaching, no, that's yeah, Fring, he's teaching himself a lot about himself. Yeah. Yes. You guys agree. are helping me. Mm-hmm. We are, I'm, I'm we are Fringy's Han Solo. I'm trying Solo. to do better every day. I'm trying to do better, all right? Fringy, I for you, you forgive you. So was it? I I, I dig me. the Iron Spider suit. Touch grass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like that, that's just two people. Okay, that doesn't change the fact that I was wrong. It's I'm true. sorry. It's as if the filmmakers realized that they needed a do-over with MCU Spider-Man. Not a do-over. No, definitely isn't a do-over. Continuation. Absolutely, so, it's a continuation. He's he's very much consistently characterized, and so I just. I'm gonna need some references, Mr. High Top, instead of you just saying because to me, you know, my theory is is you like this one and you're like, fuck. I gotta separate it from those other two stanky films. Yeah, I can't give it credit. That's like giving it a point and it's not on my team and I can't do that. Nope. And a soft core back to basics reboot. It's as if No, he was actually going toward getting to what you perceive as his basics. Um because every hero we see uh, in their primes, like, they had to get there somehow, and they were younger at one point. Uh, maybe you don't want to see that story, and that's totally fine. But, um, that's just, that's just, to say that it's a fucking reboot, because it's more so closer now to the way that, like, if someone said, Spider-Man my did. favorite Iron Man is the one where, like, the, uh, is it Extremis, where he has, mm-hmm. the, whatever, and so it's like, watching Iron Man 1, you're like, eh, this isn't really Iron Man to me. Um, I'm glad you guys like it, but this isn't this isn't my Iron Man. And you watch Iron Man 2, and you're like, no. We st- I like the whole poison blood thing. They could have used that to get into Extremis, but no, they didn't. And then we get all the way to Infinity War, and they're like, okay, this is almost... We're almost there. We've almost gotten to my Iron Man. And let's say Endgame didn't end with him dying, but rather almost dying, and he has to use experimental Iron Man tech to combine his blood with metal or some bullshit. And they're like, finally, we've got Iron Man. I'd just be like, okay, I, I don't know. I want- guess it's just, when you have a character with such an expansive history, you know, like, you, people are going to have different ideas of what it means. Absolutely. Um, or what they want. And that's okay, like, what you prefer is, I feel like that's the things to emphasize, like, it's okay if you don't like it. Um, well, imagine I said, like, Endgame was the first time we actually had Iron Man because of all of his, like, stupid, uh aggression and stupid decisions toward power and how to use weaponry and stuff and constantly getting everyone in trouble. What I hate about MCU Spider-Man is he constantly makes everything, sorry, MCU Iron Man, is he constantly makes everything worse for everybody. Iron Man 1, like, oh yeah, I made a suit, but then fucking Iron Man starts destroying everything. And then Iron Man 2, it's like Justin Hammer and he doesn't really do a good job, and, and Ivan Vanko and, and stuff, and Iron Man 3, he's like baiting the Mandarin, and it's like, god, he, all he does is make mistakes. Look at Ultron. I was just sitting there like, I mean, what you're saying isn't necessarily false, but, like, what's the problem? Mm. Yeah, Iron Man learns the same lesson over and over again. That's something they say about um, Spider-Man, is he learned the same lesson in Homecoming, Far From Home, and No Way Home, which drives me nuts. I don't know if that'll turn up in this video. We shall see. If they realized that Spider-Man No Way Home could actually be the way to get Spider-Man back home and i'm here for it man genuinely i really am i only no you're wish- not 
anything. No, you're not. You you are unhealthily biased against something for stupid reasons, and it's it's childish, and you need to grow up as a film critic. He's um he's here for the last ten minutes of No Way Home. He wasn't here for anything else, except yeah. for maybe the Raimi bits. There was no interest in seeing the story that they were going to tell. No, yeah, if someone had pitched it to him before, it's like, we want to tell the story of how a little boy who's grown up in the world of the MCU becomes Spider-Man. He'd probably be like, um... I'd rather see him be Spider-Man. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> The film didn't look like it was shot over a Zoom call or in Kevin Feige's basement. I get this was made during the time what? of a pandemic. I don't know. I, Kevin I, I Feige's guess basement? He doesn't like the shots. Okay. Uh, this but is another one of those times, okay. just like with Blinkit, where I'm like, go look at your old favorite movies. A lot of them will have the shots that you're talking about, but you just don't talk about them because you don't want to talk about them. Oh, I, I wasn't in I wasn't in Tobey Maguire's dingy apartment. Oh, or some dirty alleyway. Oh, so we can do this all day. Exactly. Didn't look like it was shot over a Zoom call or in Kevin Feige's basement. I get. This I don't was even know what he's referring to. Even trying to like discover what he means by that shot over a Zoom call. And then he shows them talking to each other on their phones. But if we put got him in front of the cinematographer, he wouldn't say these things. Or if he did, he'd feel not, really sad about it. Oh, dude, his balls the cinematographer would, would say, "John, what's actually working?" Wouldn't he? <laughs> oh yeah, because they would say, "Oh yeah, we took all this time and effort to make sure that the color grading was, you know, a, a nice balance. Nothing was too vibrant. Nothing was too dull. We had to make sure everything, of course, was in focus with decent depth of field where it was necessary, and all of this shit that we we put a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. to making this film." look good because this film does look good hmm. i'm confused rags because i just screenshotted this this right here and then i put contrast up by 50 in photoshop and then i posted it on the internet and everyone said it looked better <laughs> so i don't understand uh, it must be wrong checkmate color, if people che no. is that easy checkmate because yes. if the people on twitter said it then it must not be true bum 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 during the time of a pandemic, but I found No Way Home to be 80% of the time hideously ugly with no tangible- Oh god, you're referencing this ugly? scene as the hideously ugly one? This scene was fucking baller. You're wrong. This was amazing. 80% <laughs> of this movie was- So, when an actual ugly movie comes out, like Army of the Dead, you know? Like the- Yeah. How- <laughs> Hideous How is 80% of this movie hideously ugly? Uh, that's the thing, when everything is hyperbole <sighs> that you say, it just devalues all your statements. You know what's it's interesting? Just, it's not shot yeah. like Raimi, so he doesn't like it. Well, I, you know, and you know what? That is one hundred and ten thousand percent true with the example he just showed. Which, just give me a second. I'm totally not stalling right now in order to get. You know what? While I'm stalling, you guys. Sure could, enough, you if you were stalling, I feel like we would know. So let me I go wanna, ahead and I, pull up. You, you may very well be aware of this line. anyway, but I'll show you. I know that low yeah, people in chat will be aware of this. Um, let's do it. Show it. Give it to me. Well, so, um, yeah, I, I'm just just clicking away, getting yeah. exactly what I need. Yeah. Uh, but so oh, that's to, okay. To I think it's it worth up. it if you take your time. Yeah. No, it's good that you're taking your time and getting it all yeah. that set up because you know there's been a lot of build up, mm -hmm. being sold on this idea of what's to come. I want to be able to. I want to see your your creative vision. High Top would appreciate vision, that. Yeah. This is well, Mahler's creative hype. vision, and okay. creative visions are not made in a in a minute. They're made in many minutes, often consecutive, so, especially on. Let us for a moment. We'll just have to. Yeah, there we are. Good, excellent. Yeah. I've got it now. So this is this is something that gets highlighted here and there in videos because it's pretty fucking amusing. Yeah. The um the the counter to this is going to be appealing to a sense of whimsy or some shit. I don't know. But anyway, what I really liked and it stuck out to me, and it probably stuck out to a couple people is Mary Jane's reaction, or I guess I'll say MJ because it's Michelle Jones. Um. To being carried around by him in this film, which is like, Jesus fucking Christ, never ever do that to me ever again. Which is like, huh, that's probably true. <laughs> it's probably fucking weird. This was made now, during the time. Ignore High Top for a second. I'm of a pandemic. Oh, gladly. Look at the way this is shot and look what it just, what it portrays about the experience of latching onto Spider-Man as he fucking carries I found through. No Way Home to be 80% like of the time. a really unsafe roller coaster that you have no fucking clue if you're going to make it. Hideously yeah. ugly. Um, so that's interesting, right? And I think it's it's great for representing exactly what it is. Now, we go and look Did at um, a certain oh, Spider-Man no, 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 movie no, no. from Raimi. <laughs> Remember this? It's on the stream now. Oh, I'm going to pause there for copyright's sake. We'll look. And by the way, 
I like the Raimi movies. Everyone I calm like them. down. Because it, yeah, it always like feels them. like I... we're more than welcome to absolutely shit on uh, Watts' work and compare it positive, uh, compare to Raimi positively. I'm just making this comparison, okay? Everyone already knows what I'm going to be showing. But right here. Um, that looks like shit. And the Spider-Man is a mannequin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we can we at least agree that Watts improved on also, this? Also, the hair's blowing the wrong way. Yes, that's another thing that's so bizarre all, about this shot. It's it's not a good shot. This is clearly this. No, is but you see, it's it's good to be an ads charm. It's charm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, one, uh, as, as charm. A prop is it is goofy. This is it's bad. It's clearly worse than the No Way Home. It's <laughs> so obviously worse. Look at Spider-Man, he ain't moving. He's, he's totally not a person, he's a mannequin. It's really <laughs> funny to think about, but... Yeah, I'm sorry, like, this is worse. Uh, right? I'd be surprised if Hytop said it were better. But maybe this he would. So, so um, I've never... People... I've never inspected can the Raimi uh, films. Sorry, in... okay, so, wait, wait, wait. So, someone said, uh, can, can we agree 2021 is more advanced than 2002? So, there was a choice made to have a really, like, intense, fast... Like, well, really well, sort I'll, of scary amusement bringing, park, almost. Let's go more base. Yeah. Let's go more basal than okay. that. Okay, yeah, go for it. All right. What was it about 2000 and, what, two? Two, yeah. Right? yeah. What was it about 2002 that required them to use a prop and have her hair blowing the wrong way? I was going to say, uh, yeah. that's the obvious exactly. fucking response. They had, they, they had the capacity to film it. Uh, yeah. They didn't. From the get-go, this, this is a shockingly malformed little thought we're doing here. And it feels to me like a little bit of bias. And that's it that's okay. uh, what it I'm not, I'm, it could be. It could, I'm not going to jump to that conclusion. Um, but now, oh, fuck it, it's bias. I have not thoroughly inspected everything from all these movies because I don't do this the way that High Top does. I'm much more invested in the writing. Um, but the idea that No Way Home doesn't have like anything in it, uh, camera wise or color, what, whatever the fuck he wants to categorize the whole thing as, is just like I think that's bullshit. I think there's plenty yeah, we can compliment. Time of a pandemic, but I found No Way Home to be 80% of the time hideously ugly with no tangible sense of space or reality. No tangible Man. sense of space or reality. Now, are you specifically referring to the mirror dimension? Because I wonder if in your high top <laughs> bias, unfair mind, <laughs> you are specifically referring to the place that's the goofy gonzo mirror realm that is not supposed to have a normal sense of space and time and you are applying guess, that to the entire film it just feels because like this is obviously like there's cgi here in this shot like this you know there's there's clearly stuff going on in the back but then what about all the other scenes that are in just like regular places i'm just bored of like in the apartment or sense in of reality. the what office the fuck? or like well, i just there are plenty of front of blue screens I, I guess, but like there are plenty of scenes that don't have that. Like if you show this scene, sure, but what about like other ones? Yeah. What about uh uh Peter's apartment? What about Happy's apartment? Yeah. Double up on the apartments here. What about when they're in the rubble? You know, things of that nature. <clears throat> ugly with no tangible sense of space or reality a lot of quite a claim yeah especially with the visual it's like oh i can help you out high top um there's a staircase in the sanctum sanctorum and, and they're strange has gone up it they are they're at the bottom of it and they are looking up at him um, yeah it's pretty it's I got really you, clear yeah we 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 started with an establishing shot when they entered it it's a really easy to understand space like this shit i'm sorry me, that your I'm brain just... can't handle it because it's in the mcu it feels so just unfair when people do stuff like this. I'm just like, what do you you think you're saying stuff? You aren't. Not even at all. Mm -hmm or reality. A lot of singles, characters, fantastic actors, isolated and this this film is like or this video. Did you want them to actually film at the Statue of Liberty? Like <laughs> who fucking knows what he wants? Yeah, that's the thing. This film is just the ultimate for people that already agree with me video. Uh, yeah. Oh, definitely. This, this is a new tailor made for people either. who hate MCU Spider Man. This video is not convincing. There's no arguments here. You're not convincing not yet. me. I'm assuming we'll get to the writing at some point.
Did in front of a green screen, interacting with nothing. Edited. Did, clearly, he's interacting with something. He's, he's standing on the fucking that. statue. Oh, we're getting, yeah. oh boy, we're getting plinket stuff here, and it's oh boy, be careful. Yeah, we're just like this process automatically also, bad. To acknowledge that it was shot in a pandemic, which may well have meant that it was harder for them to shoot on location, and then to shit on them for that. <laughs> He was real awkward. Yeah, he's, he's already acknowledged the pandemic too, but then he's just like, oh well, like, uh, eh. Is this a, is this an accidental, um, uh, like, one, is this in an indirect way, sort of, uh, poo-pooing on the actors for their inability to perform their tasks? Well, because that's the thing, I think that we've been fucked by Plinkett, unfortunately, and I don't blame Plinkett exclusively for this, but when he said Ewan McGregor was acting on literally just an entire room of green, and that it comes through in his performance because he doesn't react to certain things at certain times, I think that's completely fair. But now people have evolved that into, if they find out that's the case, they will use it against the film, whether or not they noticed anything. Mm -hmm. And that that's that's not right. Uh, there are some actors who really can nail it, even if there's nothing in front of them at all. Well, what is a stage performance if not, in a lot of cases, relying on your imagination to fill in the blanks? Exactly. Like, depending, depending on the variety of the stage, like some stage productions have massive amounts of props and backgrounds and stuff, but sometimes it's incredibly minimal. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just looking for something. Right, quick, if you want, if you guys want to talk about anything, I just like, the, yeah, the um, is part of what he's talking about. Fringy, what's on your mind? Uh, nothing. I've I've just been reeling over how wrong I am, and I'm just <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out ways to move <laughs> yeah. forward. You so, know? high top has the existential dread of, of course, the planet burning to a crisp again. I have the oh. existential dread of nobody exists but me. That's uh, yeah. That's, that's a scary thought to have, but uh, well, if we there. ever need you to help, well, you, you know what? Uh, you well, know. actually, I uh, this might not be the opportunity because it looks like Maul is trying to set something up, but I got some fan yeah. art, uh, oh. that uh, that's really cool. Well, I, I mean, like we, yeah, I mean, even if I mean, you could show us and we can go, ooh, ah, and then chat will go, oh, you have to post it for us. Now we have to see it. It's not fair. It's not fair. What is this tyranny? Oh, it's not, it's not. Oh, files are too powerful. Too oh big. my goodness gracious! Well, I, I think um, I could send you this one. Can you make it smaller with your goo, or or I, can I you could just make it smaller? But, it. Or alternatively, you can just check Twitter because I tweeted it out. Oh just, my like, goodness! A little hour ago. Oh my like, god! No, a little fat shibi fringy. No, with a little donut. Arms down. With a little donut and bulging fat, and the the buttons can barely hold on for the vest. What um, what inspired this version of Fringy? This I, large I have no time? idea. I don't think uh, he said that there wasn't really any reason. It was just something. That was... And then uh, I like the I think it's a sexual thing. No, I, I, no. I just think it's ha, ah, look fat for you, little donut, num num num, delicious. And then uh, there was just one where it was just me in the Halo universe with microtransactions all around me <laughs> to like vehicle paints and, and colors. Um. Because it costs so much money ah. to get some colors. There we go. Okay. I was just trying to find one that was... Sorry, I, I was trying Google Images first, and that was a mistake. I should have gone straight to YouTube. But I think the point yeah. will have been made pretty clearly. Um, I agree with High Top. Every time they go on fucking blue screens and green screens, the whole movie feels fucking fake. Am I right? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. What are you, are you, yeah. You're not going to show what I think you're going to show. You know. Look at this horrific use of blue slash green screen. I'm not sure what movie this oh, is. No. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. Oh no. But Mahler, you can't you can't do this. Well so the interesting thing is that I guarantee you Hightop would be like, well, to be fair, that's a special effect shot. It's when they're gonna be the car comes through the window or some shit. I'd just be like, oh, do you God. think there's no special effect shots in what Tom Holland gets up to in that scene? Why do you think there are blue screens? Why? <laughs> like, you... That's the whole fucking point. A lot of the time, they, they need to recreate locations they can't get to necessarily, or they need to have something crazy big happen. And I was like, of course, I, I we don't have the time. If I had known this was going to happen, I could have gotten some examples ready, but there's going to be plenty of that throughout all of uh, Raimi's filming. Of course there is. It's okay. Don't worry. You'll be fine. It's a technique. Yeah. Um, and so, I, I don't know, like, if it feels super weird to just pick this for Tom Holland, as you guys can see, and just be, like, bad. And you're like, oh. 
I don't even know the context of this this shot. Like, I don't even know what was required or what was needed. But yeah, I, I, I can see a lot of reasons for why they would have filmed this this way. But no, bad. Like, oh. Okay. They built the hair, did I? Blue. It's very true. Also, who's that freeing out? Let's have a look here. This is what Fringy was talking about. Adorable. Yeah. Having himself Beautiful. a few donuts. Only one left. <laughs> oh my nom, goodness. Nom, nom. Oh my goodness. With nothing edited together with another Fringy fantastic Mac Bong or whatever it's called. Mac no. Bong. What is wrong with this? You've got your actors. You've even got the cars yeah. around to give it, but like, oh, well, the backgrounds are blue. And it's like, yes, they can fucking make it whatever they want later. I don't know, like, what's, what, who died? Yeah. There is isolated in front of a green screen, interacting with nothing, edited together with another fantastic actor, probably shot weeks, months later, reacting, isolated. So that could be the case. That could be the case, but cool. you have to prove that that system does not work. And I, like I said, that when Plinkett yeah. did it, with how uh, Obi-Wan doesn't react at all to a bunch of lightsabers flinging around in his face, like, yeah, that's a great example. Well, but the thing is, if you have yeah. a conversation between myself and Rags and recorded three months apart, but you could never tell, then... Yeah. Well, I as mean, long as you're as immersed, all... does it matter? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you yeah. watch The Simpsons and you know that all of these lines were recorded in isolation, like, does that screw things up for you? This is the thing, I would prefer that they're on set together, but sometimes you can't pull that off, and so now it's about, like, making That's sure that you nail time. it. And if they do... Mm -hmm. This is a part of the talent of acting and directing, that you can Excellent. do these sorts of things and the audience wouldn't ever know. I wonder how many of those things you'd never know if you didn't go looking for it, well, or, exactly. or if someone hadn't shown you. Think about reshoots. Imagine they, they figured out when they'd finished Spider-Man 2 that they were like, Oh, Toby, you flubbed this line, this line, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work. Uh, we're not getting everyone back to do all those scenes. We're just going to record you, you know, on your own doing them. Would High Top die? Mm -hmm. Would he be like, this is the worst things that have happened in my life? You're not allowed to make films this way. <laughs> in front of a separate green screen. This has been the Marvel method for a good bit, but it's never felt so noticeable to me. The spatial continuity... I didn't... I, think I didn't really what? feel it. Black Widow is I the really most tell noticeable. me when you watch yeah. Shang-Chi yeah. and Way better than other ones. at the end of the film. Black Widow, yeah. Like, do you really believe... Are you telling me that there was in this film when you saw that you're like you know that reminds me it's actually worse than when Yelena and Nat exactly were yelling at each other on this very loud like this place that they clearly are not in. Absolutely, yeah, like, this is not worse than Black Widow, come on. No. Visual rhythm has never felt so off to me. No Way Home clearly needed a few more months in the oven because the half-baked no. I was actually no. impressed the by how much it seemed. The half-baked CGI? Pretty so finished. I would agree that, that but, but more time would help, like, a lot of films in terms of every effects. Every film, like, basically every film, if you said, time. yeah, oh, you're ready? You're, yeah, oh, won't... here's a couple extra months to just polish, just go through, look through again. You as know, long as we them. don't get a Black Panther shot where they're fighting each other as though they're from earlier than 2000, um, I think we're yeah, fine. Yeah, I and can't, like, that's actually a good example. Black Panther's visual effects, man. Oh. Mm-hmm. And funnily enough, this shot that he's referencing, this was one where for a moment when I was watching it, I was like, oh, he's, yeah, he's on a green screen. Yeah. But in my own head, I'm like, well, of course he is. He's fucking flying everywhere. <laughs> he's, he's, he's definitely on yeah. the green screen. Especially with the, look at what's in the background. Look at what the, it's the fucking mirror dimension. It's like, I can forgive them not being able to nail everything, especially on crunch time. Um, I think it's really mean to do this to this film and to never do this with any of the fucking films that he mm -hmm. praises through it. Again, not trying to say, like, but other films do it. I just don't get his POV. I never have. Uh, it, it's just, like, all the things you highlight are present in other stuff that you love, but you use it against uh, the MCU Spidey because you got to use something against him. Bias incarnate. CGI really left a stale taste in my mouth. It's not by any means the fault of the artists, who probably finished working on it last week after months of sleepless, caffeinated nights. But if you have to use yeah, yeah, recycled yeah. footage from Spider-Man 3 they in the amazing- They weren't available to shoot. I don't, I, yeah, I don't you... see how that's, like, we're fine. We're gonna be fine by also, reusing a couple shots. I didn't even, I didn't even know it was recycled footage. I just you probably would have. I did with it Sandman. Um, yeah, Sandman. Yeah. I was like, I'm I pretty sure I've seen that shot before. Uh, but that's yeah, fine. I hadn't. Okay. Um, I see now. You know, like I, I can see it now. But 
Yeah, I just didn't notice at the time. Hadn't seen that movie in a while. Again, all so, I gotta say about if this I is make like, this you'll video, live. You'll be okay. Yeah. Yep. Spider-Man, just to provide satisfying emotional closure to two of your lead villains, it might be- You say that, like, mm, I feel like you're bumping them up a little higher than they probably should be when yeah. we've got so much going on. That is- Yes, they are the lowest emotion. of the of the five. Well, so if you were to tier them, it would be Dark Ark, then Green Goblin, or well, you could kind of put if they're villains, Green Goblin's number one. I feel one, like but... Green Goblin's at the top. Yeah, uh, and then Electro's like, Dark third. Ark, then Electro. With those two is four and five. If anything, yeah. Sandman four, Lizard five, I think. Um, being like, wow, you did this to one of your villains. You're like, dude, dude, five villains. <laughs> come on now. And Remember, how come you don't say this about Venom in Spider-Man 3? Well, how come, how come we're not acknowledging that? that they juggled five way better than Raimi juggled three? Yeah. Yeah, mm. Spider-Man 3 was shit. Time to delay the movie. What I'm trying to say, really, is that I wish I could What are you doing? Why more... were you there when Black <laughs> and autistic. White looking... You, you, why are you there in black and white looking to the right and then looking forwards? What is what uh, is that? Like, so, explain to me what that is. Yeah, let's do it. So, Freen, do you want to do it or should I explain visual rhythm? Uh, because Rags clearly no, doesn't understand. No, go for it. So, go for yeah, it. When it comes to visual rhythm, or let's just say legitimate tactile responses to any kind of engagement um, cinematically, what you need to understand is that language through cinema is complicated. And uh, through the visual mm -hmm. medium, you All can right. actually portray a lot of what is essentially like uh, flow. So, okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I all right. I think I, I all right. I think we're on the same wavelength here right. in terms of artistry of the system. Hopefully, chat understand now as well because I think a lot of them definitely a lost. Yeah. I think I feel yeah. All right. Sure to two of your lead villains, it might be time to delay the movie. What I'm trying to say, really, is that I wish I could. <laughs> it's kind of funny now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. I'll Bro, just throw a picture. picture. That shot, I just need that shot right there for that. Okay, it's just, it's so important. It's, it's weird when I, it, because when I make a video or when you make a video, we're like, okay, visuals are very important. Mm -hmm. So what we're showing should have like a purpose. It should mean something. It should have some relevance to what I'm saying. So I guess if I said the word I, I should show me, right? Or maybe an eye. But not, yeah, two eyes. Mm. Ooh, my goodness gracious. Closure We're only half your life. Fuck. Oh, I know, boy. it's taking a lot longer than the movie, Bob, but that's it's okay. It's okay. Villains, it might be time to delay the movie. What I'm trying to say, really, is that I wish I could- Well, we just we just hit the seven minute point, so Movie Bob's video is just ending right now. Oh, yeah. Plus, we had ads, play. too, for yeah. this one. There was yeah, that's true. Ad, so. We got Kylo Ren, that's right. You could hear more of John Watts' voice as a filmmaker, as an artist. His visual touches in this film, the wonners, the trackers, the rawer violence, are more predominant. Rawer? Rawer. Rawer. He, rawer. Mean, he did mean raw, right? The rawer. More rawer, raw, I guess. I guess yeah, I guess he meant so more raw, more and he said yeah. rawer. <laughs> Rar, R A W R, Rar, less than three. <laughs> Ooh, woo, wow, Ooh, wow. Buzzles your nudge. No. An artist. His visual touches in this film, the wonners, the trackers, the raw violence are more predominant, <laughs> but he still he mean feels raw? caught up. So we just established quite a few little touches that have to come from his vision, but then we're just like, eh, but you know, not enough. Saws. Too much green screen. It's like, oh, you suck. Islands are more predominant, but he still feels caught up. Too cage confined to the MCU film's hamster. How do you determine this? There's no way. And how do you not He's apply this to the other shit. films? He's just like, would he, saying shit. Would he say this about Eternals, for instance, that that one was confined and caged by the Marvel, considering that- And what does no. he do when Chloe if Zhao was... says, no, it's my movie, it's not the MCU's well, fucking movie. Well, which she said several times that she had a lot of- What do you do, Hightop? Do what she wanted. You seem to be so and sure And then what do you do with, like, Shang-Chi? What do you do with that one? Is that one- He's so confident in these- and... Seemingly random assertions. It's like there's seven yeah. people on the camera, and John is trying to muscle his way to it. It's like they're all the MCU people. They just, they just like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna push it the here. MCU do this. Camera people, no, you the have MCU the stink of people. Disney about you. <laughs> Get away from the camera, all of you. Go home. I'll finish this movie myself. Flatly lit medium shots. A Spider-Man film has never felt so visually textureless to me. Uh... Visually textureless to you? 
You're just saying I feel. I don't know what to say. I mean, look at his jacket. Yeah, this texture. So aesthetically lifeless with no sense well, how of is this how lifeless you aesthetically? Even... Are you nuts? It's <laughs> the whole opposite of what you just said. Oh, if, maybe if it was a puppet, it would have more life. <laughs> just, come on, this is a joke. <laughs> Textureless to me. So aesthetically lifeless with no sense of tan. It's, it's so full of energy. The, the moment here is how much of fucking annoying it is to be dragged through the air this fast by one person you're desperately hanging on to. I don't understand. Ability. To me, the visual styling gets in the way of the story and storytelling too many times. Explain how. Visualizing? Make sure you yeah, cut it off before how. the cool shot, though. How does it do Make it? Oh no, yeah, I wonder please. if you'll include the cut it off before Andrew the cool shot. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, I got it. Oh, okay. well, <laughs> we down. <clears throat> and that part is fucking awesome. But okay. Yeah. So look at this boring told. shot of him just sitting there show... in front of some papers. Ugh. Well, why don't you show the cool shot of the? Wow, well, you can't because it's not available. Like, <laughs> but the three you spider men like... swinging around. You almost want to take the video friggin'. and just flip the keywords where you need them with the best impressionist ever, and then just have all the, the bland visuals of the Raimi movies and all the best shots from the MCU ones. Yeah, if we're just going to be that uncharitable. Yeah. <laughs> just, like... McGuire oh. show up. They make their grand return. Two beloved Spider-Men. Icons. You will never get to experience that feeling again. Neither will I. And that experience he is... He said I and he showed him. That's art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it off, everyone. Look, the visual, the visual That's language, an art. right? I saw it. Look at that woman on the right. She's Experience. dressed interestingly. She got that purple hat, and then like like the the bluish purple jacket, and then that reddish white blouse, Style. and then you could tell she's got a sweater underneath that, and the earrings. She's so like a. Up. She's dressed like a wizard. It is great, the collective love like no other, but that experience will always have been filmed Look in boring media. Look how bland those media. crowds are compared to- ah, uh, fuck it. He loves- he loved them coming back, but it will always been filmed in the boring way that John Watts films. Some shots so edited for applause and- Edited for applause. Edited for applause. Explain. Ex yeah, please explain as though movies don't get built in a way that have climaxes. Like, please tell me how Raimi has never done that. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Written, staged in Ned's. Staged? Stay. It's all. St what? Will always have been filmed in boring medium shots, edited for applause, and written, staged in Ned's grandma's house what the fuck's wrong with that what's wrong with what's that what's wrong with ned's grandma's house oh my god <laughs> he's what is wrong with you people -Man. he's a friendly he, neighborhood yeah. Spider-Man in the little neighborhood and he pops up in a little old lady's house and like, that facilitates that? a lot of great jokes it's like he's saying we needed to have it so that the portal opened in like the, the in fucking aura borealis and like well, Spider-Man came through on worth... his Spider-Man spaceship and he was like a, a, a so, speaker being like, This is the Spider-Man fireworks fire. Like, what the Oval fuck did you Office. want? Just... <laughs> Why? I don't get it. Like did it did it take like a genius to notice that this was deliberate? That uh, yeah. Peter Parker, Toby Maguire walks in in casual clothing into just some house in the middle of a neighborhood saying, Hi. Yeah. It's great. It summarizes exactly what kind of person he is. He's just your normal How dude. How awkward is it, though, by the way, to, like, shit on the film being edited for applause, but then shit on it for not doing a grand enough introduction of these oh, characters? Yeah. In, like, ten seconds, you've just flipped your position. And it's funny Redraft, because, like, friends. I don't know what- what did he want? What, what- I'm trying to envision what the fuck he was after. He wants one where they swing in and every, and some New Yorkers like, Hey look, Spider-Man is New York! Yeah! Hey, and then they all hey cheer forget about it! Yeah, yeah, I'm walking in! You mess with one New York, you yeah. mess with all of us, okay? Look, this Spider-Man, look at him go! That's what he wants. You know what he, want? he would want the guy to go, oh, It's Raimi Spider-Man! <laughs> like, yeah. I sure do love Raimi Spider-Man, yeah. He's That's the best Spider-Man Spider right ever there. did, yeah. I love it. The webs come out of his body. <laughs> I want him, yeah. just once, I want him to take a scene, explain what is wrong with it, why it's wrong, and what he would do to improve it. 
And don't refer to any other scenes. You have to explain why this scene, this specific scene is bad and no yeah. reference to anything else in the film. It's Except like you have like to... Plot relevant, right, basically. Do you, you know in the boondocks when the guy's possessed and Uncle Ruckus comes in and makes him read? I haven't seen it. You know that? No. I'm trying right. to leave out the the horrific racist bits that are really funny. But... For those of you in chat who know the scene I'm talking about, that's like, that's what High Top would be tied to the bed, and he's the evil spirit, and you're just like making him try to to do that, and he's like, ah, no, never, and objects are just flying around the room. Just do a little bit of like video criticism. No, no. <laughs> sounds like Palpatine. <laughs> no, yeah. all of you in chat, uh, isn't you, it? You'll, you'll love it. Isn't it just great? The, uh, this has been pointed out by people before, but I feel like we did as well. Just that Spider Man didn't butt heads. They just talked and respected each other's efforts and existence and stuff. And Absolutely. they weren't welcomed in with applause or shock or a huge audience as they clap lightning and thunder as they land. Again, not knocking Thor's entrances and stuff, but that's just that's how you do Thor. This was the first one comes in. This little old lady is screaming and throwing things at him. And he's like, stop, stop. And it's just like, it's so like cute, wholesome, and small. And then the second one comes in and Ned's like, who's this guy? Ah, I love it. It's so subtle compared to how you would expect them to do superhero entrances. But no, you get punished for that now. Yeah, not They should have... It needs to be in the Oval Office or maybe <laughs> during the Super Bowl, right on the 50-yard <laughs> line. <laughs> that's that's the middle. Why wasn't it in space, and Rex? Why wasn't it? It should space? have been in the middle of the live the Large Hadron Collider during a live experiment. It should have been I maybe Battle of the Somme, perhaps. I don't know. Something maybe during the Olympics. Uh when Michael Phelps was about to win his 78th gold medal or whatever he's up to, right before he gets to the finish wall. Um he just he, he falls into the water. Oh my goodness gracious, it's Spider-Man. He can swim, I think. There's back, and I just wish that that resurrection, that once in a lifetime moment was a tad more awe-inspiring. Spider-Man swinging has never felt so lifeless. Stop it! Literally <laughs> used a puppet. You Literally used a puppet. <laughs> You gotta stop. You just tap right. it with a newspaper. Puppet. You stop that right now. Actual puppet. Well, so so like, let's be real here. Um, like the web swinging in in the Raimi films, like a lot of the time, it'd be super majestic and cool, and I like it. But you compare it to like the more realistic swinging that you see in the Tasm films, or um, I guess like kind of going for a similar thing in like the MCU ones, but it's just you've got better tech now. It's like I don't I don't know what to say. Like. It's, I mean, the, I mean, the triple Spider-Man swing was fucking is awesome. top notch. Yeah. I'm guessing he hated that too. Soaring together will always get a massive applause, even if it looks like murky, unfinished previs with less style. Come on, wow. you can't honestly say this about what? the the, the web swing so in this movie, but then talk about so how good. awesome it is in the old ones. It looks so good. It looked good. I'm sorry. It, I don't it looks say. good. Yeah. Also, we have spent more than half the video now just strictly talking about how it looks. You'd think you'd want yeah. to talk about the character work. You talk about the yeah. I'll clarity and punch than what Mark Webb did in 2012 and what Sam Raimi did in 2000. Yeah, but what John Watts did doesn't even count, right? Because it's the studio. His yeah. voice isn't in there. Yeah. I don't even why you're. No, I don't even know why you're what saying his name. About I, 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 again, it feels real awkward. Like, did you not sit far from home? The ending little web swing in New York, it's no, fucking awesome. I like it. Shut up. Great. It's weighty. We got a lot of movement, a lot of variety in terms of what he's doing. He then starts flying around. It's great. Two. I know it sounds like I hate this film. Trust me, guys. I, I will know, say, though, but... like, the, the web swing in the Tasm film is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. It's really good. Yeah. I promise you that Spider-Man No Way Home is my favorite of the Watch trilogy. It's my favorite thing. Well, yeah, there's Raimi stuff in it. That wasn't like, we could have figured yeah. that out. The MCU has done with the character since 2016, and it's the first time that Tom Holland's Peter Parker has really felt like Spider-Man to me.
Whatever. Okay, because it's an origin story. Yeah. We both that, that point point yeah. about a thousand times. I just don't know what to say. It's just like, all right then. There's a moment, that big moment, when the tone took that massive switch, when the MCUism started taking a backseat, being restrained. I don't to even Dr. know what it Strange means when people say. It. Every just... time someone says something like that, the MCU tone or the MCUism, I just want to say, hold on, what do you mean? Well, especially if they reference like stuff like Eternals or Captain Martin, and you're just like, well, those are the shitty ones, right? So when they do well, is it not MCU anymore? Because I, I, I can always guess what they're talking about, but um, and I'm assuming Just in this case he's referring to um, changing changing tone. Um, even though he just said the tonal switch, as if to imply that's a good thing. Even though, let's be honest, because... um, the scene begins at the spider sense, and then it just goes down and darker and more serious and raw until we get uh, Aunt May dying. There was no tonal shifts in Homecoming, though. Not like when Vulture found out who he was and it was entirely serious and there were no jokes at all. No, or this like is the in, first time they've done again, that in No Way Home, actually. In Far From Home, when he's on the plane with Happy and it's just entirely, like, tonally, just, we, we, we're we not doing jokes right now. No, so, like, they, we have those, those moments. Jokes. You just don't remember them. They, they don't do jokes. They... I don't think they've ever done a joke in any of these films, like, in the fight with the bad guy when he beats them. Like, it's entirely played totally straight and serious every time. When he fights Vulture, it's played straight. When he fights Mysterio, Mysterio right at the end, it's played straight. And when he's fighting Goblin, it's totally played straight. Conversely, in Captain Marvel, they don't play it straight when she's going to fight Jude Law. Gets punted across the screen. I'm being like, hey. <laughs> That big moment, when the tone took that massive switch, when the MCUism started taking a backseat, being restrained to Doctor Strange's prison. Yeah, so just to clarify, MCUism is when there's a joke during a scene. Uh, awesome. So that so what happens when there's like when we see Bruce Campbell and he's making jokes in the Raimi films? Is that that okay? shit's great. Shut up. It's great. It is great though. That shit's but, like, gold. But. It I, it always feels like it, it only is because it's not the MCU to him. Whereas it's like no, like that's, that's good it. Shit. Yes, funny. that is it. That's it. It's because it's the MCU. Finally Fuck allowed it. genuine emotion. Nah. Matt, finally allowed. There it is. Finally <laughs> allowed <laughs> genuine emotion. That's a there bingo card all it, thing. Right all there. it took was one of Spider Man's parenting by his one of his guardians to fucking die. That's the shit that yeah. That's what I mean. That's it feels it. reverse engineered. It was. It's like I've been waiting for Uncle Ben. This is good enough. This is real emotion now. It's like, dude, <laughs> as if it's not real, genuine emotion on that fucking airplane. Like bullshit. Genuine sincerity. When No Way Home transitioned from genuine instead of yeah, yeah, instead of sincerity. sincerity. You and your your <laughs> disingenuous <fake> sincerity. sincerity. <laughs> your sincerity is a lie. <laughs> Redraft, please. No, it's genuine, legitimate, real, actual, actual. From being a standard, messy, modern MCU flick to find. I'm modern. sorry. Didn't he fucking love? Like, ugh, I never understand this shit. Like, the MCU is whatever he wants it to be. Whenever it's in reference to a thing, it's just because well, he's praised the MCU before, right? Totally. He fucking said, he, like, uh, Falcon the Winter Soldier. He said was like one of the best things oh. he's seen the MCU. Even though it, that is like he's a crazy peak weirdo. Sludge. Peak Pe sludge. Absolute peak sludge, right, yeah. Um he didn't I don't know what he thought of uh, Black Widow. He loved Wonder Woman eighty four, but that doesn't really count, I guess. Cause... Jeez. I can believe I know, that right? he loved Wonder Woman eighty four. Oh, he adore, yeah, because it's a creative vision. And then all he had to say about <laughs> the Suicide Squad one. was that it was alive. <laughs> oh yeah, he because he didn't like it. Yeah, but he didn't um, want to say that to his audience. He was like, it's alive. Yeah. Alive, <laughs> a Spider Man movie, and that transition happened as soon as they allowed Peter Parker to. F oh, you ask us, like, what, what, uh... what were your problems with? What were your problems with Suicide Squad? What were your problems with Book of Boba Fett? What are your problems with this film, that film? And our answers will always be the same. Uh, the characters are inconsistent. They don't behave as they should. The plot doesn't make any sense. Uh, it just, it's all, it's always this, the same stuff you hear from us because we're consistent with it. 
And with him, it's just like, I don't, did you, did you like it? Did he not like it? I was just, oh, I mean, we're, we're in a fucking culture where you can just say absolutely anything and people don't give a fuck anymore because they're not even listening. Like, it's saying, why is it that this better? This is better than the other two in the MCU? It's like, well, because they let Peter feel real emotions. You're like, yeah, I agree. You're like, you, you do? Yes, absolutely. You really? Can you explain why you feel that way? Right? Why can't you just let me like things? <laughs> Maybe you need to think harder about what the thing you think is, because that sounds like a placeholder that you've just agreed that is true. You haven't thought about it at all. And movie. And that transition happened as soon as they allowed Peter Parker to feel, allowed us to witness, to empathize with loss. With You're just yeah. wrong. He's, he's never lost anything before in the with MCU. Loss. He's never felt anything genuine. He's never really felt, you know? He's always been kind of robotic. Yeah. Tom Holland especially, just as an actor, you know, he just doesn't really emote anything. I completely agree. Far From Home was revolutionary. If he says it is true, this is what I mean about the whole like, uh, when he got annoyed that Jay responded to him, because he was like, wow, I can have my opinion, you can have yours. And Jay was trying to explain, it's like, but things you say, some of the things you say are false. Mm -hmm. Like, what, what are we to do Your about that? Is a lie. It's not true. You told an untruth, and you said it's your opinion. Well, yeah, opinions you... can be wrong. That's where you have to get on well, the ground floor. Opinions can be the wrong. Star, the sun is beautiful. I love how purple it is. Well, what if they got fucked up eyes? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, they don't. They don't. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if Sam Raimi directed the sun? Ooh. Ooh. Consider for your amusement. Let's carry on. Yeah, if, if someone just came away saying I thought he was out of character, and you're like, why? It's like, um, I'm just, I just killing the Green Goblin was fucked up. He didn't kill the Green Goblin. He was, he was, he was talking. He was like, well, yeah, but he may as well. No, like a metaphorical <laughs> death. <laughs> it's like Garden of Eden, you know. With grief, with longing, with pain. It's a brilliant move to kill Aunt May, to make her the much needed Ben Parker. Yeah. <laughs> much needed Ben yeah, Parker. There it is. Oh. I need a fucking dead uncle or a dead aunt. Someone's gonna die. Dead uncle stat. And they just roll him in and shoot him in the back of the head. Like <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even compliment it as its own thing. He had to be like, this is Uncle Ben, by the way. He like, right, right. Okay. Totally I'm different, but that. okay. I'm whatever. more than fine with MCU Peter being pretty much raised by a single mother. That's a lovely, smart addition that could actually add more to this could? version of the character. It did. Could? It yeah, did. It does. Or did. No. Right there. Go but I so. <laughs> I guess we'll carry on. I wish, I so very wish that I cared about this May Parker. Well, so That's now what do we do? Problem. Yeah, because I was going to say, because yeah, I cared about it. Because I did. No Way Home tries and almost succeeds at making her what she always should have been. Peter's moral compass. So now, but like, when he says almost succeeds, what was missing from this mm. film? How do we? How you say she was more fleshed out than Uncle Ben? Oof, you sir are pushing it. All right, <laughs> you, you, you're gonna get cancelled. <laughs> the only problem there is that for the last two movies, for the last five years, this Aunt May has been relegated to the cool, chill, hot mom. Summer fling. It's a well. So if you ignore all the meaningful scenes where she talks to Peter about his responsibilities. Ben, yeah. So, I don't know, yeah, that just seems unfair. Travesty, a tragedy, because Tom Holland really brings it here. John Wall- He always has. He brought it every time. But you can tell from this shot that he always brings it. Like, why, why are we- Ugh, I hate pretending that Tom Holland is some, like, shitty actor. It's so fucked up. It's just wrong. He really brings it in the way he allows her, allows Peter, allows us to feel oh, the Oh, stop doing- The formula us. is so clear, you just repeat, like- Every single time, you got to do three things. It's like, all right, allows them, through. allows you, allows yeah, exactly. we, allows us, yeah. allows myself, it's, allows it's, them. It's, I'm sick of this formula because it happens every time. You can't just have one sentence. you got to always try and emphasize it with some different... You just like look up synonyms for the words. You know, all right, three, we're good. We hit the target. All right, moving on. It's emotional. Yeah of her shocking death. I just wish this was planned. Wish this was thought out. Move. <laughs> <laughs> when you say I wish this was planned, what exactly do what you mean? What if John Watts said to you, yeah, it was? 
Well, as far as I knew, they always planned to kill somebody that was meaningful to Peter in No Way Home. They just weren't exactly sure who would do it, which is the kind of planning I prefer, because uh, yeah. your story will dictate a certain few things by the time you get to that payoff. Mm -hmm. and so you have to see what fits with the story the most. Because yeah, uh, I think we speculated like it could have been that MJ gets a fake out death, but then Ned's the one that actually dies. Could be Aunt May, mm -hmm. like we said. Could there's lots happy. you could do. Yeah, it could be happy. Yeah, absolutely. Movies ago, because then maybe May Parker would have always held the emotional weight, always have been the quintessential strong, selfless mother that our comic you do. have clips you was you're pulling before. From the I was gonna say really those clips are not helping you. <laughs> like, yeah. you they are not. Just because you weren't paying attention to him doesn't mean that yeah you know, it no, was no. bad. Yeah. Counterpart that her other film renditions have always been. But is oh, okay. that this film's fault for trying to rectify the previous? Not a rectifying, it's building on it. No. Sorry. Hate to break it to you. I'm not sure. I really don't know. I do know that was necessary. Yeah. That after that moment, I started to feel a lot. I started to become invested in this Peter's journey. Maybe it was the inclusion. Maybe of the it was other always the plan. The surprise. <laughs> maybe no, maybe it was. It was the the, fact. Maybe it was because it was working. Well, it's an arc. let's be honest, maybe it was just because you were like, that was Uncle Ben death scene. Yes! Yeah, They've done Uncle Ben yeah, death my, scene. Uh, my, my ape brain recognizes <laughs> dead uncle parallel. Must clap. <laughs> clap for dead uncle. When he, like, sees the blood in his head, he's like, that's Uncle Blood. Yes, we did it's it. Uncle Blood. It has <laughs> yes. Uncle Blood written in it. You just got <laughs> Uncle Blood written in the blood. Uncle. It had to be Uncle Death journey. Maybe it was the inclusion of the other Spider-Men, the surprise everyone saw coming, but the love I was not expecting. Andrew saving Whoa. MJ, Toby mm. leaping in front of Norman's glider, all wonderful cathartic character moments for two Spider-Men that have been trying to stop those inevitable That was torture. not a good cut, my friend. Yeah, that, <laughs> that feels, that really feels awkward. awkward. <laughs> that was really you want, awkward. You want that one being played Silently, not not with the thud. It, it's, it's almost comedic. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not. It's like because you know you wanted to make it work, but you see that again. Stop like... those inevitable, <laughs> fateful tragedies from ever occurring. They couldn't in their universes. They couldn't and will never be able to go back and stop the loss they have experienced. This but is getting maybe, like preachy, just... artsy shit. Hey, like they... I, that's a great screen, by the way. No, 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 no. Oh, they went up. They no. went up there. They went yeah, up to right an under construction skyscraper. You know that would happen. <laughs> you know for a fact you'd say, oh, that, that's on a green screen. He'd be like, yeah, they're not going to film up there. That's dangerous. You'd but they like, are going to um... film on the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Tom, help me out. Maybe, to quote Andrew Garfield's always gut-punching, vulnerable Peter Parker, they can stop Tom's Peter from ending up like them. But that's the thing, right? That's what the movie is saying, right? That in order yeah. to be Spider-Man, truly be Spider-Man, you must experience life-altering, unforgettable, earth-shattering heartbreak. You yeah, must... like losing no. your mentor, Tony Stark. But that doesn't yeah. count. But even then, I'd be like... Oh, also, no. Dead. Also, no, yeah. You, uh, had Uncle Ben not died... Um, and something else happened. Well, any of the, the trilogy hospital recovered. Like, you know? what, what if he went to hospital and came out of it okay eventually? Like, I, I don't... This is such a weird way to look at characterization. Like, you have to experience a major loss to be Spider-Man. This is so interesting, though, because it clashes with that overly sarcastic fridging thing, right? She'd be like, well, Gwen Stacy was fridged. She died to propel Peter forward. Uncle Ben was fridged. And that's bad writing. Well, they can fight all they want. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll... I guess it's just funny because there is conflicting schools of thought, right? Where you've got these guys where it's like, no, people need to die to propel our main character. Where other people say, that's a lazy way to do it. People die right, to yeah. propel character for that's lazy. You can find better ways to do it. It's just interesting that these clash. Um, it's so fascinating that there are so many ways to gain. Like it's, it's like it's not the death, right? High top. It's what they gain from that, what they learn from that. And he's like, yeah, consequential, blah 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 blah. And it's like, do you think there's any other way they can learn that, or is it only through a family member they love dearly dying? 
Because how do you learn things in life? Do you just have people constantly like dropping dead around you? I doubt it, yeah. right? Like you learn things just from experiences that you have in life. Like, I, I feel like it's a thing. You understand, like, I, I was about to stop myself there, but I feel like it's true, right? Most stories don't like feature people dying. Like most stories don't do that. Probably. So you're saying most stories are bad? Well, I, I, the problem is I'm trying to think it's like, because because you think about like action movies and, and things like that. It's like well, a lot of those films have deaths. But if you think about like romantic comedies, a lot of them just have like people interacting with each other. You know, like a lot of a lot of dramas just have conflicts between people, not necessarily deaths or anything like, you know, some stories will have like, you know, one major death, perhaps maybe. But like, yeah, it's just if you if you keep framing it through the lens of like action movies and superhero stories, then I guess you can say that. But there's plenty of stories where nobody dies. And um, I don't know, I think if, if we had. 10 iterations of Spider-Man and none of them did a significant family death, but they all explored different ways of reaching this point, or rather just went different directions. What do you do when, let's say a, a Spider-Man that's just the Punisher becomes the new hyper-popular one? Because like, cause like, this is all it ever seems to me, it's just this the one that's co most commonly accepted as opposed to uh, anything else. Mm -hmm. What do you do then? And it's like, well, I mean, maybe Punisher's a bad idea because you know, all of his family got killed, but the fact that he doesn't turn that into what Spider-Man is typically seen as, but rather, I will fucking kill criminals. You know, it, it's all so fascinating to me. It's like, you, you can't be Spider-Man until someone you love dies. I'm just like, that's so strange. I think that what's more important to Spider-Man is the great power comes great responsibility, the do-gooding, no matter what cost it comes to you, uh, ultimately anyway, like, like with a lot of circumstances, and that anybody has the potential to be a hero sort of thing. Um... Rather than you always got to have someone die so that you can learn that life is precious and that through your own inaction or, or uh, perhaps mistakes, you can cause horrible things to happen and that relates to your power and stuff like Expand your mind, high top. There are more ways to do this, yeah. but it really does seem from the way you've described it now that they, they did Uncle Ben's death scene or their own rendition and that made you finally agree with this character. When you've missed all the other losses he's had, which we've been over his videos before, he says, like, Homecoming and Far From Home don't have any consequence. Um, it's insane. Absolutely fucking insane. Uh, depending on your definition of consequence, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Suffer only to endure. You must be faced endure. with a choice to harm only to help. It's what they do. What Spider-Man Yeah, it's what Spider-Man did in Homecoming, though. He saved Vulture. Yep. Yep, he did. I and thought all Spider. I thought worst. what Spider Men do is they have people that they love die. That seems to be the most important thing to him. What I mean about more that. than anything else. The suffering. It is aspect, the thing. Right? Like he he loses Tony and then gets attached to this new guy who purpose built him his whole thing to trick him, and then like took his most powerful weaponry, making him responsible for essentially anything that he does. Then he tries to kill him and his friends. And he gets through all of it and ends it with, you can't trick me anymore. Like, that shit was great in terms of looking at it yeah. as a character thing. Of He's making up for for the consequences of having given away something that he really shouldn't have, but he felt was the right with thing to do because that person him tricked himself. him. Now he's got the confidence to trust himself. That's why he trusts his spider sense to get him through the battle. Because he's trusting in, in himself now to make decisions. Like, yeah, but nobody, nobody loved died, so it doesn't count. You're like, oh... Yeah. Okay. It's almost one of the most refreshing things, honestly, about those films is how little death there is. Like, one person dies in Homecoming. It's shocker. It's like, compared to the other Marvel films where people die all the time, it's kind of nuts. And, like, oh, it's a meme on Twitter that keeps going, but, like, my Spider Man, he has to fucking suffer. You're like, okay. Yeah. With a choice to harm, only to help. It's what they do. What Spider-Man always... And yeah, we, we saw him do this with Mysterio and uh, Vulture, so I don't know why yeah. we're saying this like he's never done it before. ...is will do. And yeah, man, there are little things that can nitpick all the live long day. The idea that Max Dillon or Kurt Connors have something they want to be cured of. They need fucking therapy, not a non-consensual jab to the neck. Or wow. The whole point what? of doing that of for all them the things, is that they can stop like fucking hurting people, you moron. That's not about that's fixing that's them that's as people. 
They need to fix themselves. You are a dangerous monster. We have to make you a not dangerous I'm, monster. I'm blown the fuck away right now. So Lizard is tearing people apart and Electro is blowing up cities and then ties up there like, don't try and take their you power away. They need therapy. You're like, you, you need a therapy session with Lizard just sitting on a couch. What's on your mind, Kurt? Oh, I don't Lizards. know. It's just... I just want to turn the world. <laughs> like, I, just, I, I want to turn the world into lizards. Bullshit! They're just trying to depower them. They don't. As if Peter's like, right next stop, we get them all into therapy. Like, shut the fuck up! What the hell? <laughs> or Raimi's Peter referring to Harry's death as if it happened after a betrayal, when it was really a loving sacrifice that killed. Well, him. Whoa, 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 whoa! He's just summarizing <laughs> events. He did want to kill him, and then he sacrificed. He died in his arms, or whatever. That's what he says. Yeah. Oh, I, it sounds great. The, the idea that you're like, he's not portraying what a great the film. specific elements of Harry's sacrifice. It's like, shut the fuck up. He's summarizing a relationship he had in a very vague term in his fucking universe. He doesn't need to be a more specific. A long time ago. You took, like, oh, he needed to explain the entire story. Harry Osborne met a lot. Yeah, 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 okay. Little Goblin Jr. That's right. <laughs> Goblin Jr., that's true, yeah. Killed his best friend. My friend Harry taught me that. He chose to be the best of himself. Or Pete's and MJ's entire relationship, Tom and Zendaya. They have great chemistry, but their love wasn't naturally established. Na their oh, love wasn't natural. What, what does that mean? I don't know what to tell it people about this. It wasn't naturally established. I think they did a better job than most when they have the idea that she keeps an eye on him. And then he says, uh, "You, yeah, you got it. You figured it out. I am Spider-Man. And then he's like... Was that the only reason, like, that you just, that's why you were watching me? And then she's just, like, awkwardly, like, uh... You know, like, that's the... Far From Home is the beginning of, like, actually moving them into any kind of relationship. Um, and so it's hard to do that, because why go beyond having a crush, right? But, like, they have an interest in each other. And then by the time you hit this movie, the relationship's actually in full mode. Like, it's actually going. And that's when it gets cut off, right at the beginning. Which is even more tragic. Uh, the idea that it's like, it didn't feel nat- I don't know what to tell you, uh, I- I just, what did you want exactly, I guess? What feels natural? Can you give me an example that we can compare it to and explain why, God forbid? God, I wish you had arguments instead of just statements. Naturally built. It wasn't about teenage idealization and then adulthood sacrifice. Man, Are like, you shitting me? It's Are you actually <laughs> kidding sorry. me? Um, <laughs> I, what do you say? What do you say to this? <laughs> Other unless, than it's just pure horse shit. And let's not get into Mary Jane Watson and her uh, attitudes toward dating, shall we? I feel like that's a very Mary bad... Jane's a fucking cunt. <laughs> There's a, no real big reason to get into that on her side. And their, and their friendship partnership was never as palpable as Peter and Gwen's. Or I could just... Okay, but Peter and Gwen get way more screen time and focus in the Tasm films. So even if you are right, that's not fair because the Tasm films didn't do as well with Greek Goblin. You'd be like, well, wait, how, you can't compare those. Greek Goblin's not even in it. You'd be like, yeah, well, there's different focuses, <laughs> different stories, for fuck's sake. Like, mm -hmm. Tom, Tom Holland has to meaningfully give up his, uh, everyone knowing him, his relationship with Doctor Strange, his relationship with Ned, his relationship with, well, I was going to say Aunt May. I guess that doesn't count she's dead. Um, and MJ, like we've got a lot of, uh, not to mention everyone else, all the villains, all the heroes, it's just like, yes, we do not have the time to be able to flesh out his relationship with MJ to the degree that other films can, because that's their only focuses, or one of few focuses. Don't, it's really unfair. All the time, funnily enough, as far as I've seen from people praising the film, um, the chemistry and relationship between Zendaya and Tom Holland in, in the film was at its best for the third one. A lot of people have said that. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the first one where they've been properly together. The other two, they weren't necessarily. Homecoming establishes they have like a vague interest. Far From Home puts them together at the end. Just again... Yeah, it, it's it, not... Yeah, it's... Not an it's equal certainly comparison. not static. No, and... and no, uh, definitely not. It's like an... It's like a relationship developing naturally? Well, I mean, if... if like, you know, in Homecoming, obviously, she's not, like, the main focus, but it's pretty clear that they're, like, setting it up. It, it didn't- it didn't come out of nowhere. Like, that was obviously where they were heading with that. 
she's not the focus in the first one, but she's around and we know that she's paying attention to him. And then the second one, we put him in a circumstance where it's like, okay, now they're actually, we're like being more overt and that there's an interest here and then, yeah, it's an actual relationship in this film. On the, and that's kind of the problem with all of this. We, when he says like, it wasn't built naturally, and then I go, it was built naturally. Now what, what do I do? Yeah. I guess you got to give me references, I I need references. Just, just complain about fucking Ned. But there's also tons. Wait, what's wrong with Ned? Is, it like Ned? Is that it for that? Sacrifice. And their connection, their friendship, partnership was never as palpable as Peter and Gwen's. Or I could just complain about fucking Ned. But there's also tons of well, things. Why, why would you complain about, about Ned? Tell Ned. me what it is about Ned that you do not like. I like Ned, so I don't know. <laughs> I like Ned. Yeah, I like him a lot. Ned's a good guy. I'm I'm glad he got his moments to be a hero. You know. Yeah, and uh, I think that they've done well with. I'm sorry, but they've done the best actually out of the live action Spider Man friendships. Uh, Tom and, and Ned. Yeah. Or Jacob. Uh, compared to the they awkwardness out in the yeah. in the Raimi ones, and then the the hilariousness of Tasman 2's attempt at having them be friends before turning him into a villain straight away, like. Like, is on a production line? Uh, yeah, so, I don't know. I need references, but I don't think we're getting any. Freak out about the live long day that I did freak out about through eyes of nostalgic joy. Raimi's Peter and Otto's reunion. Andrew's Peter silently watching Holland's Peter and MJB. I like how you're talking about these things having happened, but not why they mean so much. Interesting to me. It's like you're putting as, uh, the littlest amount of effort in both the criticism and the praise, to be honest with you. Like, the, t Toby and uh, uh, Otto reunion. It's like so good. It's like, well, why? Right? What's, what's, you because know, that's I, a statement that might require some level yeah. of qualification or explanation. I, I know that we can rely on everybody to sort of figure it out, but like, isn't that your job? I don't know. Be in love. Pretty Are much you just an opinion giver? Is that all you do is you just Dude, give would, your opinions and that's just it? He would tell you, if he saw this right now, he'd be like, yes, of course, you idiots. That's like my whole thing. And I'd just be like, yeah, but sometimes you explain your positions. Sometimes you don't. Makes me wonder. Higher third act is an emotional roller coaster full of fan service that even the coldest of hearts will feel some warmth by witnessing. Obviously, I'm mixed on the movie, but for the first time, I can say that yeah, I'm optimistic about where the story... Because I don't even know why. With a Finally optimistic. A new set of storytellers can go from here. Even if I can't quite figure out what No what? Way Home... <laughs> what? <laughs> what, was yeah. what was that? What was that? Story with a new set of storytellers can go from here. Even if I can't quite figure out what No <laughs> what is that? He so desperately wants to be Spider-Man. He's just like brown top. Brown table, <laughs> sorry. Brown top. <laughs> Brown table has a black top. Brown top and high table. <laughs> Way home is trying to say, not on a thematic level, but on this weird meta level. Are they saying, acknowledging that Tom was never really Spider-Man? Oh. Never really. Oh my God. What? No. Oh, fuck off. Get a life. So the film was called Spider-Man. <laughs> Just a matter of, uh, we're watching an arc unfold. I'm sorry that you only cared about the end of it. Really felt any kind of great loss, consequence, or great sense of wrong. Just wrong. Keep saying it, I guess. You can keep saying it. Responsibility? Am I supposed to applaud the fact it took this long to see the fundamentals of the icon back on the big screen? Or I'm the sorry, fundamentals you can't of the icon? The fucking origin to the icon. I don't understand. Dead uncle? Well, yes. That it, you can't have Spider-Man without a, a dunkle. Are they really saying that we've spent more than half a decade in six film appearances watching a character that needed to lose everything? Need showing him dying. <laughs> Just showing him uh, dying. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, that happened. But who cares? It's fine. Did everyone to forget him in order for him to become the Peter Parker we all no, know? No, it's and not. Love? It's not we that everyone forgot him. You just the fact that you're showing clips that like show you the character and what they were going for. It's so awkward. It is awkward because they're all at, at odds with what he's saying. Yeah, like it, it, but you, they're you, all pulled from the films he's shitting on. You think about these moments in all of the trilogy. And you're like, yeah, this was pretty fucking good. And he's like. 
they're apologizing for their mistakes. Look at that flat cinematography, mistakes. by the way. Look at how uncreative and flat this is that MCU image is. sludge right here. Schlock. Look at that sludge. Order for him to become the Peter Parker we all know and love? Don't get me wrong, like I said, I'm here for it. I'm overjoyed to an almost disturbing degree that No Way Home ends in a crumbly, <laughs> crusty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we knew you'd love this. We knew it. We already knew that because you're really superficial. I'm sorry. Like, it was obvious that it hit the beats that you wanted. We were very invested and happy because it hit the emotional, substantive beats. It went throughout. You managed to maintain Peter Parker as a character, which is a very much significant worry. But you were like, it's a crusty apartment and there's still Uncle yeah, Blood on his hands. Yeah, yeah, we got a. Dead guardian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. more blood. More. <laughs> Dead family. I don't bathe in it. The apartment. Apartment where the camera lingers longer, where bathos is removed, where we are left with nothing bathos? but melancholy. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's referring to the jokes. Sincerity left right. with a Peter Parker who has nobody to call, nobody to pass his problems off to, nobody to. He never has passed who, his who fucking passed problems, off, problems off, off, off. Who? In Homecoming, if anything, he was In entirely this film... unwilling to pass off his problems to other people. And Far From Home, what do you call this when he like takes on an army of drones? Like, wow, passing your problems off, buddy. Yeah share his grief with swinging into the winter night a spider-man reborn <laughs> yeah it's like an arc yep it's, it's, it's how we got here was what the story was you hated it i'm sorry but things don't just exist the way that they are from the get-go they for sure fixed MCU Spider-Man but the end was never him. fucking broken you just didn't like broken. broken you're just bad at you're just bad at talking about Spider-Man it's just as simple as that. You're bad at talking about Spider-Man. ...of that leave me kind of bewildered. The acknowledgement that his character thus far was broken. No, it's not. Like, stop. No, it wasn't. Tell me why. There's nothing in the film that I can even pull that would indicate to me a lack of confidence or faith in what they did before. It's, it's just because he's up. broken because his uncle hasn't bitten it yet. Yep. It's, it was Aunt May's last whiz, wasn't it? Like, Peter, you've been shit. Now you're good. Nah. Yep. <laughs> I and hereby thus, resolve you of your shittiness. <laughs> I must save your character, stabs itself in the heart. Broke me. The detachment from the <sighs> MCU. It broke me. <laughs> broke me. It healed my soul and watered my crops. Oh, look at the these need to no images longer from the be good movies. You guys don't know what bathos is? I don't know the specific definition, no. but uh, it's it's the, the we've we've covered it many times. It's um, is this, isn't it pathos bathos? There's a whole bunch of them, and they refer to like the satisfaction you get from different choices in uh, delivering like tonal things. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of bathos, so. Um. Oh, the, so bathos is an effect of anticlimax created by an unintentional lapse in mood from the sublime to the trivial or ridiculous. The, the, these are not the definitions I'm going to remember. It's a literary literary terms. Theo would know them. Lion on the Avengers brand. The idea that now Spider Man can swing again without the need to have a Fury, a Happy, a Tony. A he was already doing that. What do you mean, Tony, who takes away his shit, so he has to do it with even less stuff now? He's already I... swinging without the blah, blah, blah. How do you think Tony found him? Hmm. Strange, there by his side, leaves us right back to where we started. Like, no? No, a Spider-Man can never, no, like the idea that a Spider-Man can person. never get helped. Isn't is he like just 14 bizarre. here? They have to be independent. He's a very different person. He's come so fucking far. He's learned so much. Like, the idea that we're back to square one is so stupid. A kid, a broke kid, a loner, trying to get by on his own with a secret he must hide in order to protect those he cares for. A young man who feels a massive Like Tom Holland, who's willing to... <sighs> Whatever. We're almost at the end. <laughs> Hopefully there's a new man, I don't know. Ability, ...because bad things will always happen, and they will happen because of you. 
Will he regress again? Will why? The why can't you just have a always... Spider-Man who has the powers? Who's just like, no, no tragedies here. I, everyone's doing fine. <laughs> that's you know, Spider-Man, right? That's fucking. I just, you know, I understand. What? Why? Why can't you have a Spider-Man who has a really fortunate life and he feels that he needs to ex his thankfulness for how good his life is? He channels that into doing good for other people. It's like I want other people to be. Nah, fuck it, no, that wouldn't be Spider-Man. Spider-Man has to fucking watch his uncle die. In his arms, preferably painfully. The blood drenched awfully. in his clothing. And then his multiverse uncles all die too. <laughs> the Uncle Ben's all <laughs> arrive, just get gunned down. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 Peter, dun, but dun, if you dun, send dun, me dun, back, I'll get gunned down. Good. <laughs> I will learn Good. from this. I will relish your death. I will drink your blood be destined to repeat this to relearn to need to be reborn or was having two veterans two older brothers who have been through it all finally enough to show this peter parker to i thought he wasn't us. allowed to have help i thought he, I I thought he wasn't to show led. this we, to show us. we yeah. knew this would happen i'm pretty sure we called this in a really early efab we were like yes he will have help from the other spider-man but I think people will forgive that because they're Spider-Man. Like, they're Spider-Man, not other now, people from different remember, series. Remember, he personally took down Vulture. He personally took down Mysterio. He did not personally take down all the villains in this film. And do you know which two of the three are called the ones where he had to get help? Yeah. Isn't that fucking fascinating? That grief. That loss is an Yep, there it is. Look, the formula. Yep, that, that, that. Truth, that. And the synonyms. Yep. Great power comes from the willingness to carry on, to empathize, to share yep, there the it selflessness is. and the Again. love we are shown. He just wants to watch the Raimi movies it's just, on repeat. It's just pretentious horseshit, yeah. Even if that love is too often, too easily ripped oh my God. away from us. Oh, what if your love isn't ripped away from you? What if you have a healthy relationship with someone... <laughs> Yeah, he's no, just a superhero who dresses like Spider-Man does, calls himself Spider-Man, just saves people because he's always felt that that's important. And he takes care of himself, he looks after his identity, and he doesn't want to get anyone involved in his life through this for the sake of they could be in trouble. And High Top's like, well, did his uncle die? Like, no. His uncle's actually fine. Uh, he's a he's a good, like, age 40. He's he's a th athletic. You know, he's he's doing okay. He's like, well, that sounds like shit. Yes, it's over. <laughs> Yay. That was crap. That was crap. It was kind of basically exactly what you would expect. Yeah, I'm not surprised. MCU shit, but not for the same, like, just just the standard ro rolling out those criticisms. But then it was really good when the ones that I liked showed up. He didn't talk about much at all. I was actually pretty substanceless, honestly, for like a 60-minute yeah. video. Even by his standards, it's, he didn't say much. He mainly just wanted to rant about how upset- I think he's just bitter that he got what he wanted, but that it's still MCU Spider-Man, and he's still so MCU. used to being anti-MCU Spider-Man. And in a certain sense, it almost validates everything they did up until that point. It's like, well, wait, that would mean I was completely right. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm much more willing to believe that's the case. Um... And I don't think it was conscious. I think it's like just some, you know, like I, I doubt it was like. Oh, he fuck. barely like, talked about shit. the <laughs> meaning of like all the different things that happened in the movie. Um, this is the thing when Aunt May says, "With great power comes great responsibility." Didn't we, didn't we talk about that for a while? About what's being referenced here? Why she's saying it? When she's saying it? What it means to him? Why his response is, "I know." Um, mm -hmm. like there's so much happening, and he was just like, "Yeah, they did Uncle Ben's part." <laughs> it's like what. Why do you see everything this way? What's wrong with you? Um... So... I guess... I don't know if we can fit Brown Table in, can we? Yeah, we're at that awkward point, aren't we? <laughs> now, chat, I'm not giving it to you, because I already know you're all going to say yes. Alright, don't lie to me, but... Um... What, what, do, you, what, 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 do, you, what do you reckon, folks? Um... Shall we just move on to that's too chung chungus coverage already? I'm, I'm okay to move on. 
The only but thing about I it will is leave it up I don't want to cover you. this video in any other, like, I don't want to do another EFAP where we do... Right, this will be it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like it's going to be a lot of the same stuff, you know? Like, we've got, we got a good... Okay, well, then, what about the deal if we only do it if we will pause at him making an argument that Hightop's already made and be like, this was covered, so we'll just keep going? That's yeah, we can try to be expedient, yeah. I suppose. Well, just let's not. If he says anything that High Top said, which is very likely, we'll simply move on from it. Okay. Give us Brown yeah. Table. All right, give us Brown <laughs> Table. It's the first time anyone's ever. I wonder how his anime's coming along. Oh, there you go. You oh, my god. oh my god! Oh my gosh! Ooh. Oh, I, I had no idea. Dude, that's... Interstellar Ranger Kaminsko Teenage Sushi Happy Happy or whatever the fuck it's, it's called. We're, we're, I can't wait. How exciting. <laughs> we're getting close. It's coming out soon. Spider-Man No Way Home should just be renamed into Spider-Man No Way. No way because the movie oh! for at least one day managed to unite all of Spider-Man Twitter and was able to make Spider-Man fan- Probably didn't. <laughs> that's probably still funny. It, we yeah. just watched, yeah. Fans universally happy. Spider-Man No Way because the movie was able to accomplish what I've been begging for for years. A Spider-Man movie with genuine st uh, Yeah, there it is. Genuine uh, stakes. We genuine this. stakes. We if it's not the about this. Yep, if it's not the multiverse collapsing in on reality as we know it, fuck it! It's not genuine stakes. Stakes. No way because as I walked out of the theater- Oh. Oh, that's so sad. God, he thinks that's he's so super fucking like, sad. Oh, he's got a swagger. He loves it. <laughs> you're so sad. It's this okay. he's I can t I totally it's believe okay. you're making an anime. Okay. He's gonna be fine. It's okay. i he, no, he's not gonna be fine. He he needs it, Rags. He needs it. He, he wears this it. to movies and oh my goodness gracious. He needs oh it. Oh my goodness. I kept going to myself, no way. No Way Home fixed MCU Spider-Man for me. No! I used one of Spider-Man's worst <laughs> stories to do it, which is honestly very commendable. And what's amazing- Wait, it's a bad story adapted well? I must make it bad. Oh, no, it was oh, adapted bad? poorly. No, wait, sorry, adapted poorly to be good, it was, that makes yeah. it bad. Oh god, it's so confusing. To see is that everyone I've seen has enjoyed the ending. In fact, they loved it. Other than some MCU fans that want to see their cinnamon roll, Peter Parker be happy all the time, you know? Do, wait, do, god wait, forbid! Wait, wait. Because that's a terrible thing. Well, that's yeah, shit. First of all, who's been saying, like, I hated the ending because I wanted him to be happy? And second of all, what is wrong with wanting your characters to be happy? I Fucking hell, do not, to be happy. do not make the people who want their characters to be happy the weird ones. You guys are the weird ones, where you're like, I want him to suffer. Yeah. That's the weird position. This Last Jedi bullshit. <laughs> Everything has to be some deconstructivist. Characters have to be miserable and upset. No one can be happy and... Ugh. You know, it was cool to see an MCU Spider-Man movie finally have a sad ending. <laughs> it's a, no, I, okay. Yeah, okay. I, Why? <laughs> do, you, do you just want misery? <laughs> it comes across that way. All right, it's weird. It's doubly weird when you think about him wearing the outfit to the theater and you're like, yeah, this person <laughs> whose costume I'm wearing, I want him to be miserable. Finally, sadness. That's weird. <laughs> okay, all right. One more melancholic than happy, but hopeful all the same. And there are multiple ways No Way Home alters the Peter Parker character, and the story works as- mm, we'll see about that. I'm not sure about that. Alters his character? I might- I might concede, depends how he argues it. It's a massive retcon in such a smooth way that I feel the audience hasn't realized It's not a that retcon. Happened. It's not a retcon. It's fucking hell, it's not a- like- We've seen some retcons in our time from watching media. This ain't it. You see, I don't think No Way Home was the plan for MCU Spider-Man from his first appearance. And I don't care if it was the plan, so, if it was done well. Well, it's, it's complicated, right? Because if, if we made those films, and then I go, yeah, actually, from Homecoming, we'd intended that um, the climax of the third film in his trilogy would be losing someone incredibly important and for everything to be solidified in terms of the messaging for responsibility. Uh, but the first two were going to regard like lessons along the way and losses that were less significant. Um, does that count as a plan, or does it not, because of all the things, you know, say for example we get to the third one, they're like, okay, we want you to put Toby in it, find a way. Like, see, you couldn't have planned this. And it's like, well, but my plan was there, it just doesn't necessarily include whether or not Toby is there, or other items that get changed along the way. Pretty sure this was planned, in the sense of giving him the trilogy, and for what it was going to mean for his character, hence why myself, 
uh, Fringy, I'd say Rags as well, and Jay have all been talking about where this is going and how clear it is where this is going, and then it went there. Um, seems like something that was planned at the beginning. We've been saying that, I think, since even um, Far From Home was like a trailer. It was, it was like, oh, we, we're, we're doing this, 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 and we've been saying we want the college years and then even the um, post-college years, potentially. If, Civil... if you had told me that this was, like, a broad plan, sure. I do, do I think that it was, um, like, this is how they wanted to sort of get this story all wrapped up? Probably not, no. Yeah, I, I, I'm willing to agree that it wasn't, it doesn't look the way that they'd always intended from the beginning, but I don't know that they'd had no, this comes across as a trilogy with a plan compared to something like Star Wars. Realized that it happened. You see, I don't think No Way Home was the plan for MCU Spider-Man from his first appearance in Civil War, and I think people should stop acting like it is. I think Disney Marvel well, are people did, acting like, like, like. What do you mean Civil in War, this I, way? Or I'd I'd agree. I don't think it was planned from Civil War because he's in it for like fucking two minutes. I, uh, he's just introduced. But when they built up Homecoming, they were probably like, "How do we?" I don't. Also, what, what does it matter at that point? Because I'm starting to think, like, I don't think Civil War was planned when they made Iron Man. It's like, okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, plans are a potential means to an end, and you don't need a plan. They're often very, very, very helpful, and a lot of people just need them. But you can, you don't need a plan. Well, was Spider-Man 3 planned when they made Spider-Man 1? Probably not. So, and now I, I need to know not. why this is a flaw, because I'm confused. Also, hi, Fringy. Uh... Yeah. I will roll this back I so that you can hear it and get outraged. ...is a massive retcon in such a smooth way that I feel the audience hasn't care. realized oh. that it happened. You see, I don't think Man. No Way Home was the plan for MCU Spider-Man from his first appearance in Civil War, and I think people should stop acting like it is. I think Disney, Marvel, and Sony I, I, took a cal- I, I feel like more people are acting like it isn't than it is. Absolutely. That's I how I feel. I would never cite Civil War was where they planned everything up to No Way Home. I'd be like, no, I can believe that I Homecoming it, but... was around where they were like, right, what's the broad story going to be across his films? And yes. Yeah, you can have the broad story figured out without knowing exactly, like, which... The problem is it's going to be really difficult to do that when you're part of the MCU, and there's a lot of stuff that's just out of your control. Mm -hmm. By the way, you know, when... especially in a, in a post-Star Wars sequel world, mm -hmm. I can totally believe that they're going to be a bit more particular about all right so like actual general idea that we're going for yeah, here like, let's at least know did, broadly where we want to end up when did homecoming come out 2017 2017 like that was, that was TLJ, before tlj yeah so well yeah but the ending and the the course corrections that could possibly be well, my done suggestion is just that they were doing it right to begin with they didn't learn from the shittiness of the sequels but uh i'm sure many will you know planning yeah mm -hmm calculated risk and it paid off fully and i'm very excited to talk about it but first let's talk about today's sponsor yeah. shake <laughs> oh uh, shake Ooh, shake food. Spoon. all right wait are you old enough That's to drink one. i think he's is brown table old enough to drink that's actually a good question because it's 21 in america right yeah. absolutely it's 21 uh, in america he's 18 over here but i guess yeah he's older than 18 but i don't know if he's older than 21 Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription box that delivers the craft cocktail experience right to your front door. Each monthly box arrives with three original recipes created by world-class bartenders that you can't- I guess he- well he- that- wait, that's cold brew. He's- he's making tea right now. Oh wait, is it non-alcoholic? Well, he said bartenders, so I assume... But Get maybe they do else. tea as well, as well and so as he's doing tea. Ingredients, syrups, bitters, aromatics, garnishes, and more for 12 cocktails. Four from each recipe. Is this recipe. him doing With it? Shaker I think so. I can't tell. Maybe it's a video they provide you. And Spoon, you no longer need to seek it, out yeah, hard to find cocktail ingredients or buy full size bottles of things you'll end up only using. Oh, no, it is. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah, it Look is at him. you! He's using the product he's shilling for! Well, yeah, Good I, for I you, mean, brown so, table. So, so far, this ad's perfectly fine. In fact, this, this seems oh, like my a good God. service. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'd be embarrassed to wear that, but I'm good for you. You're using the what's product. Wrong what's wrong with the jacket? It it is a horrific color. I think it's totally fine. We we're uh, the show's over. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying it's a, it's a good thing that some of you guys are all right on the movie stuff because I just don't know what I'd do. I don't know what I'd do. 
Look, fashion isn't my forte, all right? I just sit oh, I know, I know. Greek, I like, knew he'd say play that. doctor little thing, and yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I, I am legitimately happy that, it, I mean, it should be the, the norm, right? But I am legitimately happy that Brown Table has the good scent. He went through, he didn't just play the B-roll that they give you in the emails. He actually he did it filmed all. himself using the product. It is a bit of effort, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. This is a super convenient alternative. Not just that, Shaker and Spoon introduces you to spirits and flavor combinations you may never have discovered otherwise. These dope complex drinks are made simple. With easy dope to follow instructions drinks. and how-to videos, you can learn- I'm, I'm happy for them to be called complex compared to your normal drinks, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. It's got a banana on it. Yeah. Interesting. New techniques while creating excellent craft cocktails. Damn. He made it! That's actually really good. Try it. So click the link below and use code BROWNTABLE at checkout, or yeah, go to Shaker. Yeah, that's not bad. That's, yeah, that's, that's Alrighty, yeah. not bad. Yeah, Probably the best right, ad we've table. seen on you, <laughs> Yeah, you, that, is an, that is an acceptable it's, ad. Yeah. That is an acceptable ad, absolutely. Spoon.com slash BROWNTABLE for $20 off your first box. I mean, look at these. These slap. I've always wanted more variety, and this just these helps slap. a ton. So that's ShakerAndSpoon.com slash BROWNTABLE, or just click the link below and use code BROWNTABLE for $20 off your there first you box. Thanks so much, Shaker and Spoon, for sponsoring today's video. Did he wait? Did he say this video wouldn't have been possible without them? I don't think he did. This video wouldn't yeah. have been possible without alcohol. <laughs> no Way Home is really interesting. I've had a ton of discussions with fellow YouTube creators on what it all means. Looking back on Civil War, it seems like Uncle Ben has existed. And no, the first fucking thing. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, the first fucking thing. I want to beat Uncle, Uncle Ben. Fucking like a Ben. Kidyatta at this point. <laughs> Fuck you. Maybe I want to see him die more. That events occurred that instilled a responsibility on Peter, but in the film No Way Home, it seems like he hears with great power comes great responsibility for the first time. Even though he says, and I quote, I know, he so? seems to... Well, that's even more meaningful than him hearing it, is him I'm more interested it. in what point he wants to make regarding this. I don't know if it's the first or last, whatever time he's heard, the first time he's heard it or not. Um... Uh, the the point can be made in many ways, as is done when we first meet him. Mm -hmm. Response to it in a way that means he understands what. Ooh, what's this? Summers then touched on two of the biggest scenes in Spider-Man: No Way Home, where the three Peter Parkers meet for the first time on the rooftop of the school, and the heartbreaking scene where May is killed. As the story started to develop, and as we got to the scene with May, we realized this is going to be Peter's uncle Ben, and the wounds are going to come out. For the scene on the rooftop where the three Peters met, we felt pretty strongly that we need something to really finally crystallize it for these three guys, that they are the same, that they are brothers, and they are bound in a cosmic way by something, and having them share those words in a common, in common seemed like the thing to do. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that all lines up. What May's telling him? It's not like he's actually heard the line before. Plus, I think it was never John Watts' intention to have the line be said by Uncle Ben. Hell, Happy says it in a throwaway line in a deleted scene from Homecoming. So. According to the film's writer, Spider-Man Homecoming originally housed the series' most famous line. John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein opened up to Yahoo movies about the changes they made to the film's script, and the pair admitted one unlikely character nodded to the iconic Spider-Man quote. At the end, when Happy is in the boys' room in school, we had him say, Oh yeah, Tony wanted me to tell you, with great power comes something I forgot. Goldstein said before adding, it was a little too meta. Yeah, that's, that's a probably a good decision. Yeah, I think that was a good yeah, decision. Yeah, I think so. Get rid of that. Oh, imagine all the whinging they, that we would have heard. Well, people would have hated it. Well, personally, personally, I, I wouldn't have liked it. it. They don't need it. I wouldn't yeah. have liked it either, yeah. Yeah, good good, good choice. But could you imagine how mad everyone oh, would have been? very mad, yeah. Almost makes it worth it. Well, how I take away Peter and Spider-Man in general in No Way Home is that your home trilogy is his origin story. His origin yep. journey is yep. finally completed. Oh, but Mauricio, yes. he literally became Spider-Man at the end of Homecoming. Shut That's, okay, but so we're going to have to get to the point then of talking about what does it mean to be a Spider-Man and what does it and mean when, when there's... stop growing. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does it mean when the there's several stages? The answer is stages? generally was... dead uncles and a phrase. Was Toby? It's Maguire... like a, it's like it's a magic spell. The blood of an uncle, the spe the incantation phrase, and you have <laughs> woof. You are now <laughs> Spider-Man, Alakazam. Let's make this a little bit more complicated for like high table. Fuck, <laughs> whatever. The it's, it's like did he become Spider-Man in Spider-Man One? Raimi two or three, and if it was one, did he learn nothing in two and three? 
And if, yeah, basically there is no way to answer this that you can then argue against Tom, like, the then, trilogy here. Well, so I think the next step for the people who are listening who very much fucking hate our takes on Spider-Man would be he learned different things in Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. Well, I would argue he learned with great power comes great responsibility in all three of them, just variations. In different ways. Which is what I'm pretty sure he it's doesn't tell It's not that easy. It's yeah. not that simple. Well, there's loads that comes with it. Like, for example, let's, let's just be honest, the last you teach your kids... Be good. It's like, okay, now we're gonna have to unpack that. <laughs> because there's a lot well, yeah, that comes with it. What does great power comes with uh, great responsibility mean in the context of a world where there are a bunch of other heroes? Does that mean that you need to help all the time and like try and basically like and it can be you become misguided, like I wanna be a hero and I want people to know I'm a hero. Where does great power and great responsibility factor into what I need to know about that? And then when I get really shaken up and I'm freaked out and I think I'm not competent enough, what does that mean to me, this phrase? Yeah. And what does it mean now when I'm dealing with people who, you know, I have the capacity to save them, but then it costs me something significant? It's a good lesson, but different circumstances might reveal blind spots that Which you need to account for. Homecoming and Far From Home is about a Far From Home. He thought he was taking great responsibility by providing the glasses to uh, Mysterio. Yeah. Shut the fuck up! Shut up! Okay. <laughs> the messy plot of Far From Home like... indicates that he's still learning to be Spider-Man. I feel like it's been more about becoming yeah? a hero and calling himself Spider-Man than him actually becoming the Spider-Man we know and love. He doesn't really we don't, fully what? comprehend- What? No, I'm, I'm, we- I, I'm not sure what he Toby said Mag there. So he has to be- I swear it's just like we have to- it has to be Tobey Maguire. He has to be Andrew Garfield. That's just the vibe I get. All the time, which, which is, is sort weird. of thing, because they always link it back. It is it's retroactive ad adoration for the storytelling choices of the Tasm films when they they garbage. <laughs> Those movies are really bad. The messy plot of Far From Home indicates that he's still learning to be Spider-Man. I feel like it's been more about becoming a hero and calling himself Spider-Man than him actually Spider becoming the Spider-Man we know and love. He doesn't really fully comprehend what being Spider-Man means, and by the end because of Because he is Spider-Man, he's the only Spider-Man that exists say, in his world. He has Spider -Man no yeah. means matter. What yeah. he is determines what Spider-Man means in that universe. Like, whatever he is at the time, because he is Spider-Man. Like, it's such a bizarre meta thing. Yeah. Like, you see, Peter in this universe doesn't understand what it means to be Spider-Man. Imagine he came through a portal and said that. He'd be like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Home, he does. Because, you know, he literally loses everyone he loves in this movie, and I fucking love that. Listen, <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'm sure I just you like love that we'd be honest I think it's, about that. Yeah, let's just be honest. Yeah. Whereas I'm like, I think that's really tragic and I feel really bad for him that that had to happen. And, uh, you know, the, the part of me wishes there's another way for his sake. But I mean, it all makes sense. It all slots together. It all wraps when, up an arc. It all. When all of his family um, members are getting executed and Peter's just being beaten over and over again, Brown Table has the people glad face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, hmm. Listen, listen, listen. Whenever Peter Parker is sad, I am happy. Let me bask in his misery. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you fucking psychopath. Yeah, he's direct with that. But yeah, he's, uh, honesty is the best policy, okay? Anyway, Peter and the MCU gets his powers and his original message off screen. Surely it'll be covered in the freshman year animated series, but his full journey into becoming the traditional Spider-Man has come to a close. Agreed. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Another cue for me realizing this movie was meant to close Spider-Man's origin story was Peter following, as Goblin calls it, Aunt May's moral mission. He has to save these villains, right? But it's not something that really comes from him. It's something May teaches him. At Peter's lowest point in the film, he understandably doesn't give a shit about the villains anymore and doesn't care if they die. And Spider-Man shouldn't be like this. Spider-Man should care. That's the point of the story, by the way. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. And this is where the Spider-Man Spider-Man show up. Dude. Toby? Andrew? My biggest thought wasn't, oh my god, I'm gonna come all over my seat, what will I- <laughs> Not a lot for us to disagree with right now. <laughs> it's, it's, okay, okay. I do. My biggest thought was, dude, if this movie ruins them and writes them all out of character, I will hate this movie for the rest of my life. Thankfully, seeing them on screen is absolute magic. Like its villains, the movie handles the characters to perfection. Ooh, he thinks they were handled to perfection? Talk to Hightop about Lizard. Mm, boy. <laughs> right, yeah, and tell him how to do a fucking ad. Yeah, well, 
Can we? No. Brown Table's got the best of the three so far, easily. Easily. Yeah. Not even close. Good, good job, Brown Table. Kill Crown. Good job. Except for the lizard Brown table. What they did to my oh, brain. no. <laughs> no. Oh, man. It's, <laughs> it's we're really revoking your crown. Him. We're taking it he back. You can still have the crown, but we were just wrong. He thought the lizard would suck. It's a Burger King crown that you get. Yes. It's one of those paper ones. It's not, yeah. So it. no way. Brown Table is a Happy Meal kind of guy. So can... Did he at least say the reason? Except for the lizard. I hate what they did to my boy. So no way home. Did, but no, we're just moving on. Yeah. I I do on. not know what the problem is for lizard. I don't understand what happened. Chat, can you help out? What's what's the big fuck up they did with lizard's character? Could have actually worked without the Spider-Man, but thankfully it includes them and makes them necessary to the story. Sure, it's fan service. I guess I'll throw that on screen, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not just brown table, though. <laughs> it's like thousands it isn't of just people. brown table. But it isn't just fluff. These are real people with real events that have happened to them way prior to No Way Home, and the film treats these events with sincerity. These Spider Men have gone through a. Sincerity. Hmm. Sincerity. Him and Hightop have been talking. Tom Peter is going through uh -oh. and they instill in him their wisdom. It's this funny but endearing visual of seeing Peter Parker lift himself back up and I think that's brilliant. So you have the OGs. They talk to Tom okay. about their failures, their struggles. He's talking about the movie, it's crazy. The actual writing, the events that happened. They've lost okay. people, and in their anger, in their lust for righting what's been wronged, they lost themselves. Andrew is still going through the works, having become a more violent Spider-Man. Meanwhile, Toby has been able to get through his dark side successfully. Both know what it means to want to kill, to want revenge. It's about telling Tom Peter that wanting to kill Green Goblin is valid, but killing him is wrong. With great power, there must also come great responsibility. And so with May's passing... Thing. This is, this is pretty much, this is fine. I'm sorry, there's just nothing for me to s complain about, but uh... There's also nothing for me to really- I mean, it could be more detailed, but it's, it's, the point is clear. ...and the Spider-Man helping Tom come back to his senses, traditional Spider-Man takes his first steps. It's an interesting take on the origin story, I don't care if it's traditional, I just don't care. No, we never have, never will. It's... But fine. An interesting take on the origin story, but MCU Spider-Man is such a wildly different take on the character that I'm okay with how this bit was handled. Don't doubt it's wildly different compared to what we understand to be Spider-Man. I've seen plenty of people say that he's perfectly in line, but uh... Fine. Seeing Tom Peter getting along with the other Spider-Man and them actually liking each other was a great change of pace. I feel like usually if people would write this kind of thing where alternate versions of the same character met up, they'd all dislike each other, or not particularly like each yeah, other's I'm company, glad they didn't they'd do that. come together. This isn't a good citation though, because uh, this is when the Loki staff is fucking with everybody. It's not just they hate each other arbitrarily. Um, from like the writer's POV or something, it's that they've got actual influence on them. But I, I agree with him broadly that it was nice to see them just chill out and be friendly and stuff. Together by the end of the yeah. story or something like that, kind of like the Avengers. And thankfully, that's not the case here. The Spider-Men have this sibling dynamic that absolutely works, and it's so fun to see. Them heading off to defeat and cure their villains was honestly really wholesome. And I quite enjoyed that they weren't going off to just beat their asses and call it a day. It's a good Spider-Man story, a classic Spider-Man conundrum, right? And so, we reach the finale. The Spider-Men get their moments, and Tom Peter almost kills the Green Goblin before being stopped by himself. Well, Toby Peter, but you get what I mean. And it's an interesting way of seeing it. Quite possibly the purest Spider-Man. One who's been at it for so long, now older and wiser. One who's been where Tom is now. It is funny to me to refer to him as the purest Spider-Man. Like, they mm. really do see him on, like, a throne when it comes to Spider-Man content. Stopping him mm -hmm. before he does something he regrets. It's as if what Spider-Man is meant to be is physically stopping Tom from killing the Goblin. This is also great for Toby's arc. His arc in this film is about curing the Goblin and letting him live. So that's cool. And all this allows Tom Peter to continue his journey towards becoming the Spider-Man we know he's meant to be. By the way, seeing Tom actually angry and sticking a pumpkin bomb in Goblin's glider, his face showing that he's fully willing to kill him. Now that is Spider-Man. It's great to see the- Is that Spider-Man? I, I had no fucking clue that's how he was ending that sentence. That's I thought he was going to talk about- that's, 
I so that's the question. What is Spider Man? <laughs> I thought he was going to talk about how great Maybe. the performance was, or how he felt like that was like a peak engagement, but saying like that is peak Spider-Man, it's like, oh. Um, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't either. Like, it's all, what is Spider-Man to these people? It's just like, mm -hmm. dead uncle's magic words and bombs and gliders. His chat seemed to be pretty bewildered about it, too. I... I I don't know. I, I okay. The angry side of Peter Parker, the side of him that's just full of rage and regret. It's his suppressing of that side of him that makes Peter Parker's stories so enjoyable too. And afterwards, enemies of Spider-Man that know his identity are coming through, and Doctor Strange can't stop them from coming into their dimension. And I didn't think they'd go to this extreme, but Peter decides to have the world forget his whole ass existence. And so now, nobody knows Peter's Spider-Man, because Peter doesn't exist. And to me, this is a banger idea. Because like in the comics, right? In the comics, Peter unmasks himself to the world, and it fucks up his life to the point that Aunt May gets capped. Oh, time isn't gonna kill this lady? This bullet will bang! Outta here, dude. So Peter- <laughs> Yo, you're so excited! <laughs> Whenever really somebody loves dies, we have a, we have an image of Aunt yes, May crying as she's been shot, and Peter screaming no, and it's just like, <laughs> Brad yeah. Taylor's like, kill yes. that woman. Thank fuck, someone died. Peter makes a deal with the literal devil to save Aunt May's life, but well, it costs him his marriage, and by that I don't mean time stays the same and his marriage is just destroyed. No. This also makes literal years of Spider-Man stories null and void. It sends him back to when he was way younger and Harry Osborn was still alive, etc. It was a lot. The issue here isn't that Peter lost, because Peter losing is fundamental to a Spider-Man story. <laughs> uh, what? Just, why qualify that statement? I just don't get it. Peter losing it's fundamental. Is fundamental. You can't have a happy, successful Spider-Man who has no tragedies in his life. Even, even temporarily, like what movies with? That's you, you fucked it. No. I mean, Tobey Maguire's Spider Man didn't uh, like face a tragedy in this film. No way home. He was just helping out another Spider Man. I guess you could say he got stabbed. Mm -hmm. But he's been stabbed yeah, before. He stays. <laughs> what was his personal tragedy in two? Uh. Um, I guess. Or the, I okay. guess, that he just decided to choose one life or the other, all that stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't... I'm not entirely sure. Maybe the, the uncle, uncle, dunkle, dead uncle is, is counted just for the counts trilogy. counts the whole series, yeah. yeah. It's that the character of Spider-Man has lost so many years of stories. Because it's essentially a retcon. No character remembers anything, it's like they never happened. With No Way Home, it's a similar idea. Peter loses, everyone forgets him, but Spider-Man still exists. His stories live on not only through the public, but through Peter. And Peter himself knows everything he's gone through. And as he's the main character, this isn't a regression for the Spider-Man character. If anything, it's a push forward. Because now he doesn't have all this baggage Right now, he can be the purest Spider-Man. Mm. Purest. Purest. Wow, you were, you were on the right track, but then you said that, and it's like, ah, uh, you've tainted it a little bit. It, it's funny how we, like, that's so clearly happened. We're all, like, running his code. It's all going pretty well. Then he said the word yeah. pure, and all of us went, <laughs> like, the, the code's fucked. Wait, What's what? Happened? Yeah, it's just, pure. like, blue screened. Ah, uh, <laughs> fuck. What do you mean <laughs> you're you're so pure? It's one of those things can... where you know what you mean by that when you say it, but you need to understand other people when they hear you say that. They could come away with many interpretations, and they might just be confused. It's an odd thing to say. Yeah, I, it's not that it's definitively invalid. I want to know what he means by purist. Can yeah. Freed from the shackles of Tony Stark. Take freed from the shackles of Tony Stark. The fuck does that mean? He was imprisoned by him emotionally or some shit. I don't know. I, he must be talking about the meta. He doesn't want Iron Man to have anything to do with Spider-Man. That's got to be it. Right now, he can be the purest Spider-Man he can be. Freed from the shackles of Tony Stark, taking his Aunt May's message with him. And now finally what? understanding that he Freed has to keep his... the shackles of Tony Stark. I don't get the, it. The yeah. guy who took stuff away from him. 
identity a secret to protect the ones he loves. Look, seeing the ending unfold was actual bliss. I guessed the ending somewhat and I actually cheered in the theater because I got it so on point. I actually got the dialogue extremely close to the final result. Actually, I I'm here because... I'm here because I... <sighs> I've, I've actually been meaning to try the new pumpkin spice flavor. I've never... This is cringe. I've never had it's that. So, he loves Spider-Man. This is... Wait, wanna... so he, he actually, like, did an animation where he predicted, like, very close to what the ending was. Apparently. Oh, is that what's happening? Yeah. I, oh, right. Yeah, so okay, I... Because I, I remember a thing where it was, like, a thing that was animated like this, where was, he was, wanted to kill Goblin, and then Toby's like, nah, don't do it. Um... I do, this feels like way more. Wow, that's actually really close. Except obviously, yeah, that's pretty. You know, yeah. I prefer the dialogue in the movie, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I love the coffee shop scene. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie because Peter struggles. He can see what he wants. Yes, I know he, he struggles. He loves that shit. Uh, yeah. I bet it. I bet it hurt. I bet it's pain too. <laughs> And that's peak Spider-Man, and I'm so happy that this is the ending they chose. I've seen people on Twitter say stuff like, Hey, don't say that No Way Home fixed MCU spider Also, in, to be fair, by the way, because I was just thinking about it, it's like, pretty sure we've all talked extensively on EFAB about how erasing everyone's memory of him is something they could do. Um, and that Doctor Strange is always going to be an option for that. And then as soon as the trailers came out, I was like, hmm, we could definitely have that as a potential now. I've seen people on Twitter say stuff like, Hey, don't say that No Way Home fixed MCU Spider-Man, because this was the plan all along. It wasn't. No, that you could have a you could have a plan but still require fixing. Or what you if can, John Watts told you it was? And you can also have a plan <laughs> for like broad strokes. We know this. Yep. The same like if he's about to say something like, Oh, you know, it couldn't have been the plan because it couldn't have accounted for Marvel Andrew Marvel. Garfield being yeah. in it or something, I'd be like, that's not that's not the point. It's already been said that there was an alternate ending where Peter allows his identity to remain public. We all know Kevin Feige thought- Yeah, it's not- having an option on the table does not mean that you didn't plan anything. Yeah. That's stupid. Wait, we, we literally all know what a plan B is. I, I was about to say, like, actually yeah. that's more indicative of a plan, that you have two endings. That you have a plan B. The fact that there is a plan B means there was a plan A. Yeah. Thought secret identity were overplayed or you're just and decided pessimist. to- just Never have secret identities in the MCU ever. And we all know that Tom Holland fought for some of the ending of No Way Home to be what it ended up being. Plus, No Way Home- Yeah, but he's been there the whole time. It might have been a plan that he and John have talked about many times. That doesn't yeah. make it not a plan. Was at one point a Craven story. So yeah. how would a story like that even have a multi- That's also a plan. <laughs> like, That's also what the a plan. Fuck? Just because Craven's the bad guy- Do you know what, a, you know what that guy, word means? I just don't understand why he's saying these as if they're references to how there isn't a plan. References to how there isn't a plan for Star Wars is Ryan Johnson saying he had no notes, Daisy Ridley saying there were notes, he just didn't read them, and then Colin Trevorrow having, like, all these plans for Rise of Skywalker as if he was going to do it that are, like, starkly different than anything we can recognize from how the sequels look right now. Then I'm pretty sure J.J. and Colin wanted to have Luke be a hero, not be the disastrous mess. Like, these are all pretty strong evidence of how there's absolutely no fucking sense of a plan going on. Um, because what we got isn't, like, alien compared to what apparently was planned. So there was no plan, actually, to do anything. Well, that's what they said explicitly, that there was no plan. Meanwhile, if Craven were in the film and he was the villain, you can still keep all of the beats. And if you're yeah. like, well, no, because multiverse, like, dude, we're not, like, th those are just the plot details, we can move everything around. Multiversal collapse and the erasure of an identity. I don't know. All I know is that this was not the planned endgame for the Spider-Man characters for- Wait, sorry, did he actually okay. just cite the multiverse as an example of how it can't have been planned? Because we've always had Doctor Strange. A story like that even have a multiversal collapse and the erasure of- an Yeah, Doctor Strange could be in the Kraven story. It doesn't necessarily story. have that, but it could. Yeah. Well, but he's been, not even right. His what if Kraven's from a different universe? We could always have but had also, the multiverse always been on the multiverse, table. Because yeah. Doctor Strange, yeah. An identity. I don't know. All I know is that this was not the planned endgame for the Spider-Man character's first trilogy. But I'm happy it is, because instead of being Iron Man's successor, instead of being a part of the Avengers or the Young Avengers- Which we've decided are terrible things. We can't have either of those things. Or whatever. He's back to being what the character is supposed- Supposed to be. Supposed to be. Should be. Supposed to be. If he's anything else that's wrong, he has to be this thing. 
Don't fuck it up, Especially everybody. Especially when a character is essentially a set of superpowers. Yeah. ...to be a man that is... The irony being that there's changes that are significant from even Tasm to Raimi, but we're, apparently both of them are correct. ...broke, working hard in both his job and education, and regardless of his emotional state, he has to go swing out into the city as Spider-Man <laughs> to protect people and make sure innocents don't go through losses similar to those... Man. Can you guys think of a movie where, regardless of his emotional state, he will go out there and he will save people? Mm. Is there any one of the, mm. the Spider-Man movies where that gets broken explicitly meters away from him? Mm. Mm. <laughs> no, wonder. none come to mind. No. Well, you know what I'll say is, none come to mind, but I know it wouldn't be the Raimi ones. Those he through. The ending of No Way Home reminded me of my favorite the first 30 minutes. I keep going on about this every time I bring Spider-Man 2 up, but listen. Spider-Man 2 is amazing, even when Peter isn't Spider-Man. The mm. dude is just go- Even when Peter isn't Spider-Man. Like, you would hope so. <laughs> you would fucking want it to be, Jesus. Ugh. Going through it, and we see his life and how shitty it is, he goes to his apartment and just wallows. He's a freaking superhero. But he's a person, just like us. This isn't a Peter Parker who knows a billionaire who's Well, why can't a person have not tragedies? You're right, you people, can't be a there person. Are, most people probably... You can't be a person if you know a billionaire. Most people just don't have tragedies like that. It's just not typical. It's weird that he thinks you have to have these tragedies to, like, be a person. You know a billionaire, you're no just... longer a person. He actually cites knowing a billionaire as, like, evidence of his lack of humanity. How shitty it is, he goes to his apartment Jeez. and just wallows. He's a freaking superhero, but he's a person, just like us. This isn't a Peter Parker who knows a billionaire who has made a suit with fancy Stark technology. Seriously, he- look at the, the way the sentence structure is made. Like, he, he is a person. He's not someone who knows a billionaire. He's not someone who has technology. He's like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure thing. No, this is you're a someone... youtuber. <laughs> like, you're not a person. Over. No, it's rags. It's nearly over. All right, we only got. <laughs> oh wow! Minutes. Yeah, we got through yeah. this one pretty fast. Who struggles with money? Someone who has relationship problems? Someone who has uneasy friendships? And someone who has responsibilities that have to be taken care of, regardless of personal dilemmas? And I wanted. Brown something Table like... thinks the human experience is misery. Oh, responsibility. Pure, undiluted misery. Regardless of personal dilemmas, man, I can't. Mm. Mm. It's almost like Spider Man's more than that that for the first 30 minutes of No Way Home, but we just got a speedrun of Peter's life with his identity revealed, and that's okay, it was fun, but I'm so happy we That's at okay because it was fun? I'm so, it sounded like he was trying to compensate for criticizing it, but I didn't spot the criticism. What was the criticism? That it was a speedrun? A speedrun of his life? It was I mean, too fast? It was a montage when it shouldn't have been? I mean, or but, 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 it's but hard it's, to It's telling tell. the motivation for what's going to become the rest of the film. Like, we didn't spend time on that because that's what this story's about. Like, we got the montage, yeah, of things being shit. Got it at the end. Peter not being able to spend time with his friends and leaving them be. Also, sorry, do we just glad that this film became cinema at the end? Good God. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that it was. I didn't even notice that. Marty Scorsese is so impressed with the ending. So happy we at least got it at the end. Peter not being able to spend time with his friends and leaving them be. Peter visiting May's grave and saying so miserable. <gasps> yes. Yes. He would beat him with a baseball bat over and over again, just feeling great every time. Oh, no one will even <laughs> know the sacrifice he made. Oh yeah. And then Peter moving Harder. into his new apartment, ready to take on the world as Spider-Man. I literally exploded in the theater, like I genuinely you was did not literally exploded. exploded. You in the did theater. literally. You did what not the, do that. What's that one literally means? I literally exploded. Can we stop, please? <laughs> literally exploded. You didn't. Look, let me inform you guys. Sometimes literally can mean not literally. Okay. No, fuck that. <laughs> he had a cosmic cooming. I will We're drag all... this civilization kicking and screaming out of barbarism if I have to, I swear to God! This Spider-Man? I literally exploded in the theater like I genuinely was in mm. awe. I had my hand over my mouth. I was flabbergasted. I couldn't believe it. I can believe this was... 
One Were you literally flabbergasted? Yes. I was in shock. I couldn't believe they pulled off what really? I had wanted for so long. It feels like they actually listened to this part of the fan base that was upset with Far From Home. You fuckers just had no patience. That's all it is. Couldn't wait. Couldn't couldn't watch how he got built up. So you just complained until you finally got the ending of the story, but I'm still glad you're happy, I suppose. ...and the overall direction with the character. Yeah, once Peter opened that door and we got a look at his messed up room, I was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Live in squalor, you piece of shit! I love it! <laughs> he just starts throwing crap into his job. room. Like, just, just poo. You get like, fired. Yeah, it's worse I hope now. it burns down, and then you live in it some more. More oh, suffering. You get cancer. Spider cancer. He looks out the window, mask in hand. He's made a new suit, and it looks classic. The logo is based off the Spider-Man he encountered with a spin of his own, and all of this is probably one of, if not my favorite ending to a Spider-Man movie ever. Because, you know, it feels like an invitation to- It's one of, if not my favorite ending. Yeah, he meant endings, right? Well, you have to do endings, because yeah. it can't be one of your favorite ending. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the problem with that one. Syntax. Well, you know what? We complicated, but you it's know. it's the strongest script probably out of the three. I think it's certainly not movie bobs. World of uh, this script is Thanks, yeah because it has yeah. less of the because the problem with high tops is I am getting real sick of that formulaic. Just have a list of like three or four things and just keep saying them in a very dramatic voice. This, this feels just more authentic to, to me, honestly. Feel. I guess that's what I mean. This important. feels way more authentic to me, despite the fact that the whole point of the shtick with High Top is to be like, look at how authentic in my feelings I am. But like, I don't feel I like I'm being bullshitted here, you know? I completely agree with you. Uh, this is comes across as a fucking video that's just being straightforward. High Top sounded like it was purpose-built to make you emotionally invested. Yeah of his own, and all of this is probably one of, if not my favorite ending to a Spider-Man movie ever. Because, you know, it feels like an invitation to a world of movies I've been wanting to go back to since 2014, when the amazing- Bad Spider-Man movie world? The, oh, golly, golly, golly. Amazing Spider-Man 2 dropped. Now People look, I'm not saying like the movie's perfect and it's sloppy, but that tone, that Peter Parker Spider-Man dichotomy and lifestyle, that's peak. And sure, Homecoming had similar vibes, but it felt very innocent, very chill, and it felt very Avengers-y. What the f- what? what does that mean? I, yeah, I'm just sitting here wondering what these things mean. If that makes sense, so- No! no. <laughs> it doesn't It doesn't. While I love that movie, it's not the same feeling. To me, personally. What? To that doesn't help! <laughs> it was already yeah, that. I'm just conf- Yeah. Don't get your panties in a bunch. And so you got your panties in a bunch of them far from home. How come anyone else can't complain? Yeah, yeah, we can panty our bunches just as much as you can. You bunch can my pants me. as much as I want when you don't make any sense, okay? These panties were made for bunching. And that's just what we'll do. So, with a magical flick of the wrist, Doctor Strange helped Peter change Spider-Man's destiny, reverting the status quo to a pre-MCU Spider-Man, and I have never been happier. I mean, only in the sense of who knows him. He, is, he needs all of his MCU experiences for it to be very meaningful. You can't just, it's not a reset, it's not back to square one. It's everything that he's learned, with no one there to acknowledge that. Except us. Sure, Spider-Man's been with the Avengers, but no one knows who he is or how young he is. Yeah, I'm so, so happy. I just hope Sony and Disney Marvel take advantage of the situation and keep Peter on his own. To me, that's where he thrives. Uh, see, like, on his own? We agree I seriously wonder if reasons. you believe this in 2016, though. I wonder. I really do. Like, if you, when you heard that he was coming into the MCU, you were like, FUCK! Dude, I guarantee you, when High Top was- sorry, High Table, that's what I'm gonna call them. When they uh, watched Spider-Man work with Iron Man and Doctor Strange to and Star-Lord to defeat Thanos, they weren't like, hmm, he's not thriving. He is not uh, thriving here. I doubt it. Not thriving at all. Oof. I hope he has more street-level situations to deal with in his college trilogy, which is 100% happening, by the way. Sorry, Tom. Sony's got your ass, and you're gonna be Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't know. The whole well, idea I mean, is that know, he has more leverage he now than he, he has, did. Yeah. Exactly. It looks like they got your ass. It's like, no, he's got their ass. He gets to decide now, and his agents. Yeah, you also you understand that 
Yeah, like I hope someone gets my ass in the way that they're going to give me millions and millions of dollars and make me a famous celebrity <laughs> oh, no. and you've got my ass. showcase ah. my talents to the world and portray a beloved character. I cannot wait for you. I mean, I certainly hope you do not get my ass. Oh no! I mean, tell your party. But Those hey, if they make good movies and they're under Tom's, as I said, he's partly culpable for the banger ending of the movie. Then partly I think culpable. That's a weird way to say culpable. Like, that yeah. something's good. Culpable for something good. That is an interesting yeah, that's not... way to describe it. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching the video. This is my last video uh, ever for 2021. Nice. That is, in oh. 2022, hopefully there's just as much, if not more, content from mm -hmm. the Brown Table channel. And make sure to check out Interstellar Ranger Commence, an animated yeah. series I'm making. Such a bad day. Please, that's yes. When is it out? When is it out? <laughs> well, it's out in April, right? April, yeah. Oh, out in 2022, perfect. you can check out the trailers now. Thanks so much to everyone that sent fan art. The amount of fan art I've gotten for Interstellar Ranger Commence is insane, and so that just thank you. Like, I got so Isn't much stuff. Like I even got loot stuff. Oh, God, don't even, let's not. You even got loot stuff? stuff. No. If you have any more, no. no. send more. What? That's no. awesome. I'm not even joking. The no. staff loves it. And thank you so much, patrons, no. for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me, you know, especially, you know, during these times, it's rough, so... People you know, make loot stuff of me, but I'm an really adult dog. I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, so thank you so much for supporting the channel in whatever way you can. Much love to everyone. Hope 2022 is better than 2020. Uh, fingers crossed it is. And yeah, thanks so much for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time. Oh. Is that like his outro thing? Thanks for coming to the table. I feel like that's the first time I've ever heard that. To the table. I, don't, I feel like I've never heard it before, yeah. We did. Thanks for coming on all right, the table. Yeah. Yeah. Send me loads right. of my characters. That's the end. Oh. Alright, who's next? That's it, Rag, stop. Oh. That's, yeah, all right. I think that, okay, that's it. All right. We did it. Done. All righty. Well, <laughs> uh, so uh, In what did you guys think of Spider-Man No Way Home? They want Spider-Man to suffer. Suffer, 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 kind suffer, suffer. It's gotten to the point of, of being a little bit cartoonish. Um, I don't know what else to say. A little evil, I guess. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Such a strange environment we're in to talk about these movies sometimes. Y'all feeling like feeling any different on No Way Home after watching them three videos? Oh, it's I, terrible. I, I gotta say, I feel unconvinced. I feel exactly but, uh, the same as I felt before. Good, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know what I've learned. Other than High Top is very begrudgingly admitting he enjoyed it, but he doesn't like to have to admit that. I feel sorry for him because he's kind of gotten the beats that he wants. Uh, Brown Table seems to be more excited because at least he liked Homecoming. And then Movie Bob, what even was Movie Bob saying in his video? Does anyone remember? Um, um yeah, hey, it's the studio stuff. Um, studio, uh, seven out of ten was good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I feel like that's the summary. His was studio, studio, uh, seven out of ten, and then uh, High Tops was. Uh, MCU schlock, but then Raimi and, and Taz and, uh, I, and I like that part, but yeah. And then Brown Tables was like, yeah, I like it, because suffering, yes. I love it. Suffering. Very much pro-suffering. I think that summarizes it. Well, uh, that, that concludes that, that, the, the video reaction. The Spider-Man trilogy. Yeah, and so now we uh, can just move yeah. on, right? <laughs> yes, uh. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't think we'll be doing another one for No Way Home anytime soon. Unless someone releases a particularly hilarious video. I don't know if they will. Mm -hmm. I thought... To be honest, the, brown, the, the high top one was pretty much exactly as bad as I would expect a bad high top video on No Way Home to be. It was pretty much all of... Like, I probably could have written that with what I know about him. Mm -hmm. um, as for Brown... He is indistinguishable from his own parody. Yeah. Um, it is quite amusing to think about. Regardless, uh, we can get we can get on with the soup chats, I suppose. Yay! Uh, if we can get this screen to capture, well, I'll just reboot Dolphin see if that doesn't. But while I'm doing that, I'll just read the first one, which is "Awaken My Masters." <gasps> I'm up. Rags up.
Um, the Joe Parra show is hilarious. It's in HBO Max. That sound familiar? The Joe Parra show. I I'm not familiar that with that. No. There it is. Uh, Lord Longbone of Mirrorslington Abbey, have you given any more thought to a Kong fap when there's less going on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. P.S. Hello, waggly waggly walk, squitches for the good boy. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. And Future hi. will hold a Kong fap of the Long Kong one day together. Um, RLM's video on Matrix 4 was very, very strange. Strange is the yes, way to put it. Yes, it was. Um... I don't think you, you said you didn't even finish it, right? I got like five minutes in and I'm like, nah, nah, this is stupid. It got real weird real fast. Um, it felt like one it of those It got real weird real fast. They like had no fucking clue what the general conversation about that movie was. They'd only gone from what they both individually felt, which it was weird watching it because they both had completely different perspectives and basically only talked about their own perspectives. They barely like talked with each other and uh, both of them came across as fucking nuts a little bit um yeah best, best very worst, very okay? strange that's the worst is top notch great yes half in the bag is a bit yeah. yeah uh new year new dumb essays to watch well i mean we're off to a good start right three already yeah we are yeah Ugh. we got our yeah. own our own little starting off the year with our own little spider-man trilogy yeah uh, which Pokemon do you think is the cutest and would ha you have as a pet? Spiel, Spoink, and Gibble. These are Pokemon. I don't know what they look like. Spiel. Well, let's uh, let's take a look here. Spiel. Can you spell it? Um. S. Uh, P. H. E. A. L. A. Yeah. S. P. H. E. A. L. And the other one is Spoink. S Spoink. All right, let me copy and I'll paste that there. That's Spiel. And then we have Spoink. Ah. Then we have Spoink. That that is that is Spoink. Uh And the other one is Gibble. Gibble? Uh-huh. I'm going with Spiel or Spiel. I think I'm You haven't even seen through. Gibble yet. Uh Rags. I mean, I have it's going to be tough. Wait, what does, what does Gibble look like? Hold on. Oh uh, shit! Actually, uh, it's the first one, Spiel. Uh, oh, ooh. now Can I'm I correct. see what he looks like. Uh, all right, <laughs> sure. I mean, no for okay. me. Okay, here, this is the, that's Gibble. Yeah, Spiel, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, do you think, no Skipper? Contest. Hmm. Uh, spiel. <laughs> I think everyone's going for Spiel. Some will go for Spoink. Uh, Spoink. I, I'm okay with that. Spoink. Spoink. Um, there is a bird, Shoe Bill, where its gimmick oh, oh is it God. sounds like a machine gun, looks like a dinosaur, mm. and is really gentle. It sounds like a machine oh, okay. gun? That's an interesting yeah. one. Well, there are birds that imitate. Yeah. Okay. They're also fucking tall. They're like five feet. Neat. <laughs> Uh, DK64. What was that? I'm sick of seeing cat ears in Halo. Like, god damn, those are like 10 That should not be a sentence that's them. ever uttered. I was gonna say, I was like, no, oh, no. that's a strange thing. Uh, you just keep seeing them. It's really annoying. It's like, things are only ever gonna get worse. <laughs> just in general, and the cat ears are evidence of that. Yeah, a little bit. Um, hi all, especially Rags. Hello. Hi! Alright, you got two out of four, not bad. Any Mega Man fans in the call? Uh, and which Mega no. Man sub-series have y'all played? I'm partial to the Battle Network games myself. I've played very little Mega Man, I'm afraid. Same, yeah. Enjoy. I played, like, one on the Game Boy Advance, and it was alright. It was, like, one where you play as the... I think Zero is his name. Mm-hmm. Um, People like Mega Man Zero a lot, I think. Yeah, I, uh... Mega Man Unlimited is my, might be the one I played. I have talked about it before, but, uh... 
not played much Mega Man in general. I'm pretty sure it's a classic game series for good reason. Uh, uh, DK64 isn't that bad at all. I can't remember who said it was. Was it Das Bullshit? It was Das, yeah. yeah. I haven't played it, really, so... <laughs> I do not know. Uh, thoughts on RLM saying that Matrix 4 is like TLJ, overhated by a lot of people. Oh, sorry, just overhated by a lot of people. Yeah, they said, said that, yeah. It's overhated by a lot he of said... people and overloved by a lot of people, is what he said. Yeah, he said, he said, yeah, a lot of people are going to hate it more than it deserves, and a lot of people will love it more than it deserves. Yeah. Which is, well, here's the thing. TLJ was shit. So that automatically just does. I mean, that's. I, I guess it's technically true for everything, but in the way that he means it. Um, I mean, it's gotta be awkward for him because he came out in kind of in favor of TLJ and their, their coverage, but it's since been just considered what a fucking disaster the destroyed Star Wars. So it's like, well, that's over hate. I'd just be like, oh yeah, what's the correct amount of hate? And is it more or less than the prequels? Because I'm guessing he'd say more. Which is. Or less, rather. Sorry. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. What was, was, was I thinking about? Uh, name your starter Pokemon. No nostalgia allowed. Oh, Andrew. We just name your starter Pokemon as in like choose one of Pokemon to be our starters, or what would we name one? Or what would your starter be? Because if it was what what one I choose, and no nostalgia allowed, it's like I'm, I guess I'm going with the most powerful. Or am I? I don't know. I guess I I've played them. I don't know if I have any nostalgia. I guess it's Charmander, I guess, if we're going for nostalgia, but I don't have, like, any real connection to him, so I'd pick Bulbasaur. I mean, I would pick Bulbasaur not just because of the fact that I picked him a lot when I was younger and stuff, but what? also because I, I, I wouldn't mind having a guy around for water. I'd worry a lot about a guy with fire. His tail is on fire, you know? It's just like... Yeah, if it was, like, a liability... I choose Squirtle. 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 Yeah, I really like Squirtle. He's a cool boy. Uh, do you know that during the spider sense scene in Happy's Place, you could slightly hear the goblin laugh? Neat detail. Really? I didn't notice that. I'd That's cool. Look out for that next time I watch it, because I didn't think they were. Uh... Movie Bob, because I've always wanted to see a Hitler speech live. Oh my. No, not nice. that in this video. He was very, very, you know, normy in this one. Hmm. OBS just said the stream went down for about a split second. Oh! Uh, it's still gone, so. Yes. Do we have to start with the three videos over again? <laughs> yes, let's do it again. Make just sure to make cool. sure that, you know, just to make sure that they all got through. Mm-hmm. Um, today's animal of the day is the Damascus goat. All right, hold on. Now that is an animal. Wow. Man, holy crap. Put a picture? In yeah. The, uh... All right, there you go. Wow. Right, like... Yeah. God damn. Hold on. Um, I don't know if you... Hmm. That Copy. is an animal. No, 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 it's just... It's it's pretty crazy looking critter. Looks like a, yeah. uh, it could be in Star Wars as a background character. It looks like a Star uh, Wars uh, creature, yeah. Are those its nuts? <laughs> That's... What I, the fuck? <laughs> That's real? What the fuck? And apparently it, it is. The Damascus goat. Look at him. It looks like something straight out of Star Wars. What a weird face these things have. Yeah. All right. Um, Death showed Batty almost as much respect as Teddy Rough Ride Roosevelt, though with Teddy it was more so out of fear. You don't think Death feared Batty either? I mean, as well. I mean, possible. Maybe she had some plans. And death feared Betty. 
and Betty did become death. Oh yeah. Maybe that's like their arrangement. He's she's like, all right, I'll die, but I'll, I'll die finally. But uh, you have to let me uh, be the Grim Reaper. And he's like, yeah, sure, that's fine. On Saturdays. I was thinking about doing something else anyway. All that death, you know, just gets old. Um, I'd be very invested in a Hawkeye EFAP. The show has good character work, but a bad plot with Tismi action that might make for good discussion. Hi, Rex. Oh, I'm Hello. Wait, what was that? I disagree with that. I think that some of the characters are kind of lame in Hawkeye. Uh, in what way? Oh my goodness, Grace. Fight. 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 What fight oh, is there? Roll. None of us What's it? Yeah, I was going to say, oh, who are you yeah. talking to, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I don't... The, uh, the person in the comment? They're not here, though. You, Dr. Skipper in the comment. I guess... Yeah. I guess the, the biggest controversy so far with Hawkeye has been uh, Wilson Fisk at the end of it. Yes, which I've heard many people are unhappy with. Are you unhappy with it? Yeah. Did you want to see the big man beat up the girl? Misogynist. <laughs> the misogynist. Yes. The thing I was looking forward to. Yeah. I want to see misery. Like many of the people in the world. Um, so... Character damage to Wilson Fisk then, or um, I'll take he acts kind of out of character in comparison to Daredevil, but it's weird though because I don't know if it's there. There aren't like flat out about it. It's if it's the same Wilson Fisk or not. So it's just weird. Yeah, it could it's, be. I don't know how to explain. Have you also seen Daredevil? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get you. That, that that seems to be the thing. Nobody knows whether or not they're like Daredevil is canon in the MCU. Yeah, well, it's like because in in Daredevil itself, right? Like the setup of, of Wilson Fisk is super. Like they make him intimidating. Like somebody kills himself to like just because he names him. Yeah. Or in, a lot in Hawkeye, you have the something called like the tracksuit mafia, and it's just very. Uh, Mediocre free. in comparison. Yeah, you, you'd have to watch it, and then you could. Uh, oh, it, it's it's yeah. I don't want to. Well, yeah, th there may be a possibility that we're gonna check it out, um, but like I don't know about EFAP coverage. No guarantees on that one. Um, we shall see. Starting off 2022 with Roberto. I'm not sure if this is gonna be good or a bad omen. Well, think of it as getting it out of the way. Right, got Robert done. Even though I don't feel like we got a true Robert experience from that video, and maybe there'll be more of him to come. To, to you know, just, I, I just don't feel like it was a genuine movie experience from from him. That's all. I think it's a good omen that we got through it so quickly. Um, you, movie bar because oh wait yeah I've read that one. <laughs> um. I know a TLJ fan who once said people didn't understand the milk drinking scene. Sometimes I reflect on that and wonder. What is it to understand about that scene? I don't know. Maybe it was saying a lot more than I'd ever realized. I don't know. Ah, Disney Star Wars. Your consistency for a person slash faction not knowing which way is up and using up as an advantage is gold. Happy New Year, Longman, Doggo, Fringold, Skipper, and to all the massives. Thank you. Yo, thank you. You wave one toe. And uh, yeah, that's in reference to Boba Fett. Go. So, if anybody in chat is curious, which has been released. You can go watch that after this stream. It's going to be great. And we will hopefully be getting those out uh, weekly. Until the show is done. Yeah. And we will talk about mm -hmm. how amazing it was. Uh, have you guys seen his Dark Materials? No. no. Yeah. I'm assuming Rags hasn't. I don't know if Skipper has. Mm -mm. I've heard of it though. Um, I don't. But I don't even know if it's a like, good. I know it's about polar bears. That's, that's it. We're not, not like about polar bears, but it's got polar bears in it. Well, there's a big difference between those things, Springs. I feel like you should have clarified that much sooner. Yeah. Well, I I clarified it as soon as I could. Faster next time. Okay, I'll, faster than the, the speed of sound, got places to go, got to follow, the 
Rainbows. My, is it rainbow? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I picture it's a pretty wholesome thing for Sonic to follow. Yeah. As he escapes from the city. Uh, when will the next Batwoman reaction come out? I do not know. But, um... We will... I know it will come eventually, I just don't know exactly when. Uh, New Year goals. Become a part of the EFAP podcast and say Ewok once every podcast. Just wait. It'll be epic. Hog is even. Oh. Go around saying Ewok, man. Get banned. Yeah, that's a slur. You can't say that. It's in bad taste. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know a TLJ fan who once... Oh, no, wait, I read that. Uh, Rags, I heard you like Brussels sprouts. Have you tried pan-frying them halved with breadcrumbs and salt? Also, hi, Rags. Hey, uh, generally we do pan-fry them or bake them after you cut them in half. Never with breadcrumbs, though. Something to think about. Hmm. Could be good. Uh, you guys should do Left 4 Dead on Expert Mode for an EFAP Gaming. Otherwise, Happy New Year. We could do that sometime. Uh, thanks. Maybe. Maybe. I think people want us to play Black for Blood at that point, right? Because they're like, check out the new one, tell us what you think, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not as good. I've heard too many bad things about it to want to play it at this point. I've tried, I've given that game a very fair shake, and I just, uh, it continues to frustrate me and annoy me. Mm. I want to like it, but it's, it's, it's hard, but I really want to like it. Ugh. Uh, I don't have anything interesting or insightful to say. Hi, Rags. Oh, hello. That's, pretty That's interesting. Uh, Mola. Oh, man, only six minutes? Won't be too long. Not even ten seconds in and y'all stop. Let the long live, you massive. We still got through Bob's video pretty quick. We didn't even have to slow him down. We, 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 there was right. a couple moments there I thought maybe, but... Did it. I made an EFAP watch order if anyone wants to use it. I update it with every new release on Moolah. You'll have to click on my channel to see it, though. It won't let me link it in Super Chat. Well, as far as I know, everything is released chronologically on uh, uh, Moolah. I don't think there's anything that out of order, is there? You can just go from earliest upload to latest upload, and you'll have pretty much everything in order. I think some stuff has been taken down here and there for copyright, but most of it comes back up in time. Um, only play Zelda Trump impression is my favorite. Yeah, some of the animations that have been made with that are funny as fuck. Especially the one with Linkara. I have audio problems myself and use Lightworks. I spent five pounds so that Rags could riff on me for that. You have audio problems so you use Lightworks? I don't know what the Lightworks video is. editor. What? Well, does that help with... When you say audio problems, are we talking about when you, in the editing process, or the microphone itself, or...? Um... Editing? I don't know. Did you... I'm not sure, I, I just... grill somebody for bad audio or something at some point? I don't know. Movie Bob? Well... This person, I mean... Uh, who are they? Uh... Toonie Boy? I... I don't know. Oof. I don't think so. Dude, one of the Kirby's grabbed me while the other one did a broken <laughs> punch. Nice. They just, that, that, was, that was coordinated. They are evolving. They planned this since the first Kirby. Um, this is my first time ever seeing you guys cover TV Robert live. Also, hola to the Australian pelican and the cat with sunglasses. The cat with sunglasses? Sorry. You. That's not true. I'm not a cat. Well, they called Fringy a pelican. I don't think they were calling it's, me a pelican. It is a bird. That's pretty That's pretty accurate. No, well, it's not. I mean, if they said the Australian pelican, I feel like it's going to be weird if they were talking to... Gipper. Unless... I think the mistake was the Australian part, not... <coughs> Skipper's not a pelican, right? That's a... No. <coughs> no, nah, it's a stork. Yeah, I thought so. Stork. Hmm. But calling now, Rags now a cat American and calling confused. you a pelican seems about like what they're going for there. It's consistent. I think so. Alright, well, Rags ain't a cat either. I agree with that. That is true. I'm not a cat. I am 
much superior. We've definitely concluded that at this point. I'm proud of yes. that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Blinkit video came out in 2011, not 2013, I believe. Very unfair to compare CGI in 2005 to now. His point was Luca... No, no, that's not, that's not what we did. That's what he did. He said nobody's surprised by CGI anymore. Nobody's impressed by it, which is a really dumb thing to say no matter what year you're in. Uh, his point was Lucas was too heavy-handed with the CGI at times, said great things could have been done uh, correctly. <laughs> I wish that were his point, because I agree with that. <coughs> yeah. Unfortunately, he said some really dumb stuff when it comes to CGI. And no offense, but, like, it seems to have spread to a lot of people, um, but somehow then recontextualized into a much more reasonable point randomly, and it's just like... People aren't impressed by CGI anymore. It's like... Totally fucking are. And they will for the future. Who knows what's going to come out in the next, like, five years in terms of impressive CGI. Yeah, who knows? Um, hey, Mola, check out Neo next time you get the Soulsborne itch. Great variety of weapons, gear, and attacks, and magic, and guardian spirits. I have played it. Um, I just prefer uh, Bloodborne. As my like go-to a little bit sometimes. I'm Dark Souls one. I'm very used to him. Oh. Uh, PA, love the video. How did you know what I wanted for Christmas? Hi Rags. Hello. I don't know. Santa told us. Which which video? It's the same person that said the thing about Plinkett and CGI. So they might be talking about that. In which case, I'm glad you had fun with it. Uh, working on my first video reviewing a neat game called The Citadel. Wish me luck, guys. Also, who's the bird dude, not green one? Also, hi, Rex. <laughs> Hello! That would be Dr. Yes. Skipper. He was here last time. I'm talking about Spoodman. Figured we're gonna have him back, see him, see what he thinks about some videos this time around, as opposed to just a movie. We there, you know We criticize them both here. Can you believe it? Them Pokeballs. Eh. Um. Happy New Year, EFAP. Thanks for the 12 months of great content. I look forward to the next 12. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. Happy New Year, indeed. Uh. Yeah, I, you know, hopefully it's around about the same amount that comes out this year, but there's no great plans to release many, many arcs or anything. Or of, uh, what can get done, when it can get done. Though I imagine people feel like we're off to a good start with the, uh, the Boba Fett minis. I yeah. say that as if there's more than one. <laughs> we will get there. Every Wednesday they come out that we were even able to see them. That's another thing we'll have to figure out if we want to do a, a stream and watch it, or just watch it. Um, mm. I don't know. Might depend on the discourse surrounding it. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Can't wait for that one episode to come out and everyone goes, Oh, I can't believe it. That's insane. Oh my god, it's the best thing ever. Soka you was in nuts. it. Soka. Came out of no Yeah, I had a Soka. She's the best fucking character ever since the last one that was. There was a lightsaber. It was so cool. Boba Fett used his flamethrower and then he flew around his jetpack and then there was an explosion and then right, he doesn't use his jetpack. Yeah, that's true. Try it, he doesn't. It makes me wonder why he hauls that thing around. He should just use a normal backpack and keep things in it. Well, someone in the comment section I saw said, didn't Han break it? What? Well, I... I, I <sighs> there's an obvious counter to that, but I don't know. Like, he, it's used! It's, it's literally, like, the thing that the marshal uses in... Uh, that's his jetpack. <laughs> it's just like... I don't think Han Solo broke it, no. Ah. <clears throat> Imagine that was the reasoning, though. He just keeps it around because it looks cool. Oh my god. Yeah. Maybe he's like, but they don't know it doesn't work. Mmm, so they can fear it. They'll never expect me to stay on the ground all the time. Uh, New Year's Eve was my birthday. Also, Firefly EFAP minis when? 
That's not an impossibility. Maybe one day, but uh, it's not impossible. Happy birthday, and merry new eve of year. Next. Yeah. Uh, Fringy, you are given a time machine that's only good for two uses and can only visit three different time periods. Do you prevent the Port Arthur massacre, prevent the Tasmanian tiger from going extinct, or prevent Steve Irwin's death? I feel like, just in terms of the number of lives saved, categorically, you'd prevent the Port Arthur. And I guess when he says you can only do it two times, you go there, go back. Presumably, yeah. But you could go there, and then travel to another one of these things, and, like, save Steve Irwin, and then just stay in that timeline. True. Would you sacrifice your position in the here and now in order to save Steve Irwin? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd say yes, but it's a hypothetical, so it doesn't really mean anything, does it? Oh, it tells us a lot about you and the way that you yeah, think. That's the whole and... point. Well, I, I'm saying that it doesn't mean anything and that that's easier said than done. But you believe you would? Ah, uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, one... I, don't, I don't really see the problem with going back to like 2005, 2006, you know? It's not that long. Is one Steve Irwin, Irwin worth all the Tasmanian devils? Um, Steve Irwin is, was uh, like really... Uh, good in terms of like encouraging conservation and things like that. So there might be a thing to be made about him uh, uh, Like him existing might be able to benefit a greater number of species in terms of conservation efforts than um than the Tasmanian the Hell, you know, the what? problem is if like, you stay back yeah. in 2005. You can make some other differences, couldn't you? That's that's true. You just start that's right. You could stop 9-11 like, From 2005 <laughs> Yeah. You can invest in, like, Google in 2005, get in on the ground floor. Hey, would you... I guess as another sort of, like, like little moral quandary, because I was listening to your... You know, listening to your logic on the Steve Irwin thing, would you sacrifice Hitler to save all the Tasmanian tigers? What about that? I don't understand what it means to- what do you mean sac- he- he dies? Like, it's a- Well, yeah, it so did Steve to... Irwin. No, but the- Would you bring him I, back? What do, you, what do you mean? Like, that- I don't understand the scenario. Would I go to save the Tasmanian Tigers and never interact with Hitler? It's like, yeah. Is one- is one what Hitler is... worth all the Tasmanian Tigers? What, in terms of him dead to bring them all back? Yeah, I don't understand you, the that? question, like, what is the- what is the hypothetical? Someone here- wait, 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 wait. Breaking news in the chat. Someone said Tasmanian tigers still exist. No, they don't. This changes everything. They've been extinct for like nearly a hundred years. Liar. Propaganda. Are they thinking about Tasmanian devils? Nuh-uh. Tasmanian devils are still around, yeah. What about Tasmanian uh, humans? Tasmanian well, yeah, there are Tasmanian humans. Mm. They're just Tasmanians. Wow. Yeah, that's... Yes, that Tas is... Yeah. Yeah, that's just... Yeah. We just call them Tasmanians. Uh, sorry, but Australia has to lose to the emus or you'll be melted. Well, you know, they so survived. Established in... Uh, fucking... I'm telling you. TV show. If... If one brave man was a little too accurate with his Lewis gun, he would have been melted and the world would be reset. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> he gets zapped. Oh no, that one was supposed to live. You shot the wrong one. Fuck. Things turn out too good this way. You gotta stop. <laughs> oh. Uh, do you butter your toast while it's hot or cooled? Why would you wait until it's cooled to butter it? I, yeah, I don't wait until it's cooled because I like that it melts it. I feel, yeah, I feel like I, yeah, I, I'm trying to see what, what is the advantage of waiting until it's cold? I am legit curious. Maybe it's just a I preference. Mean, would below. you, if you're a strange person and you wanted your butter to not be melted? I mean, there's preference. There's probably someone in chat right now saying they had to do it that way, right? Right? 
Like cold? Uh, well, it's yeah, hot. I, hot food. Hot. I clearly hot. Like I obviously. No. Nope. This is objective. Yes. Uh, Eminem, eat your heart out. And make space for Roberto. What? <laughs> what is? So help me out with that one. Go Whoa. Do you think Eminem watches movie Robert's reviews? Yeah. Yeah. Just one of the things that you sort of, you would assume intuitively, right? Eminem would watch them. I can believe that Eminem mm -hmm. watches movie Robert. There's some about it that's just like, yeah, I can just imagine that happening. Would you watch Jar Jar Binks movie, Our Captain yes. Plasma? Yes. It says R Captain Jar Jar Plasma. Banks. Wait, are they asking if we would watch the Captain Plasma movie or Jar Jar Binks? Because, yeah, I know which one I'm choosing. Jar Jar Binks. Easy. Easily. Easily Jar Jar Binks. So much more interesting. Imagine he his adventures. He is more interesting. Jar Jar's the key to all this. Phasma really is. is just a, a tiny footnote in the history of reviled Star Wars media. She ain't the key to anything. Yeah, she sucks. Jar Jar is very instrumental to things. So much potential for Jar Jar. Phasma, though. Yeah. No potential Potential... At all. Potential... Less. Mm-hmm. She peaked. Yeah, they really did all they could with her, you know? She... You know, I'm... She belongs in the garbage shoot. I will Oof. say that. Pawn had the right idea. That's where she fucking belongs, in the trash compactor. Dude, that's such a, like... This, like they want to be so nostalgic, meta. where they're like, "What should we do with it? Trash compactor?" And it's like, "Oh, you remember the trash compactor?" Yo, it really I've got makes trash sense to put her in there, but okay. Either Throw she can easily there. escape, or you actually did kill her in there. Maybe she's a. And by the way, it's not necessarily something. moral to kill her or whatever, because you guys kill stormtroopers all the time. But she was your captured servant. But then again, how did you, if she if she did get out of there? How did she get out of the fucking whole place exploding as well? Like I don't know. Oh my god. This is fine. Uh, Mola. If Jesus 2.0 were alive thanks to some AI merger, would a Turing test be appropriate? Or what if the test is to see if the AI verifies humanity? Maybe duality. Both? Um. What does that even mean? Jesus 2.0? But an AI? Jesus 2.0 but an AI? Um, and then you're asking like, how would we verify it via the Turing test? I don't think the Turing test is going to be anywhere even close to enough people for Jesus 2.0. I mean, to verify that it was Jesus robot. <laughs> how, does, how does one verify that the AI is Jesus 2.0? Yeah, I. So I guess you'd have to have some kind of a test to. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, first off, thank you for coming back when there's cameras now. Thank you. That helps things a lot, a lot. That things that makes things so much easier. Um, but maybe you have to some kind of a test that can establish he can violate the laws of physics with magic. I suppose maybe test his ability to make predictions with strict prediction criteria, uh, so that it's you know like right proper prophecy. Um, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I guess you know he he should be able to do a lot of things if he is a uh, if if he is God powers, you know, things that should be very easy for him to. What if he you tells know what? You we wouldn't AI, even have to worry about so, it. Yeah, without his physical body, well, he can't perform these miracles. I think we're overthinking it a little bit. We got to go. I think it's if he was really Jesus 2.0, then he would know what would convince all of us, and so True. that would just sort itself out. He would just, he'd, he'd know, and he'd do the thing, and then we'd all be like, oh shit, wow, it is you. That's crazy. It is Jeebus. You're so, you're so robot -y. I wouldn't have, wow. Strange question, but all right. Uh, Fringledang, what's up with my goo back? Before you get mad, know that it's okay for me to say it. Uh, I have a G wood Why, pass because I'm one-eighth goo. Also high metal. Oh, what's up my goo back, I guess is what he's calling you. Yeah, but that's... you can only say that if you're from the future. Well, alright then. 
Gotta get a future G pass. Um. G pass? Is that what you give your homie? Your homie gets the G pass? Mm, I don't know where he got it from, Rags. I wouldn't want to presume. But he also ends it with also high metal. Metal's not even here. Oh. Oh, Racism. That's rude. If Movie Bob were less galaxy brained, he would be Mr. Planket. Even Planket is loved by some people. Yeah? Um, yeah. Who's Mr. Planket? All right then. Planket? I guess he's like a carpenter? Kind of like Jesus? All right. Let's see why. Is he like typically unloved or close to unloved, Mr. Planket? What if Jesus, when he learned how to be a carpenter, I guess, from his father, I suppose, if he just really, really liked that and got a lot of, you know, like, satisfaction and personal, you know, he felt like he got a lot of, uh, you know, like he really liked being a carpenter, essentially, and he's like, nah, I just, I'll, I'll do the whole Jesus thing. I'm just going to be a really good carpenter. He became a world famous, a world famous carpenter. He was just really good at it. And that's how we knew him. The greatest carpenter of all. And he would tell like stories and things, you know, of mixed quality. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah. He'd be, be making like chairs and stuff while he told it. Yeah, the kingdom of God's like a mustard seed. Also, notice the way that this, uh, the chair backing here slots into this peg and gives it good balance. Like, ah, yes, of course, of course. Love my rags and mole videos. You help me fall asleep. In a good way, of course. Excellent. I know what Top you mean. Quality, yeah. uh, why do you allow CJ to kill Betty White with his jinxed tweet? Well, to be fair, he put the tweet out after everyone knew, so I, I thought, like, I don't know, like, or at least I thought that everyone knew, because I saw a lot of it on Twitter, and then I saw him tweet that out, and I was like, oh, he basically just said, like, um, this year is over, finally... Like, good things can happen, or something like that. And it was before the year even ended. Not only by British time, but, uh, American time, for sure. Typical American time, anyway. Ow. Ah, typical American time. Ugh. Well, I mean, a couple of them, but similar. Lappy new hair, or air. Hail rags. Hail. I don't know what I do that bad, but okay. No, me neither. I'm a little unsure about that. Not only did I finally quit my job in retail, but right before Christmas... Oh, retail hell right before Christmas. But now I have a job that pays a lot better and allows me to play EFAP in the background. Happy New Year, Massives. Hi, Rags. Oh, hello. Sounds great. Enjoy. Um, sound pretty don't good. don't often get that many jobs that give you a chance for that. Um, just neat when they do. Stop running away from me. Stop it. Just because I'm invincible doesn't mean it shouldn't fight me. Um. Love. Oh, wait. Uh, I don't like rags. He's coarse and rough and bangs everything. Oh. No, of course I rough and I bang everything. Because oh. I'm a dog. Uh, since we're talking about Spider-Man, I submit this neat spider to check out. The Sparkle Muffin Spider. A real dancing, a real life dancing spider. Sparkle Muffin. Oh, he's a colorful little guy. Apparently he does dances too. Very wholesome spider. Oh boy. Which I'm sure there are many. A great movie to shut this adaptation argument up is The Mask. The original comment is dark, gory, and Stanley is a villain, while the movie is mainly a comedy and Stanley is Jim Carrey at his best. Interesting. Because I, I didn't even know The Mask was, I guess, taken from something, or if I did, I forgot, but. Um, I don't think anybody. Does, people like The Mask movie, typically, right? I think so, yeah. I don't know. I have no clue what the reputation of the mask films are. 
well, Son of Mask is considered one of the worst movies of all time, but I'm pretty sure The oh, Mask yeah, is nice. liked quite a bit. Are we gonna EFAT movies that? Maybe. Could happen. We'll do the first one as well. Father of the Mask. Oh, yes. Um, feels like a Rick and Morty bit. They're referencing Movie Bob's video. And they can feel that way. Don't look up. Me and my girlfriend loved it. My commie boss loved it for completely different reasons. My boss saw Trump and I saw Hillary. Good film. Okay. All right. I don't know. I have no idea what's what's going on with that film then. Ah, uh, yeah, I got no clue. Um, and one Chinaman each. Boom! Climate crisis solved. Oh my. Uh, it's time for the planet to end. Jake Skywalker. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't go as planet far to say that'd be out of character at this point. Just the the Star Wars, the Disney version of him. Uh, screw Timmy the tree. I want to sponsor Roger the Shrub. Oh, I guess we're on high top Roger studio then, yeah. The shrub? You can you can sponsor Robber the Shrub if you want. I'm not gonna you know stop you. I feel like everyone should get to choose reference? money. Monty Python reference? I, I was just saying, I still think that as much as that might be true, Timmy the Tree was a lot going on there. We worked hard on getting him some sponsorships. If you just want to choose to abandon him, fine. Eh. And not to die at this point. Uh, the planet had its chance, Calbo Baggins. <sighs> Good old Superman could be relied upon for letting this world die, I'm sure. Yeah. Pay us $50 and we will absolve your climate sins. <laughs> I mean, he made it sound a little bit like that. <laughs> uh, have y'all seen Good Time from the Safties? No, but I've heard no. that that film's good. I haven't even heard of it. Uh, I think it's Robert Patterson's in it. Okay. Uh, this is totally a Jack Murphy biz. Watch someone else water your tree. You get pictures and can write about how climate alpha you are. Climate alpha? Climate alpha. I'm an alpha when it comes to protecting the climate. Someone actually yeah. referenced Jack Murphy in a super chat on our last catch up and uh, I had no idea. Who's when... Jack Murphy? He's just a guy who's gotten into a lot of stuff lately that's strange. Um, without getting more specific. Is he, like, is he like a celebrity or an actor or a writer? Or... He's a celebrity of some kind. I don't know what he's famous for, but... Yeah, this, um, I was made aware of it on good old Friday Night Tights. I had no idea. But quite the journey. 2020. Welcome to the Tismy 20s. Every year after the past years have been very Tismy, but this new year... Happy 4th of July, you massives, and peace, high rags. Hi! Yeah, I think 2022 is going to be great. Be way better. All kinds of great stuff's going to happen. I guarantee it. If it doesn't come true, uh, then I didn't guarantee it just now. I had my fingers crossed. Uh, if you subscribe, we plant a tree. If you don't, we... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rip Betty White, gone too soon. Massives, what are your New Year's resolutions for 2022? Necromancy for Betty White. I don't really do New Year's resolutions. I don't see it as like a, any reason to make something happen that I <laughs> wanted to have happen anyway. I don't know. I thought you were going to be like, I don't really do necromancy. <laughs> I will. To be fair, I don't. But I wouldn't want to discourage you from giving it a shot. Uh, as long as you're a, zo a, a zombing voidy. Avoiding zombie territory. That's what I wanted to say. Sure. But uh, I understand that there are risks and you, know, you don't want it to be a zombie, but it could turn out that way and that... You'll deal with it as best you can. Right. That's what's important. I think... Um, anyone else here got any resolution-y stuff or, or nay? Mm, no. <laughs> it's a... Alright like the then. 
It's just a different number on the end of a year. Mm -hmm. Same old, same old. It's still terrible. Uh, have you guys seen Cosmonaut's video about how he loves the movie because Peter suffered? It's, it's These just, people are psychos. I don't know what I'm to do with this anymore. It. Like, I'm just convinced of it. Oh, you got a hammer. Come on. Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't surprise me anymore. I just don't know what to do with it. Um. Mm. Nano machines, son. They harden in response to plot contrivances. Punches script. You can't critique me, Jack. Well, they're pretty useful. <laughs> Stop eating me. Uh, Juma985 is a neat goblin. Incur him on EFAP. Oh. He wants to be mean to somebody. I'm gonna restart because we lost a life. Might as well be forking out loads of money. Yeah, poor Germa. How dare you, Mola? The irrigation systems here in Wisconsin are doing just fine. Thank you very much. Hi, Rags. Fringy. How is Australia? Uh, hi. Uh, I don't know. Uh, other than fake. No, it's not. Fake irrigation system. Australia. Yeah, it's. it's, it's you want to say anything about Australia there, Fringy, or...? Wait, fake irrigation systems? No, they said, how is Australia? Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's the place. Oh, is it still convincing some people that it's real? I don't know. Some people are just really I mean, gullible. It's not hard to convince people that it's real because it is. So. It is because it is. Great argument. Typical. Typical. Yep. Typical. Um, huge issue in MCU since Civil War. Is there no consistency of power level? Peter in Iron Man's in Iron Spider suit should dispatch Doc and Goblin in seconds. Why? Well, I mean, Goblin's really strong. Goblin's a buff boy. Yeah. He is a buff boy. And, I mean, um, Iron Spider, like, is not necessarily going to help you deal with the tentacle blades, you know? Uh, not the tentacle blades, the tentacles themselves. Tentacles you know, are real strong. That. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know. I just you, if you can highlight for me a time where he's done something and then couldn't do it later for no reason, I'm all ears. But yeah. uh, seem fine to me. Um, whose spoo to take is worse, high top or blame the controller? High top is cringe. But blame the controller made me angry. Oh my. Well, um. His... They're similar, right? Take. The whole Spider-Man should be X and shouldn't be Y, all that stuff. Who's more cringe? I guess uh, I think High Top because he appeals to people's emotions way more. Like, depend he's desperately trying to manipulate the fuck out of people. And he doesn't use like try and convince people or use evidence or anything, which is always frustrating. Mm -hmm. That it's just like. This whole film was ugly as fuck, right guys? It's like, no? No, oh. it wasn't. I don't know Blame's position, so I can't really speak to it much. You don't? I remember he said that Miles wasn't a Spider-Man, which I thought was stupid. What? Hey, you were stupid. there for all of it. You, you were there, this was 150, remember? <laughs> right one? at the end. Wait, wait. 150. Oh, right yeah, 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 yeah. I do, I do, I do remember now. I'm still going to say High Top is a more frustrating. Yeah, Because at it, least well, Blame just... was, like, saying stuff you could engage with. I think. I guess it's, a it's, fuzzy, I, I would agree but... with Muller. It's just more emo emotional manipulation in the case of the way that High Top does it. Yeah. It's just annoying. Um... A friend told me that Jamie Foxx can save an otherwise crap script. Tasm may say otherwise, but he certainly has that charisma. They didn't let him in Tasm 2. He plays a very just disjointed, strange fucking person. As soon as he gets like... Like, he's, he's definitely what you could call a normal person, 
before he enters the eel thing, and then then he becomes really fucking strange. Yeah, he he needs to the world without power is world without Sp Spider Man, you know. Spider Man, Spider Man. Hasm one and two, the purest of Peter Parker's outside of Raimi. Not like that stinky MCU. Um, this is QQ. Are there any? Are there two Eddie Brocks now with the Venom symbiote now in the MCU? Would it somehow find Spider-Man and find other Eddie, or would it find Flash? Mm, uh, you can do whatever you want, really. Yeah, I have no clue what they're gonna do. I guess we'll find out. I want to have a Spider-Man movie where Uncle Ben nearly avoids death during the whole film and then saying that was close every time. Hi, Rags. Hello. That would be funny. Well, what if we, we give him, like, a death scene where he's like, Peter, with, uh, he's like, oh, he didn't say he the line. Just, like, <laughs> just a W-I and that's it. He's, Peter's out. With, uh, what were you going to say, who, Uncle? I'm going to kill when? everyone because you couldn't finish that who? sentence. <laughs> Have you guys seen Cosmonauts? Oh, wait, yeah. EFAP reacts Star Wars... Star Trek, sorry, when? Y'all wrote novels? Um, is that is that a separate question as to whether or not we've written novels? Sure. Or... <laughs> and as for Star Trek stuff, who knows what may happen in the future, but uh, no guarantees of any of that. Hi, Rags. Hello. <sighs> Do you prefer top or bottom when it comes to males? Bottom. Sandman and Lizard's conclusions should have been lower priority since they were alive and turned good by the end of their respected films anyway. Um, it's. I guess these are these are multiversal. Weird. It's weird. I don't know that. Well, they seem to only be aware of the basic information that they're all going to die. As to who should have been given focus. I think they made their choices, and they made them well. I, I figured we would make similar choices if we were told, you've got all them, now um, make them give, like, like the idea of making Green Goblin the villain is just like, yep, that lines up quite well, I'd say. I'm something of a villain myself, you know. Oh, yes. When I make a video, Rags, yeah, four months ago. Oh. Well, I mean, however long it takes, is, uh, it would mean he's making the video. I don't know. <laughs> As someone who takes ages to make videos, it's uh, it be it be a lengthy process sometimes. Yeah. Uh, best thing to come out of Spider-Man Three was Bully Maguire. Yeah, that's a top-tier meme. That's like one of the best memes we yeah. got. <laughs> sometimes you want to remind people like you understand the power of that meme comes from how fucking dumb that whole thing was right yeah not that it's a great idea like I don't want people to keep taking that stance that was actually really great no, it was so wasn't. funny and awesome and self aware and, and really great commentary it's like sh sh stop stop it's really funny because they can't yeah, believe they actually did like it just, I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye and you want forgiveness, get religion, see it jump until... <laughs> see it so jump. Just what the hell?! <laughs> if you'll like that edit. Yeah. Uh, wife was heartbroken when he didn't talk to MJ at the end, but she thinks the endgame time travel works, so who cares? Can't wait for TSS EFAP movies. Who cares um, what my wife thinks? I care what... Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, wait. me. Uh, her finding it heartbreaking, that's good, right? Because like, it is a really sad scene where he's... It should be, it should be kind of heartbreaking, yeah. Because, yeah, that's, I think that's what the scene's going for. Um... And you know what? It's okay that she thinks the time travel in Endgame works. That's fine. I hate this. I have an urge to punch a wall. End the pain, please. I, I don't know what they're talking about specifically, but if you suffer, you might become Spider-Man, so be careful. Some some clown in the chat said, I'm behind, but tragic loss is an essential aspect of being Spider-Man. If you disagree, you fundamentally misunderstand the character. Okay. 
Remember, if you have, if you can shoot webs, well, this thing, climb up walls, and you have Spidey sense, and nope, you have nope, a nope, good nope. life with no tragedy, you nope, you're not Spider Man. Well, I feel like I'd do you one better if you respect the idea that with great power comes great responsibility, and then you do all the things you just said. You're still not Spider Man until you've lost someone you love. It's like I'm sorry, but you guys don't you see how arbitrary that is compared to the lessons he learns and the character that he is. Why is it that you're gatekeeping Shit. it onto the point where someone he loves has to die? That's so fucking weird. How many people have to it die for Punisher? Is part. it the whole family, or is it half, or can it just be one? Or can it be none of them and his kid gets punched? Like, what What does it take for it to be the true one? And do you apply this standard consistently to other no, characters? No, the answer is no. <laughs> well, maybe Batman. Maybe. That, like, his parents have to die. That might be something that people would say, but... You just think about anybody else, it's like, it what does Thor have to be? You could make a Batman where his parents are just abusive, and they're just horrible people. You absolutely could, yeah. God damn, we got the retards out in force today. Rags, is a man who can fly and shoot lasers from his eye automatically Superman? Dark if he's side equals Superman, because... Dark side equals Superman, because they have similar powers, according to Rags. You can call him Superman. So, like... If, if the character is called Superman, and he flies and he shoots lasers out of his eyes, it's because he's called Superman, though. It's not specifically because he shoots lasers out of his eyes. Yeah, like this All aboard the I'm bad faith train, jeez. This first loser, he's choo -choo I'm not out wrong. Of the station. This first guy says, I'm not wrong. Spider-Man slash Peter Parker's character is defined by loss and Dude, guilt. you can't prove what you're saying. How can you possibly just, say that you're def definitely right? There's nothing to prove that. Chucking claims. You, that's all I hear. All I hear is you just well, saying it. Oh, that's all I hear is you're just saying it. You can't prove that. Like, how do you prove that something is a definitive attribute? Like, what does that mean to prove that? That it is categorical and also, inarguable? Is Henry Cavill Superman then? I'm guessing not, considering yeah, the things he, that he does. Look at him. Please. Can't be calling him Superman. Don't you dare. Yeah, he murders yeah. a... He said Shit Krypton full had of his babies, chest. Man. That's not something Superman would say. Here he was go, called Superman it. before that. Yeah, before he did that. And then, <laughs> then he did it. And then like, he stopped Superman being anymore. Superman. <laughs> yeah. As soon as he lays at the ship, he stopped you're not being Superman. Superman. <laughs> I mean, you're indistinguishable from Superman, but you are, you're not Superman anymore. So, yeah, like, this won't work. It'll never work. Sorry. And, uh, so I'll get right on proving it. Let me go and get 40 years of Spider-Man comics and scan them in as Super Chats. No, unacceptable. Oof. You have to have 500. That's Oof. the limit. It's that line. We've all agreed. 500 is the limit. It has that to be 500. That doesn't even prove anything. Even if you did that, that doesn't prove anything. All it tells me is well, that I'm a lot you of Spider-Man stories my point is, right? have that. Yeah. He's gonna be like, going to be like, 500? No, I, I think 40 years is enough. And I'm like, no, I think 10 years no. is enough. No, I think one month yeah. is enough. And also, you need to include all Spider-Man comics, all of them. Superior Spider-Man, including the ones you don't like. <laughs> Miles, the Miles Spider-Man stuff. You need to include the other Spider people characters. Every single appearance of him in everything, every single thing. The other comics he appears into. I don't care whether it's canon or not anymore. We talk about Spider-Man fans are just fucking bizarre. As if the three videos we covered today didn't just prove it further. Two in particular, but Spider-Man fans are bizarre. Yeah, because Movie Bob was the normal one today. <laughs> like... well, Movie Bob was oddly enough the normal one. People are relishing and suffering of a character, and it's like it's it's weird. It's really weird. Miles isn't Spider-Man. There it is. I don't get that one. What's the problem? You, you guys don't say this about Wally West or Barry Allen. No, I'll start saying That's it. Because Wally don't... West isn't the Flash. Okay? Not. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. If that's the bullet you want to buy it, then by all means, but... They won't buy does that. Does Batman kill? Does he not kill? What's the real Batman? Because he does both, and the original definitely well, killed. He killed with fucking machine guns. Ben so... Affleck is not Batman. Oof. Okay. Yeah. Some it's, it's weird to me that you're so passionately doing that for for Miles, but you wouldn't do it for the the Snyder versions of the characters. 
The char the comparison for Batman is perfect. It's essential to the character. Thanks for making the argument for our side. No, so the reason why I brought it up <laughs> is because you very well could do a story where his parents aren't dead. Or you, or you could do a story where they are dead, but then he ends up like Punisher. And you'd be like, well, no, this isn't Batman. It's like, well, his parents died. Mm -hmm. Uncle Ben gets shot and Spider-Man becomes a fucking terrorist. You can do a <laughs> Superman like story where Krypton doesn't get blown up. This, what if, me, what, what if Uncle Ben got shot and just didn't die? It wasn't a fatal yeah, he gunshot. Lived. He, went he to lived and lived a long and he lived, life. But after. Nevertheless, and, can... and, and maybe the whole thing with Spider-Man's story now is, oh God, I nearly lost you. I'm never going to let that happen. Like, and then he becomes an overzealous protector of, you know. We joke about it, but what if he did die before getting that, that message out to him or whatever? And then yeah. Peter takes the wrong fucking lesson from the event. And that's the He's whole story. He's not Spider-Man anymore it's, because he didn't take the right exactly. lesson. Like, oh, okay. Well, you have to oh, do this, Spider-Man. You have to do this. Is it, or just, this clown, he continues, just read the damn comics. And no. Then we don't care. <laughs> we don't give a shit. We do not give a flying fuck about comic books. I mean, I, well, I mean, I well, well bring it, end like, up in reading sense, more of the but... comics, for sure, but like, it's not going to change my position on this. It'll yeah. just be like, oh, yeah, that's what he is in the comics, for sure. It, in this specific arc, or like this particular time and this is the story that's being told it doesn't really change anything yeah let's let's um go back to batman's first comic shall we man but i remember reading a spider-man comic where he was like the ceo of his own company yeah but we don't like, like those ones though yeah but but it was but was, yeah he wasn't poor and being poor is fundamental to his fucking character or well, something no, because the thing is is that people would say to that oh yeah but that was only for a short amount of time it's like what what does that mean? So was he not Spider-Man for a short period of time, and then he became Spider-Man again? I feel like this sells it. If if Miles Morales isn't Spider-Man, then Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill aren't Batman or Superman. Well, then everything isn't, yeah, except for, like, the very original one that existed. Like, Adam West can't be Batman. No. That's some, that's some crazy, campy nonsense that is. It's definitely not Batman. It's like if if you can have the Dark Knight Batman and also Adam West Batman, and I'm just like, at what point is it? So which one is <laughs> not Batman? Let me let me know, you guy, you comic book guys, get well, back to us and let us know which one isn't the real Batman. I top said that um, Michael Keaton Batman isn't Batman. Man, might get you in trouble. Um, that one I think is more agreeable for a lot of fans because he's too. I think he's too. He kills, so it's, it's bad. Right. Oh, it doesn't like count. the original Batman, and we don't do that. <laughs> it's not the accepted one, right? Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Of course. All right. Okay. See, like the true statement, if would be that Batman not killing people is a common element in many of his stories. Yeah. That's a true statement. To then just take the leap to, therefore, this is a definitive attribute of his character. It's like, what does that mean? The thing you said is just quantifiable well, before. It feels like it's a perversion of how we use it in single continuities. The definitive part yeah. of Luke's character that he cares about his family. However, it is not a definitive part of Luke's character in a different adaptation. I feel like people haven't gathered that from how we've talked about all these different pieces of content, but that's how it's always been for us. Mm -hmm. Get, what, if, what if Batman's parents lived and his friend's parents died instead? And that was what motivated him. Does Can he still be Batman? Well, it's just, are you... Is the implication that we're not allowed to do this? Or are you going to say, no, you can, it's just not Batman. Or, like, it's not Superman. So like, what do you... What are you... Why are you saying this? Like, you're saying this for a reason. And the reason is you're trying to delegitimize the those yeah. things. Um, it's like, if somebody... If somebody wrote a... If there was a, a redo of the Lord of the Rings movies, and Gandalf turned out to be corrupted, and Saruman turned out to be the good one, then... Automatically not Lord of the Rings I mean, anymore. How, I, it's, I don't know. I, I'm i not sure. It's, it's just a... I would argue it's like it's, they've adapted it, and they've changed some stuff, but this doesn't prevent the story from being excellent, from what we know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, yeah, uh, we, we, we've been over it so many times, and we'll just have to keep going over it. Uh, people will continue to be angry at us for this take, but I don't. I've never been convinced by the arguments. I mean, if we even get arguments, it's not even something which I'm we particularly generally just don't invested do. in. In terms of like, there's nothing that my stuff rests upon with this, because like, 
I don't really care. Like, like you know, if, if someone's like, if I talk about Miles Morales from Into the Spider-Verse, someone, like, said legally I'm not allowed to refer to him as Spider-Man, I'd be like, okay, I can still talk about how great that film is. Well, I guess, uh, because cause I think the, the reason why I think people get really attached to this one is just the idea that there is something that you dislike about a level of legitimacy being given to something that you feel is, like, not an apt interpretation of the character that you like. Um, so, I mean, for instance, I don't like the new style of, like, the Ratchet and Clank games in terms of, like, narrative and, and tone. I definitely prefer the older games where they had, um, there's definitely an edgier sense of humor, a bit more bite. Um, and then, like, a movie comes out that's based on the more modern interpretation, and yeah, it's all, like, happy-go-lucky and kid-friendly. It's like, well, that's annoying, but that's all it is. Annoying. Like, I can't really make an argument in favor of why that's worse. Or, like, necessarily worse because it's different. Like, any argument for how it's worse would need to be based strictly on what it is. And then the comparison to what I think is better would have to be on the basis of its merits, rather than that they're different. I feel like that's the fundamental disconnect. It being different isn't good enough. When someone said, when does an adaptation go too far? It's like, well, if... We're talking. What, what does it mean to be a good adaptation? And if we've defined that as as accurate as possible, then at that point, the spread to the end point, it's like it's the worst kind. Different. It's like a terrible adaptation. It's barely an adaptation at all. However, that doesn't affect how well written it is, mm -hmm. which is the position we've had forever until I'm argued out of it. I'm gonna keep saying it. They're arguing character and what it means to be Spider-Man, and they're wrong. So, like, if you watch a film and they say. Here's Schloop Ober. He's called Spider-Man. Like, that's it. That's the end of the conversation. Yeah, like, we... We can't actually be wrong in the sense of, um, referring directly to what is written as his name in that universe. Yeah. Like, take a film like Twelve Angry Men. One of the jurors is called Spider-Man. It's like, I guess we're calling yeah. him Spider-Man then. What's his name? And be like, well, he's not really Spider-Man. It's like, well, that's what he's called. Yeah, this I don't know what he wants us to do at that point. Him by. Uh, so that's obviously an argument that works in favor of Miles. But then when you get to the whole, like, Spider-Man's a mantle you have to earn and... Or rather, no. Spider-Man is something you can only have if your name is Peter Parker. That gets really strange. And then further, Spider-Man is only something you can be if you have these attributes or this backstory. Is Spider-Pig Spider-Man? I'm guessing not. He's Spider-Pig. No, he's, he's not. That's how it would be justified. He's different. That's the thing. I've never... Do you see what I mean? Like, I'm, I don't have that component in me that's like, ugh, calling him Spider-Man? Like, oh, well, I, I don't know, I, I don't, you know. Yeah. Spider-Man must be a great ape. Peter Porker, oh, yes. Why can't, yeah, why can't Spider-Man's species be ambiguous? Yeah, he could be an alien, right? I don't see why not. If 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 Uncle if Uncle Ben the alien, if Uncle Bingor, Bendar, Bendar, like, Uncle Bendar on the planet, Dream Sleep. My name is Retech. Was shot by a laser beam. I'm 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 Man Spider, and I'm from the planet Alien. Planet Alien. Uh, <laughs> Literature Devil said that it's like. The first stories for both of them reflect like what they end up being, which is Spider-Man learns about responsibility for an action he takes that is a bad action usually, and then Batman usually learns all of it from having seen his parents die. And it's like, but obviously you'd agree then that the important part is what they learned, not the event. Lesson, not how they learn the lesson. And yeah. so we should have for freedom at the very least, because I'd go further than this, but at least you can agree, right, that we can make them learn that lesson in many ways, right? Like, if I did everything the same in your favorite Batman comic, except for the fact that his parents were brutally injured and in a coma, does is that okay still? Are we okay? So obviously I want to push it further than that, but I just want to make sure, is like even that as a change, is that okay? Um... Yeah, I don't know, because like the, the funny one for us has always just been, just like, I want to see Uncle Ben dead, and you're like, God. It's just Why can't odd. yeah Spider Man can learn the lesson of great power, great responsibility by witnessing the positive impact that his actions have on those around him. 
You, know, you, you don't have to learn that lesson through some horrific tragedy. Nope. The idea that that's the only well, way I mean, he can learn this lesson if we is can be kind of ridiculous. If we matter for a second, that's kind of what's happening with the audience. The idea is that we're supposed to be learning about this message <laughs> without having to deal with the fact that our parents get killed or guardians, whatever. Uh, stories have morals, typically, and I feel like that's what Spider-Man's going for. And mm -hmm. that um, I don't understand why it wouldn't be considered something of a story about how all of us have that, you know, agency within us. Um, it, I would argue the Spider-Man where Aunt May dies saying stuff about responsibility and power is not the real Spider-Man story. Because Spider-Man's story is defined by Aunt May being alive and helping him. These people can't be saved. I don't know what to, to do with that. Well, are these, they can't be saved. I just don't, I don't know what else. I... You broken rags. Well, because you kind of broke me too, because I was just about to try and make a counter-argument, and I was like, wait, what do I even say? Like, Well, the counter-argument's just going to be the same stuff that's been said over and over again. Ame has to be there, otherwise it's not a true Spider-Man story. Like, wow, we're at that point now, too. I didn't know she was... I did. I thought Uncle... I, I didn't know she was the integral one to the real Spider-Man story. Which means that 99% of Spider-Man stories aren't the real ones, or they might be, or anything that deviates from well, the so real So what if Uncle Ben and Aunt May are shot and killed by a mugger? And he learns what the about message. What about... You know, yeah, all upcoming uh, Spider-Man stories are no longer Spider-Man stories because May's not in it anymore. Damn. Even though uh, High Top and Brown Table seem to believe that him having no one was quintessential exactly. Spider-Man. Exactly. Yeah. Are Man, they this wrong? is confusing mm. to learn about, you know. This is the thing. Just uh, put it to the test. If they remake Star Wars, they're like, we're going to get a whole new OT. It's going to be great. And Luke is a cowardly idiot throughout the whole thing. Um, I'd be very annoyed. But as long as he's consistently written, uh, that isn't a criticism of the writing itself. That's more of a just fuck you to the audience, it seems. But even that is a tough argument to make definitively. Because, you know... Uh, we hear like a challenge when it comes to writing, and it's like, could you remake the OT while keeping Luke as a cowardly idiot throughout it? That's your only restriction. And also make it well written, if not better than the OT. Is that a possibility? Like, well, sure. We'll just have a character called Luke, who's kind of the, the, the idiot of the group. We can bring in a whole set of new characters. Um, to the point where it could end up being something that's, that's beloved. I don't know. The, the, they're considered like difficult things to pull off by us rather than assassinations but if you did that to him in the same continuity completely destroying the characters then yeah of course we take issue with it well i'm happy to move on just having peter parker lose someone won't necessarily have the same result the original idea is that the loss occurred as a result of peter's selfishness the point is the lesson drag Sure. It just, uh, as far as I say, it's just you can learn that in many, many ways. Um, yeah. And if that's been agreed upon, I would still push that. I don't know that it, that's the only way you can be Spider-Man is to learn that lesson as opposed to other ones. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, and characters evolve and change and stuff. But, you know, that's chapter 7,643 in an ever ongoing argument back and forth we'll forever have about what it means to be a character. See you next time, I suppose. Um, so, in your opinion, Count Dankula doesn't have integrity because he takes sponsorships from Raid Shadow Legends? Well, I didn't say you have no integrity if you take it, but I think you might have rags. If I meant you have no integrity at all in all of your being, then that's not what I meant by that. It should have been intuitive, but it is certainly... Uh, breach of it in some capacity gotta be i think uh i would imagine dank would, would have to agree with that in some way if he understood what raid shadow legends is and the effect it has um i'm assuming he would agree that the better help slash uh, candid ones were unethical and so then it's just a matter of where the line is drawn i think so yeah um
I. Uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man is now the first MCU movie. You know a lot of people saying that? If the multiverse is open in the nature of the way that it seems to be, then isn't the first one whatever the fucking... the first story written was? I guess, yeah. Because um, it'll go earlier than Raimi at that point. Do the X Men? If the X Men are brought in, they'll oh, be the earliest ones. X Men get brought in, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It seems a little bit arbitrary to me. Like, it, if you've got the multiverse, that just means everything's included. Which is like, eh. If Uncle Ben lives at all. Raid Shadow Legends. Oh. Sounds about right. So. Uh, High Top has 10k dislikes, a quarter of the bar. Uh, oh, yes, wow. there's now an extension for dislikes already. I've sent you fan art on Twitter. Hope you like it. Hi, Rags. If um, there's an extension for dislikes, I might have to find a new one because my current one no longer functions as far as I know, or at least it isn't quite. Yeah, I think they're trying to slap them down. It, which is really people stupid. like when you see the the links that people are trying to go to to get this feature back that you've removed. It's just uh, YouTube is just the it's YouTube is YouTube. Thank We're you. doing this for the community. The community desperately tries everything they can to get this feature <laughs> back. No, no, we're anime. doing this for you. We're doing this for you. Somebody drew this, I guess, while we were talking about different things to do with Spundo Man. Loved ones, screaming souls, all spidey loved ones. No, server, 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 server. <laughs> High table. I mean, there's a truth to this, okay? I like that you can tell it's him because of the Spider-Man outfit. We could, um... Th that would be a good way to... Whenever we're talking about High Top and Brown Table. Just saying High Table. Like Sam Narek from Lord of the Flies. Definitely a shorter way to do it. Uh, I'm gonna go see Spider-Man No Way Home again. At this point, despite High Top for his objectively awful take on it, <coughs> I just don't think he's heard the challenges, or I, I wonder if he has. High Top is the conductor on the bad faith train to presumptuous and the one who seals the bulkhead to the interpretation chamber. Cringe mash fray. Um, what's interesting is that had myself, Rags, and Fringy gotten the entire, let's call it, history of comics in our head, I feel like we'd be even more adamant about how wrong a lot of what people say about this stuff is. Yeah. Um, but we haven't, and we won't necessarily at all, because it's just not necessary for the arguments, but I do sometimes wonder... Hey Fab Gang, currently at the beginning of the stream, but saw that you were going to talk about High Top's crap video. Been waiting for this ever since it came out. Also, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, I hope you enjoy the coverage. Brown Table should call his short films Brown Shorts. Oh. I think he's going to avoid that. Uh, nihilistic or sad does not equal intelligent. Yeah, I agree. Uh, sometimes it can... I, I think do get a sense sometimes that there's like, when Peter is miserable suffering in the apartment with everyone dead and gone, and there's people out there who are like, oh, that's sad. It's like, you don't understand how meaningful this is. Like, all right, all right, <laughs> calm down. Yes, you're very clever for noticing that it is meaningful. So weird to me when you have someone being like, oh, I'm sad for him that he's lost so much in his life, and you got like high top and brown table like, no, you should be happy about this. This means we'll get better stories. Uh, HT, it's about a thing to do a verb and save noun. It has heart and soul and other body parts. It's Spider-Man. But is it really a sentence of Uncle Ben lives? I was going to say, there's no mention of Uncle Ben in that sentence. So I don't know. It's not my sentence. Hashtag not my Uncle Ben. If Peter Parker oh, isn't Logic webs... just put out his 10 year anniversary. Oh, sweet. Yeah, neat. Should Unfortunately, I will somehow. collapse after this. Yeah, we really should. I'll have to watch it when I wake up after this EFAP is done. 
Brongo, pink is a nice color sweater. Rags, some of you EFAPs are okay. Don't come to stream tomorrow. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. That was a line crossed, I would say. Apparently. Line crossed. Standards. Must be upheld. It's very important. If Peter Parker isn't web slinging a noose, is he really responsible? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Don't get that web one. slinging. What? <laughs> Did you mispronounce anus? No. Uh, I, I don't know how that would make more sense. Well, I don't either. Uh, web slinging a noose. Maybe he could. He his webs form a noose. He grabs mm. Uncle Ben with it and pulls him away right before the bullets hit him. Oh, it'll be like in Tarzan, but he's trying to save the guy with webs and he accidentally fucking chokes him to death. Uncle Ben. And then just before he dies, he's like, Great Pokes, you're supposed to be like. He dies. Yeah, what if Uncle Ben was killed in a way that rendered him unable to speak? Like, maybe, well, yeah, he was strangled and he, he couldn't quite in fairness, form they, they words. They typically to say their line well before they die, so. Yeah, well, my, I think the real Spider-Man needs to hear it from a dead or a dying Uncle Ben. Rise, he's just, like, on the concrete after he's been shot or just injected with anthrax. Um, Brown table needs to be in the banner for EFAB 200, making margaritas with confetti. Complain about that? Sure. You should guest on it. I told you about Spider Man. It just says, I like my Spider Man suffering. Like, yeah, there's a lot of you guys out there. Very strange oh, way weird. to categorize your love for character, but you go right ahead. Yeah, I hope you never like me. <laughs> like Real uh, rags is defined by tragedy and loss. There could be no other way. Geek Spider-Man is literally a villain. Like, well, according to what we saw from Brown Table, yeah, that, that part was very weird. Brown Table would make chili out of Aunt May and Uncle Ben and feed it to Spider-Man, just like Eric Cartman licking up the sweat, his sweet Spidey tears. He would, yeah. And he'd be like, "This is for your own good. You're gonna become a hero." You have to understand. Uh, Brown Tables ad, TNS ad was good, but Shad's first HelloFresh ad in his barrel vid was god tier. When he pulled that massive book of recipes, you knew it was legit. Oh, I'm sure. He blew up a theater, inshallah, Ahikum Akbar. I probably pronounced them horribly. Literally exploding is the new everyone like that. Um, I, I don't even know if he was accounting for everybody in that. He was just saying that he himself exploded. And it's thankful that he survived. He's still with us. Boba Fett almost became peak Spider-Man when that Tusken Raiders was beating him with clubs and sacks of rocks. Suffering. Yeah, but did Uncle Ben, yeah. uh, ben show up? Uncle Boat Ben Fett? I don't think so. Just drag him out of a little tent. And have Boba say, say like, Ben? He's like, oh, help me out. And then one of them just executes him. Time for you to get some web, web slinging abilities. Please, Gadelb, I literally exploded in the theater. All right, I'll give you that one. That's fair. Literally. Brown table? High top? Mola, what in the hell did we ever do to you? We don't deserve these glue chugging tismoids. Hey, no. Glue chugging tismoids. I like that. They had a lot of valid He's things. Chugging to say. that glue. Maybe. Imagine this Spider Man movie. Peter kills Uncle Ben, becomes the god of suffering. I bet they would love that script. <laughs> Just Yes, God of Suffering. <laughs> He suffers always and forever, for all time and eternity. It would be funny the if- The more like, suffering, the more spider. Goes through the multiverse, finding all of the Peters and killing their uncles. Just to make sure they become Peters. Makes you wonder how the first Spider-Man became. Or he's not Spider-Man. He thought he was, but he learns at the end that he was only the creator of Spider-Man. He could not himself be a Spider-Man. True. He guides others to a treasure he cannot possess. He, was, he just didn't have an uncle. He was never bored with one. He's that one, Peter. 
but didn't have. Oh an yeah, uncle. what if you just don't have an uncle? <laughs> oh, <my laughs> you can't be Peter Parker at that point, okay? Can we be a park? Oh my goodness. Uh. Brown Table gave Schindler's List a 4 out of 10 because the Jews didn't suffer enough. <laughs> oh! How many uncles nice. did they lose? Don't know. Ready? You spelled interlocutal wrong in the title. Change it back. Also, you dumbos ought to play DDLC. You know what? I should have said interlocutal. That's correct. My bad. Dead Island Into Games next Halloween, word? please. Also, Jedi Aka. ACA? Academy? Or Academy. Jedi Academy. Okay. Uh, Jedi uh, Academy, right? Yeah, that's the people like that one. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we'll play Dead Island. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. This is P A O T D Diplodocus or Diplodocus. What's the correct pronunciation for that? P A O T D. Diplodocus. Is it Diplodocus or Diplodocus? I'm not actually sure. Diplodocus? Let me... Let's see. Dip, uh, Diplodocus? Diplodocus? I think it's Diplodocus. Someone just write it out in chat to help me with the pronunciation. It's like... <laughs> Thank you. Un unless you write it out in a, like... Phonetically. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Dip... Lod O Cuss or Diplo Docus. I don't know. I guess we'll never. Mm -hmm. I guess of, we'll never know. Yes. Uh, did you see Patricia Tax and admit TLJ isn't as good as she said it was and only praised it so much to upset people who didn't like it? Okay. That's never been our uh, interest in discussion, but um, I know there's plenty of people who do things just for that. Don't care who t whose team it lines me up with when I pick something being shitty or not. Uh, I don't think it is what it is. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm starting we don't to think, consider teams. I'm starting to think that dealing with these massives has started to skew your perspective on Spooderman, going from apathetic to traditional Spidey to antipathetic. Uh, I swear, if at some point in the future they make a new Spider-Man film series uh, that sticks far more to the original script, the traditional script for the character that Rags would get Tizmi Bark, they caved into High Top and also High Rags. No. What? I, I don't think they caved into High Top is a phrase that I would ever say. We didn't say that about No Way Home. And like yeah. he's claiming that's what they did. So, if they made a film that was almost one-to-one -one Raimi Spider-Man 1, I'm assuming that's the one you guys are talking about when it comes to traditional, I have god fucking I knows, the response from us wouldn't be, oh, they're finally giving high top what he was. It's like, no, they're just going with something safe. And that's Also, fine. we don't care if high top gets what he wants. I don't even, like, know what he wants. He's too difficult to, like, peg down anyway. We certainly yeah. wouldn't want to, you know, kind of set ourselves on that kind of standard. There are plenty of things that can happen with Spider-Man. I th thought that was, like, our obvious position. Maybe I'm wrong. Absolutely. <gasps> I'm not going to pigeonhole him into having to do things a certain way. Like, giving him what he wants, we would expect... That would only happen as a context of if we thought they did it really badly as well. Like, the film opens with him panicking, and he's like, God, if only someone could help me deal with this. Uh, is, is, is Ben around? And then she'd be like, yeah, he's around. He just hasn't been around for the past few years because he's been busy working abroad. And he's like, hello, Peter. Just, I know you're dealing with a lot right now. And they just talk for a little while, and then he goes, you know, great power, and just do all that shit, and then he literally walks out of the room and gets fucking hit by a sniper. And it's like, done. See, we did it. Does nice. everyone like our movie now? And it's like, no. But we would say, yeah, I guess they were trying to appeal to those people who just wanted Uncle Ben dead. Uh, definitely not against a, what you're calling traditional Spider-Man story. Do not worry about that. Is Big Bad Beard 1000 available in this game, or is that the only... only in the cuckold simulator? I think that's another Jack Murphy reference. If that's his name, I keep forgetting it as well. I just don't know, I don't... 
I don't know who this guy is. Kingdom, Arcane, Hawkeye, Medium Medley could be fun. Hmm. Hmm. Hawkeye could definitely be I'm, thrown I'm all down. Like that. Yeah, I'm definitely keen on Medium Medleys. Well, just Covering mean, three like, Spider-Man-tism takes at once is... Huh, it does wear you down. The idea Chat of uh, covering Hawkeye that quickly probably will be what happens if it gets covered. I do wonder if there are people yeah. in our audience who are like, we ain't fucking watching it, so until you cover it, we don't even know what Hawkeye is. And it'll be like, damn. Uh, any New Year's goals? We kind of covered it before. Not necessarily. What are you, Fringy? Do you have New Year's goals? Uh, I'm going to finish a book this year, and that's the plan anyway. Wait, but, which uh, one? Otherwise, I, those will keep them close to the chest. Anyone? I would recommend um, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. Classic. Got to strengthen those building blocks in your basics. And then after that, you can move up to the advanced materials like Fox and Socks. Alrighty then. EFAP Knights of the High Table. Of the Brown Ooh. Table. Um, these people are straw man in comic Spider-Man. I've read many Spider-Man comics and it's not all death and suffering. A lot of the time it's a slice of life story with an interpersonal drama. I'm sure it is. Well, those, you are not referring to the approved real Spider-Man comics. The ones that Correct. you are talking about that don't have those things, those are fakey. Those are fakey comics. They're not real. They're not part of the Spider-Man canon. If you fool, you've fallen right into their trap. They sold you non-canon, fakey Spider-Man. That's not real Spider-Man. Uncle Ben's, Ben's drawing breath. Spider-Man can't be slinging webs. If he is, he's an imposter. Mm -hmm. Down with the pretender. Um, hi, Rags. Oh, Jews, I forgot to say it with respect. Hello, Raggleton. Hello. Hi, Mewishly. Hi, Froggleton. And hi, Dr. Bird. Opinions on pickled food. I don't really have any opinions pickled on pickled food. food. Yeah. I don't think I've had pickled food. I don't... Do they taste like pickles? It was a process to pickle something, but I, I just don't... That's, yeah. that's not in my diet, typically. I don't... Do you, you keep them in pickled juice for a certain amount of time? Or some kind of cucumber-based extract? Or... I am I don't not know sure. what... Let, let me... Let me Google it real quick. If it involves pickles substantially, I'll probably hate it because I just do not like pickles. Uh, pickling. Pickling is the process of preserving or extending the shelf life of food by either anaerobic fermentation in brine or immersion in vinegar. The pickling procedure typically affects the food's texture and flavor. The resulting food is called a pickle or to prevent ambiguity, prefaced with pickled. There you go. So I don't know, actually. I I don't I've seen pickled food in jars and stuff all the time, but I've never never had any. So I don't know. Yeah, I I'm do just not, not know. a pickle guy myself. I, 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 so that's what it is. I like the look of it. I like the decorative look that pickled food has. Alright. Well, there you go. Yeah. In No Way Home, why couldn't Strange just make everyone forget Mysterio to solve the problem? He's not very bright. Um, yeah. Forget Mysterio. Do you mean forget Mysterio and everything Mysterio said, right? We'd have to do that too. And then just forget everything to do with records of Peter's identity as well. We'd need to wipe that out. I don't know how that, how does that spread in terms of like a, a web of consequence from trying to wipe out what people know about Mysterio. Does that affect everything else? Like, does it affect everything past then? After surely, right? Because yeah. I, I assume there has to be all of the physical. It it has to extend past the memories of you know of, of all the minds. There has to be an aspect of it. It erases as well physical evidence that exists in the world that will allow people to just go, oh, what are all these photographs and recordings of this character? I just don't remember. How do, how do we not remember this? And then everyone realizes that they don't remember it, and that becomes its own phenomenon across the world. That there's well, you gotta wonder, some what would Doctor Strange do if he realized no his mind had been tampered with? 
He's like, who did this? Did yeah. I do this? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, and if you found out he did it, you'd note? be like, fucking hell. Yeah, that's so bad, isn't it? He would have probably said he would probably say something like, "Man, it must have took me a lot of convincing to do this. It must have been really grave and dire." And I would. I can't imagine suspicious. what worldwide like, cataclysm. If I didn't make myself aware of the spell I'm casting on myself, it sounds more so like something I was forced to do. Yeah. Why uh, do? Why did the caster of this spell not want me to remember? And then he strokes his beard. Exactly. He goes. Mm. Yeah, Man, I don't know. Um, the spell's really dumb. <laughs> That's my position. It anyway. is very dumb. It's stupid. Uh, what I meant by two uses with the time machine is going back and returning counts as one use. Oh, so you got to choose two out of the three options. Um, yeah, I think the the one it was the the killings and saving Steve Irwin, and then I can't remember what the third one was. Um. But it would probably be those two. One to ten, how hot do you think Peach is? I don't know. Sorry, sorry, my time. Peach. Um. Oh, it brought up the fruit, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard to tell because she's. I guess if we lived in like cartoon world, you know, she's like a it, cutesy it more... character, you know. Yeah, mm. I don't look at her. I don't see hotness in her. She's pretty, but I don't see her as like hot. Um, I mean, she is she is very attractive, I suppose, as far as that goes. But I don't I don't know. I don't really think about that. What does Jen Jesus think about Gandalf's resurrection? Is he jealous he didn't get to battle a Balrog? Oh, definitely. Like I think if there's one thing we know about Jesus, he's jealous of Gandalf. That's been like. Who we've all known for a while. But one day, maybe, God will make him one just to fight. Uh, Rags, after you watch Buffy with Mauler, you should have him watch Star Trek Next Generation in return. Hmm. It would be interesting. I'd be up for Especially that. because it has uh, both great and terrible episodes. Hey, it's just like Buffy. And because they're all sort of self-contained stories for the most part, you could, uh, no time limit on them. It's not like you have to get them taken care of before you forget. Good day, all. Looking forward to watching this trifecta of smooth brains after work. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. It's going to be yeah, a you too. great one, like I said. 100% certain of that. It's going to be a a good year. Good things will happen. I will retract this the second something tragic happens. Betty White doesn't count. Uh, you are on stage in front of 1.2 billion people as you accept your EFAP award. Who do you thank? The Queen, Tony Abbott, Wilfred Brimley, etc. Uh, I would just thank the, the fans at that point instead of any particular um, meme, <laughs> if that's a legitimate question. Though maybe the Dawn would get a special mention. Mm -hmm. He really is the patron saint. Patron saint. I don't know. Any different answers there? Or... All right. Oh, I just want to say I gotta go, but how do I? How, how do I dip? Uh, oh well, there's the <laughs> is the red the red button there. You gotta wait. The I know, red but, button. Uh, <laughs> like, but big uh, red button. Red button. Press it. Press that red button. Well, I mean, thank you so much Ash for that. joining us again. Hopefully you had some fun, and uh, there yeah. should be a link to your channel in the description if people are curious about what you get up to. And just for the sake yeah, of... but if there isn't, don't worry about it. Uh, the, the, what do you... Um, if you want to tell people what you get up to, why they should maybe check you out. How about that? Oh, I yeah. guess... Um, I talk about just movies and games. That's pretty much it. I gotta work out what I want to do for this new year. Anything for the ground, idea wise? What is your most controversial uh, opinion? Controversial opinion? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Something for you to just end, you know, thing. something for you to leave on, you know, to get people uh, thinking. Uh, Halo Infinite's campaign is eh. <laughs> That's the most controversial thing. <laughs> That's right. what you got for most controversial. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I don't have much. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But, um, um, all right. 
Yeah, see you later. Yeah, man, see you around. Bye Thanks bye. for coming. Toodles. Ciao. Mm. Down to me. I'm representing all the animals. True. Unless Fringy is a pelican. Fringy is a bird, yes. A mm. nondescript bird. That's why he wears oh. the mask. Uh, Fringy's a bit. Fringy, do yourself a huge favor, mute yourself for just two minutes and listen to Pistol Grip by Liquid Richard and then come back and report your findings. Fucking... Nah, I'm good. They're talking about wings. I don't know. Oh, okay. Nah, I'm good. Liquid Richard is wings? Yeah, that's a nickname he has. Li how dare I ask, did he get the nickname of Liquid Richard? I think Richard? more was already mentioned it before. Or, or something to do with things that I, yeah, would rather if we don't need to talk about. Okay. Alright. <laughs> um, uh, I'm telling you, Friggy, you won't regret it. Liquid Richard is triple S tier trolling. He's an actual music producer, and all his albums are modular bangers. Well, maybe lighter. Alrighty then. Uh, hi everyone, and Rags. How are y'all? How are you, massives today? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm a bit tired, but other than that, I'm a okay. We got a lot talked about today. I feel pretty satisfied with our. I felt like this might have been... This is so subtle. Hmm. It's so very subtle. What is? You are tired. I can tell, because you said that you're retired. But moreover, you are thoroughly satisfied with uh, what we've talked about, thereby implying that there's no need to press on. No, no, I'm, I'm glad. I'm satisfied with the EFAP that we've done in terms of our coverage. Mm -hmm. Because the three videos we covered were similar yet different. True. That's true. Uh... Yeah, and as for me, I just I expected it to be a lot harder today uh, in terms of having to deal with breakdowns of No Way Home because that those films that that film rather has a lot of flaws in it. Uh, but and yeah, between the three of them, they brought up zero of them <laughs> pretty much. Like so. they barely talked about the film. Yeah, so there's not much worries there uh, in terms of trying to argue in favor of anything. It, it was just the standard Uncle Ben wasn't fucking brutally murdered and. Uh, well, you can, like I said, every once in a while you'll expect a new chapter on that, because that's just an ever undying topic on EFAP. Um, but I've had fun, and there's been some. There was, it, it was fun to compare Brown Table and High Top's ads. Can't believe Brown Table did so much better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fringy, thoughts on the Simpsons episode taking place in Australia? Also, High Rags. Hello. Yeah, that one's great. Alrighty. It's, uh, <laughs> really good. A lot of funny jokes. Yeah, it's, uh, whenever they go to any country, it's usually a lot of fun. I'll have a coffee, please. Beer it is. No, coffee, beer. Coffee, be beer. <laughs> Anything that takes place in Australia would have to be animated because it's not real. <laughs> It's real, goddammit. I, I mean, you can you can record in America and claim it's Australia, I guess, the power yeah, of... Yeah, that's... You it, do that all I the time it, now. I it, oh! The <laughs> truth comes out. <laughs> no, I mean, we do that the all clip. the time in terms of making films. Mm. Yeah, they do, you're right. You know The Matrix was filmed uh, in Australia? Did you know that? You mean America? No. Here. America pretending to be Australia, <laughs> pretending to be the Matrix? How deep does this Australia rabbit hole go? Australia pretending to be America, pretending to be the Matrix. How hard is it to understand? They they filmed it in America, said it was Australia to film the Matrix. They filmed so it in Australia. So that they could say it was in Australia, of... probably something related to taxes. However, it was actually in the United States of America. I just feel like you've gone off the rails here for something that's not that complicated. There are no we were rails where we go. on the rails. Yeah, we're fast and out of control. This crazy train ain't got no brakes. It also has no rails. Oh, I was hoping my little flappy flap would have stopped the Falcon Punch, but nope. And now you're dead. I did. I got. I got deaded. Get dead. Uncle Ben had his chance. True. True. And he. He had his chance to die, and he lost it. Uncle Ben got fucked up. 
Uh, Mulder, what's the longest thing you've done in the last 72 hours? The longest thing? I guess this stream? Probably this, right? Yeah. Well, editing, maybe? Was that... Oh, wait, no, Does you count? before I did. Is this just like uh, an everlasting, well, just goes on fucking ever? Well, sure, like, because by, you know, if we go that far, the longest thing I've done is be alive for as long as I've been alive. <laughs> yeah. And I guess even longer, moment. right? Because all of the atoms that comprise me are date back to the beginning of the universe. So in a certain sense, we're all 14.3. That's the answer. Wait, is it 14.3 or is it? Yeah, it's 14.3 billion years, right? Or am I? Or is it 13.7? You're close enough. I'll hand it to you. I mean, I off by a factor of 600 million years, potentially. Which is nothing cosmically. We've been over. Only four times longer than the dinosaurs existed. Which really was quite short. Yeah, it was like a... You blink and you miss it. Yeah. Those poor dinos. Uh, is Dark Materials is great. Worth checking out. Maybe, maybe. Don't know. I asked more of this question before in an old EFAP, so I'll ask everyone else the same. Who is your least favorite character in Lord of the Rings? Hmm. Sauron. He's an evil bastard. He wants to take over Middle-earth. And he's a real jerk. He's a real I don't like jerk. him. Yep. You all agree? Um, uh, not right now. Not that I can think of, really. However, I I, I think in, in reality, I think it's Denethor. I think Denethor is just he's he's really he's a really bad guy to Faramir, and I liked Faramir a whole lot. So Denethor being a jerk to him when Faramir just wants to. You know, impress him and show that he's worthy and you know live up to you know being able to be a good son to his dad and make him proud and his dad's just constantly a dick i uh, i really do not approve of that at all i mean i have some i have dislike for all the characters that we're supposed to dislike i thought they meant right that doesn't mean they're bad least like liked. characters in, Sar in saruman man he was supposed to be the white but he was not white at all and does that he upset you, Rags, that he wasn't white? It does. It, well, it does Man, upset okay. me that he Mask wasn't off. white. Yeah. He didn't wear a mask. Yeah, but it's on. Not not on him. He never had it on. No, I know. Like I don't you, wear a mask. I wear glasses. Because your mask has come off. Glasses I wore, off. I wear sunglasses. Yeah, sunglasses off. Or as someone said Gimli, he, left, he said to let Frodo <laughs> rot. It's very true. <laughs> It's a very mean thing Gimli's to do. Gimli's a piece of shit, man. He wanted them all to die. Yeah, fuck that guy. Short little piece of shit. Christ. Um, so angry. Well, yeah. The things he said. He was a horrible man. Um, but, I don't know. Least favorite? It could very well be, like, a Legolas is closer to the answer I think they're looking for. Well, if we're talking about, like, major characters, it's like, yeah, I guess I don't... But I, the thing is, I don't dislike him. I just don't like him as much as, like, Gimli or something. Yeah, it felt to me that Gimli had much more going on. So if he sounds like the natural... Well, I think it's just Legolas is, here, is much more closer to the just hero man sort of archetype than uh than Gimli. Gimli's, like, more yeah, unique. Yeah, and I'd say the same for the, the Hobbits as well. Specifically right, Marian like, Pippin, in the sense that Frodo isn't as like, you know, compared to the other three because they're supporting and so on a certain well, sense. Well, I'd say Sam and Frodo are thoroughly characterized, but someone I could see yeah, someone yeah, picking yeah. Marion Pippin or whatever, I'd be like, well, I, I do quite like Marion Pippin a bit. So. Well, if it was like the Buffy thing, right? Buffy is very well characterized, um, but in terms of the characters that everybody likes the most, it's usually some other character who's more abnormal, I guess, in a certain sense. Yeah, that's why it's always interesting to see who people end up picking. Because you never know. Like a lottery. Mm. Uh, Happy New Year, EFAP. I'm usually watching this or previous night's FNT while working on my model trains. I wanted to start the new year by giving a thanks. Oh, boy! What fun That's Easter cool. egg should I add to my layout? Also, high rags. Hello. I just find the idea that you make miniature trains really cool. That's a neat hobby. That is pretty awesome. And as for an Easter egg, maybe a squat... Or well, the Don could be a passenger. I don't know. Well, you could just put little visions of us in there. Uh, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, they seem to be very useful. Little tiny trains. They probably can't carry that much. Well, sure, but it's not about what you carry. It's about the journey. I'm sure relatively they carry just the amount you'd expect. As much, yeah. 
my favorite Spider-Man was when he was a science teacher and married and he had his stuff together. Don't see people complain that that is real Spidey. Or not real Spidey. Oh um, my. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I think I think we're exhausted on our discussion of Spider-Man for today. <laughs> yeah, we've done enough. You'll see another chapter of that another time when someone else says something that triggers the fuck out of everyone. Um, my Peter needs to be destitute, homeless, and sad. Y'all don't understand. Peter has to suffer the multiversal constant known as Dead Ben. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> yep. All is well. The universe is in a state of dead bend. <laughs> He's just like fucking Hellraiser style, just hit with all these chains screaming in a dark dungeon. He's like a source of power for Peters throughout the multiverse. Fun fact, Stanley hated a version of Spider-Man where Uncle Ben is still alive, while he loved a version of Spider-Man where he is a tokusatsu hero from the planet Spide. <laughs> what? Uh, tokusatsu. <laughs> From uh, the planet Spide, did you say? <laughs> it's pretty, yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> just go with the planet <laughs> Spide, that's really funny to me. He is a man of Spide. A spider yes. man, even. Man a of Spide, man. yeah. It would be called Man of Spide. He is a Spide man. Lost son of Spide. Or be a, he'd be a Spideling? I don't know. New game Dinosaur or Philosopher? So, okay, so Diplodocus is first, which we all know is dinosaur. Uh, what about Prodicus? Prodicus, I'm gonna say he's a philosopher. Oof, I really don't know um, about that Um, I think that's a dinosaur. I'm gonna go with philosopher, but uh, I could be convinced of either on that one. Uh, Metrodorus. No, I, I would do not get the answer. No, I don't have the answer. You can Google it. Okay. Uh, all right. I don't Prodicus, know can you spell it? Uh, P R O D I C U S. What's the next one, sorry? Prodicus was a philosopher. Yay. Okay. All right. Part right. of right. the first generation of sophists. Uh, next one what? is Metrodorus. Metrodorus. I'm going to go with a dinosaur. Let's see. I Metro. I go with dinosaur, yeah. Metrodorus. Oh, Metrodorus was a philosopher. Oh, oh, no. oh no, we were all wrong on that one. <laughs> this What's one just says drinker. No philosopher. Drinker. <laughs> yeah. Dinosaur. Oh, yep, yeah, it says here the drinker was a dinosaur. Yep. And the last one is Fruitadens. Which is a. That's a dinosaur. I'm going to go with dinosaur on that one. I feel like a dinosaur again, but fuck, we could be surprised. Who knows? Yes, Prudidens was is the smallest known ornith ornithischian dinosaur. I thought you were gonna say smallest oh, known little. philosopher. <laughs> like, wait, why? Smallest. <laughs> yeah, they're they're little bitty. They're little little, oh, little guys. Cute. They're like possum sized. Adorable. That's as an Arkansan. That's how. That's the animal that came to mind when I saw the scale. I was like, oh yeah, it's about the size of a possum or a coon. I can't help but think that the Meta Ridley boss in Metroid Prime 3 was inspired by Gandalf and Balrog fight since that game has Samus and yeah, Ridley fighting probably. as they fall down a pit. I probably. Rest. Hello! They'd be pretty neat yeah, if it were. Well, hmm. it's, they're falling down a giant tube and like Samus is, jumps on him and like starts shooting him in the face. It's, yeah. Gandalf didn't shoot the Balrog in the face while falling down. He didn't shoot down. him in the face, but he did jump on him and go like, I'm gonna get you. Well, Ooh, pew. that's not a faithful adaptation, so I refuse. Right. Uh, favorite Nolan movie, and why is it Memento? Prestige. It's Prestige. Prestige, easily. I haven't seen Memento, though, movie. so... You'll get coverage on Prestige one day. Talk forever about how amazing it is, I swear. Hopefully I'm not dead by then, but if I am... Come listen to me in heaven or hell or whatever. I'll talk or about it. nowhere. Um, okay, maybe it. later. All right, Fringy, I'll take it. I'm a little surprised you haven't listened to it um, yet, given how much you know about Wings lore. Um, yeah, sure, but I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm not like, I wouldn't consider myself to be an expert on Wings lore. You're not a Wing Storian. Um, no, I wouldn't consider myself a Wing Storian. It's it's hard to keep up when you got other things you got to be doing. True. 
Yeah, that's true. Um, when I play melee on Dolphin, it slows down at the melee complete screen. How do I fix it? Uh, I I fucking mine runs perfectly as far as I can tell. So uh, look on forums, see if they can give you some answers on what you may need to do, or try different video backends. That's always a solution, or a possible solution. Also, konnichiwa to the Australian chipmunk warlock thing. Warlock? Chipmunk warlock. Konnichiwa. Cool. Australian chipmunk warlock thing. Mm hmm. Konnichiwa. Uh, Japanese Spider Man Takuya Yamashiro is human. His powers come from a Kuya device Yamashiro. given to him by Garia, a man from the planet Spider, not Spied. The so, planet spine no, is stupider. <laughs> Spide was so, like. So just so we're eh. clear, that so that can't be Spider-Man. No, presumably they're saying that Stanley approved of that. Um. Oh well, but he—it's not a dead Uncle Ben. <laughs> I guess. Was the uncle from Spide okay, too? We're not. Did Spide blow up like Krypton? Did all of the Uncle Bens on the planet explode? <laughs> just the planet of Uncle Ben. A planet of Uncle Bens. <laughs> Spide, it's, it's a ship planet. filled with Uncle Bens and pods. <laughs> Superman. Ben had his chance. <laughs> all of the pods. All the pods from across the galaxy. You know, like all the pods shot out. And if they landed on a planet, that planet would have a Spider-Man in it. Uh, I tried to look up some Japanese stereotypes, but I just got ads for Toshiba and Panasonic. Memes aside, the music is really good. I listen to them unironically all the time, especially when I'm riding in my V6 Salvage Mustang to get to Wendy's Chili. Or to get Wendy's Chili. Have you tried Wendy's Chili Ranks? No. I'm not a chili guy. Hmm. I'm hot. No, I just don't care for chili. Uh, have any of you ever skived? What? what? Skived? Skydived or what? If that means skydived, skived. then I have not. But if skive means something else, then I've also not done that. So skiving or scarfing is the process of cutting material off in slices, usually metal, but also leather or laminates. Skiving is used instead of rolling the material to shape when the material must not be work hardened. Yeah, I've never skived. Oh, oh wait. Skiving also means to be absent from work or school without permission. Oh, we've all done that, surely. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow, Fringy. Maybe? I, 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 yeah. I'm a... I'm a bad boy. I've skived before. Well, I mean, I, I never got like detention back or anything. In my day. That never happened. I not only did I get a whole bunch of detention, but I was also just didn't turn up to a lot of lessons. I'm <laughs> boring as fuck. Right. A I lot of times when I didn't show up, a... they'd be like, "No, no, it's fine. It's fine. You don't have to come. It's fine." We'd get into trouble with like, but never. It was usually for something that they couldn't punish me for, like just who I am, <laughs> 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 like just being loud or something or. I remember uh, that was something that was difficult because, like, it's hard volume control when you've got, like, a deep voice. Your voice just travels a lot. So, Someone brought... just... Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. I know in, um... Hmm. Hmm. Uh, someone in chat said Luke's Uncle Ben died, so he is technically Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, he lost Aunt May sure. as well, so don't count. He lost... Yeah, but that oh, was much yeah. later, though. Right. He died. No, they lost him both at the same time, didn't they? No. Yeah. Oh, they got true, turned into right. Yeah, true, true. So, like, Spider-Man fans were watching <laughs> it, and they're like, wait a minute, am I watching an origin for Sp No, no, it's two deaths. We're fine. Yeah. No, it's two. Oh, thank God. We got two skeletons. I repeat, guys, we got two <laughs> skeletons. Copy two skeletons. This is oh, not Spider-Man. Oh, boy. This is not a Spider-Man film. This is a Star Wars film. Uh, sorry. What I meant was the planet spider, oopsie. Also, Tokusatsu is basically anything like Power Rangers or Godzilla. Oh, what the way? Whoa. That does not help at all. <laughs> Tokusatsu is anything all. like Power Rangers or Godzilla. That's a pretty... That's broad <laughs> as hell. Let me, let me look it up. Let me look up Tokusatsu. 
All right, tokusatsu, uh, literally special filming, is a Japanese term for live action film or television drama that makes heavy use of special effects. So that okay. would be like, it says Gridman the Hyper Agent, Kamen Rider, um, Avengers Endgame. I guess Power Rangers. Okay. Super Sentai. So it's, I guess. Power Rangers is an American adaptation of the Japanese show Super Sentai. But right. I prefer ours because I can understand the characters and because we can have a character uh, known as the White Power Ranger, <laughs> which you wouldn't be able to make these days because some people are very sensitive about the White Power. Me high top sent me high. Nice combo Long of memes. May he rain. Uh, correction. Garia's device, the spider protector, combines spider blood with Takuya's giving him spider powers as well as his suit. The show is fun. Sounds it. There's all kinds of things going on. Uh, Uncle Ben is gone is called Ben's Originals. Are we referencing the rice or are we doing something else? Uncle Ben's Originals. I am not sure. Well, either way, that is today's Super Chats all caught up. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness, we caught up. We, we did will it. likely... Uh, Three videos, all the Super Chats, and everything that happened in between. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's a you guys had some, Oh, there's another one that's coming. All right, we'll do an outro. I'll read it, and then, then we will go offline. Okay. That's the best way to do it. See, efficiency. Uh... What was I going to say? So, Boba Fett minis coming out weekly. There's one out right now. Oh, you might not know about it. Go watch it. Myself and Fringy worked on it. All right? We're going to be getting them to you straight away because we can't wait to talk about Star Wars again. Um, so, with the minis coming out, I doubt we'll do a episode for it unless someone's got a really funny video on it. Um, yeah, so maybe. We got that. Um, other than that, just normal stuff coming on. You know, every Wednesday, you'll probably see us pop up. Though that's something we got to figure out now, cause yeah, yeah, cause 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 of fucking Boba Fett. So yeah. Boba yeah. Fett's ruining everything. Fuck yeah. Boba Fett. We all hate Boba Fett, right, chat? Yeah. Yeah. I hope he just stays in that back to tank forever. Yeah. Then uh, he comes out and he's just a fucking pure cue ball, <laughs> just oof. perfect and round, really shiny, and white, very shiny, glistening. He's just been reduced to a spatial form. That's what too many hours in the back to tank do. Turn you into a cue ball. Um, out of curiosity, how did you get as good at measuring objective quality in film? I gotta learn it. Also, bonjour to the Australian Komodo. Well, I, uh, I guess. About that. I get. Oh, obviously me. But I suppose this is also a question for you guys as well. Um, I think it's just oddly enough practice, learning to be aware. Of identifying things, awareness is a huge part of it, uh, and a willingness to express the things that you actually see. Uh, trying not to give not too much of a benefit of the doubt, but not to go too far against it either. Unfairly, it's a it's it's like a process, and you just got to practice it and hone it, and be able to identify the components is um, a very important part of that. I'd say I'm an oldie but a goodie that can. Utilized your benefit, you know, like the whole uh, know what you don't know. That can be useful in the sense that when stuff tells you stuff is the case, sometimes just think about it as though they have no fucking clue what they're talking about, and then think no, about it for a second. No, it's like hmm. Plotticus said that. Oh, it was a dinosaur that said that, but uh, I think oh. that it can be very helpful in making you go, Wait a minute, actually, when they just tell you something is the case. Um, have that little bit of little bit of skepticism about what is everything supposed to be and stuff. Um, they, they, you know, it's it's tough to say. There's all kinds of advice one could give, but um, um, I think a big thing would be I I, mean, I don't really describe it as measuring objective quality. I feel like it's more just any time that you think something's good or bad, try to justify it to yourself, like or or you know think about whether you have a justification for that beyond just like a gut feeling. So like if you say I like this. Think about how you can expand that a bit more. 
beyond maybe like one sentence of like, yeah, this is good. Uh, you know, this is good character development. Like why just ask yourself why, and then try and find an answer and think about what was in the film that you can reference. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, Japanese only has single sounds for each letter. A equals A, A equals E, U equals U, equals E, O equals O. A, S, N, H, J, T, M, Z, G, D, and Y are all the hard pronunciations. Um, my screen. Uh, o, U together is a long O. Hopefully this helps. Springy is wrong. Yeah, no, we already established that though, so you don't need to say it again. But you're wrong? Well, I mean, sometimes yeah, right. it's for a three stating, yeah. just so you don't forget. I don't worry, I'll never forget, all right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll never live this episode down. You don't, you don't need to remind me. Whatever, when I die on my gravestone, just put free me, it was wrong. Yeah, and I knew it. And he knew. And he knew it. Fringy, maybe you just say Fringy relished being wrong. Yeah, I love it. I, was, I bathed, I bathed in wrong, being wrong. The first time Fringy was correct, you fucking died. The first time like Fringy Uncle was ben. correct, predated the it's... existence of reality as we know it. The first time Uncle Ben survived, he died. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is the multiverse where Ben lived. And look I at what mean, happened. If we've connected it all into the TVA. They were this melting the world Uncle Ben's that Spider didn't Man. die. On account of Ben's survival, there is no Spider-Man. And uh, tell Metal to stream more often. He is currently on like a holiday of sorts, so he will stream when he's back. Do not worry. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, with that, we shall see you all the next time we see you all. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us, and thank you yeah. for the donations. EFAP shall return. We'll probably see a Wednesday. Um, if not, we'll just see you the following Saturday. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Alrighty, yeah. See you later. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.